Welcome to another episode of the panel brought to you by the good fellas of Players Choice. Right from the top, Chill Town coming to you. Kevin Durant is supposed to be making his return tomorrow. What does this mean for the Suns moving forward? I just think it adds another scorer that they didn't have. Um, I think it adds a little bit of depth to their scoring. But I don't think it adds that much simply because they've only had two games with him. So they haven't really had an opportunity to, you know, get acclimated to Kevin Durant. I think that he is one of the best plug in players in the game. But if you're talking about winning the NBA championship, there's a certain level of chemistry and continuity that you have to have with a guy. And I'm having a difficult time with the logic of just throwing a guy on a unit after basically missing the entire season with this particular group and then throwing him into the unit and, basically just walking through the Western Conference. I think that he's going to help them in terms of their scoring, but I think it's going to be really difficult for the Phoenix Suns in terms of them winning the NBA championship. But I do think he helps. Okay, okay. Morris, do you you, you care that Kevin Durant's coming back, or does it not matter in the regular season? Um, I mean, it, of course it matters. I think he'll probably play, assuming he's right and doesn't like re-injure himself, he'll probably play six of their last seven games because I think they have one back-to-back. Um, they got they play against Denver twice in that time as well, so that'll be a good test for them. I think, um, KD, I think KD is a great plug and play player, but I think for the players, you're going to need some sort of continuity. Them only playing three games together so far, like that's not going to help them in the playoffs. So, them maybe getting to like eight or nine games together before the playoffs and then will just help them more than it can ever hurt them. Adding KD is never going to hurt you, so it can only really go well unless he gets hurt. Mm-hmm. No doubt, no doubt. Fluent. How you do you, you you think KD should be playing right now, or would you just sit him to playoffs? No, they they have to play him. He has to get at least a couple of games kind of under his belt with Booker and CP3 and those guys. The good thing about KD is he is probably the best kind of plug and play. He can fit into any system. So ideally, you would have had him to to Jay's point. Ideally, you would have had him for a longer stretch with those guys. But he can easily fit in. But you want to get, you know, knock that rust off. Serious health-wise, we all know get up to game speed, which is different than practice. So you want to get a couple of those games in and get him ready for the playoffs. He's look if they have any plans of going anywhere deep into the playoffs, he's going to have to be there. So you got to you got to put him in. No, nah, I feel that. I feel that, Bob. Uh, the Suns right now are the fourth seed. Right now, they're set to play the Clippers in the first round with KD. Do you have? The Suns winning, or how, Paul George should be back around that time, right? That's what they're saying. I, I believe. I'm, I'm not, be, too, I'm I not too so. sure about. Yeah, I'm not too sure about uh, when Paul George is coming back. I'm not sure. Um, man, I hate to sound like an echo, you know, but just the fact that KD hasn't played much with the with the squad yet, and you got to remember, KD, this when he just got hurt um, in warmups, that was he was just basically coming off the injury from when he was with when with Brooklyn. So as good as KD is and as good as he uh, as transferable as uh, as his game is where he can play with pretty much anybody, I like that most about Kevin Durant, his ability to play with a bunch of different guys. It's just so, you know, it's so finicky. I can't really call it. I uh, I would put my if I was a bed man, I put my money on the Clippers. Got you. Okay, okay, but Kind of to, to, to veer into a new topic, ironically, while you were talking, Justin D.W. came with a super chat. He said, Ox, do you want Sack to trade for Jalen in Boston? That's Jalen Brown. Bro, right, come on. Hey, Justin, don't do not don't do that to that. That'll have me too. Don't do that. You know, you know Jalen, Jalen Brown, I don't know if y'all know, but as far as my players right now, Jalen, Jalen Brown is one of my top five favorite players. And Demonte Sabonis is one of my top five favorite, favorite players. So if we could get them two together, you know. And he a Bay Area dude too. Who Jeff? No, no. Jeff, he he went he went to Cal, but I think he's from he's from Atlanta. From, he's oh Atlanta. Okay, I thought okay. he was from North Carolina. Oh, he just so went to Cal. Okay, I yeah. thought he was a Bay Area dude. My fault. Well, you well, you know, chill. I mean, a lot of cats. You know, if you get the chance to come to California and get some of this beautiful sunshine, you you know, you got you got to go do that. So I used to I used to live in the Bay Area, so I know right, what time right. it is. I know yeah, what time yeah. it is out there. No, I, I know exactly what it is. No yeah, doubt. but to answer to answer that question, man, if Jalen Brown came to sack, man, that would be. Yeah, that would be beautiful to me. Okay, but but I don't want I don't want them to leave JT. I, w- I want them to get it together in Boston. I want to see what they can what they could be. And <laughs> fellas, what do, what do we think is the limit for those two? They can win the championship. They can win it this year. 
Like, so they, that's they their ceiling. No, their ceiling is a championship. I think if you think they can't win a championship with this team, I think you're underselling them. Whether or not they will, that's a different discussion. But they theoretically could. They could beat any team in a seven-game series, no matter who they played against. In my opinion. Are we talking about Boston or are we talking about Sacramento? Boston. Yeah, okay, Boston. we're talking about Boston. I think that, that Jalen Brown and and Jason Tatum, I think they are who Paul George and Kawhi Leonard were supposed to be. I think that the way that they play, how that team is constructed, I think that in terms of health, everything that Leonard and Paul George were supposed to be, those two dudes are that. And I think that they have good as good a shot in the Eastern Conference. I think that them playing against Milwaukee, I don't think that they can beat Milwaukee. I think they got a shot, but I don't think they can beat Milwaukee. And the reason why I don't think that they can beat Milwaukee is simply because when you get to a sit, when you get into a seven game series with a team that basically has the same thing that you have, now what it boils down to is my best player against your best player. And I think that was the difference last year in the NBA Finals. Because if you look at what Boston had and what the Golden State Warriors had, from a talent standpoint, they were pretty evenly matched. What it came down to, Steph Curry made it clear. I will lose to James. I will even lose to Kawhi Leonard. I'm not losing to you, though. No. And I think that'll be the difference in – I think that'll be the difference in that Milwaukee series. And so, I know – so you guys have said – so, Chill, you you do believe that they got championship experience or championship potential. I do, absolutely. I mean, they were just in the NBA Finals last year, and, you know, they know what it looks like. They, they seen what it looks like. Jason Tatum came back better. Jalen Brown came back better. I think they're a better unit. But I think that at the end of the day, I think that it'd be pretty difficult to get past Milwaukee because it's going to come down to my best player is better than your best. My best player against your best player. And I think Milwaukee has the better player. And so my follow-up question to that then is to everybody up here. If if a championship is their ceiling and they have the potential to do that, how long do those two stay together? Because remember last year when they had the bad, the bad year last year, people were saying, or no, that was two years ago before mm-hmm. they made that championship run. People were saying – it's kind of a, a make or break year. If they don't do anything, then you're going to have to look to move one of these guys. How long now do you think coming off of a championship run, how long do they have before people are saying, hey, all right, we might have to, Jalen Brown might have to go to Sacramento or we might have to trade in JT and do something else. If, if, I'm, if I'm the GM of the Celtics, never, hmm. never. We've seen too many duos like this that they put the pressure on. And because, look, the expectation for Boston with these two guys is like, Floor, you talk about the ceiling is a championship. The floor is the Eastern Conference Finals. That's where they have to be every year. So if I'm Celt- if I'm running the Celtics, it's these two guys are staying together, and I'm going to mess around with the people around them to make it easier for them to win a chip. You break these two guys up, and now you're starting over again. And I don't think anybody want anyone in the in their right mind doesn't want to do that. Fluent was that was that you? I, I think that was you. I was watching Fluent the Shield a couple weeks ago. Was that you that said? Having two dynamic wings like that is something that you're just not supposed to break up. You're not. You're not. I, I don't. If I said it, that was genius of me. Um, <laughs> look, you look through the history, right? Like but I was you too. <laughs> I, I go back. I'm still heartbroken, you know, about McGrady and Carter breaking up. When oh, you have man. two guys that can score, that can defend, that are so interchangeable, you figure it out and put the pieces around them. You get a facilitator. You get a big to rebound and do the dirty work. You do that stuff, and you because guys like this don't come around very often. So when you get them, you you hold on tight. I've always equated it to the formula. When you got the formula, you don't pour it down the drain. You just build around it. And when you got two guys like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, those two guys are basically a generational talents. As good as as good as the other players are in the league, where people talk about you know you can name twenty players better than Jalen Brown. Well, him with Jason Tatum, I don't know if you can name that many duos better than them in today's game. And they're young guys. I mean, Jason Tatum just turned 25. Jalen Brown is 26. There's no reason to break this unit up. I think a lot of people are interested to see, well, they want to see what Jalen Brown looks like as a number one. I'm not even entertaining that as Boston. I have literally possibly two number ones. And I'm not entertaining that as Boston. I'm keeping this crew together for as long as I possibly can, which also, Ron, is why if Boston puts that money on the table, Jalen Brown is taking it. He's not going anywhere. Yeah, and let, let me add to that real quick. It's like there's people – you got to ignore the people because there are people saying, hey, I wonder what Clay would look like as a number one. Golden State's not dumb. Mm-hmm. You got Clay and Curry. You keep them together. Mm-hmm. Can Draymond run a team on his own? No. That's why you keep them with those guys. You know, when you have <laughs> the mix that works, 
you don't break it up. If yeah. unless look, unless they leave. Like you can't control if, if he wants to be the number one and he wants to go do that on his own, that's different. There's nothing you can do there. But if it's up to the organization, you keep them together. Ticket TV, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the duo. I know you have expressed strong, strong words about Boston and their coach. So how, how do you feel about this duo, their potential, and what you would do? They done. They they fired the coach. I mean, the, the, the coach that they had was a coach for this group. And now that you're not continuing with that coach, uh, they're done. There'll, there'll be a, a second-round exit this year. And uh, Jalen Brown will be upset. He'll ask for a trade, and he'll be moved. Uh, simple as that. There's it's no future for these guys. Once you got rid of Emil Doka, you got rid of the coach that actually fit the pieces um, for this team. That coach fit the identity for this team. He knew the pulse of this team, and the players were upset that they lost said coach. So now you have Jalen Brown out here talking like this, saying that he wants out. And um, with that being said, you know, saying that he's unappreciated. He already knows his name's been put in trade rumors, so he already knows how they feel. Being a guy who, I mean, from what I've seen from Jalen Brown, he seemed like he's a stand-up guy. I don't think he's going to stand for it. I think that after it falls apart this year, they're going to realize that we've been together for almost six, seven years. It hasn't worked. We haven't won a championship. We've gotten there, and we're only digressing. They're not bringing back Ime Udoka. I mean, unless a miracle happens, but they've already made a decision on this new coach. So what are they going to do? They're going to pay him too and pay Ime? No. So it's over with. You're going to have to move Brown, get as much as you can get for him in a sign and trade, and just move on. Team is over, bro. Team ain't they ain't winning no championship. So over. What up, ticket? ESPN chill. What's good, baby? What's up, brother? Just want to say what's you up, bro. You already know what it is. What's oh salute mm-hmm. everybody? Salute all y'all, man. What's, what's up? Guys? What's up? Yo, in light of the word ESPN and chill being clumped in the same sentence, if in case you didn't know, we had a, a, a major name on the uh, on the platform last Thursday on none other than the Great Fluent and Chill Show. Uh, anybody want to talk on anything that Shaq said while he was there, or anything that went on during the show? I thought it was dope, man. It was great to talk to Shaq. Um, it was great to get some insight on the big fella. Uh, a lot of people, you know, don't only they only get to see him buttoned up and suited and booted and you know to actually see him relax and and and, and talk like he's one of us. I thought that that was really cool. His first his first interview after his BBL surgery, so I thought that was that was pretty that was Word. pretty. Cool. Um, and I'll say Word. this, and I'm not gonna I'll let you guys talk. I'm only gonna say this. I I wish you could see me right now. I think we're this close. I'm making my two fingers very close together between me and Shaq and y'all. This close, yeah, Ron, you got it. To getting to getting chill to put Kobe in his top ten. We are this close. Come on, yeah. <laughs> I was going. I, I was, I was in the gonna, super chats. We got to make this happen. I was going to ask you, chill. You know, there's been some allegations, and I figure, you know, before before we go too far, like, you know, could I could I bring that up? There's been some allegations that now that you know it's come to like so y'all are cousins. Right. The reason you don't have Kobe in your top ten is because of that, and I don't know the whole ins and outs, the beef between right. Kobe and Shaq. I don't know all mm-hmm. that, you know. Um, I, I when they're back in those days, I loved anything to dismantle the Lakers. So you know, right. whatever. Right. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, okay, so can, can we can we can we go into that a little bit? Well, sure? well, let's let, we, we we can dead the logic that that's the reason why. Because right, if that was right. the reason why, Shaq wouldn't he be higher on the list? Wouldn't he be like one or two? If I really felt like that about him, and I didn't feel like that about this dude. I mean, I would have a lot more praise for Shaq than I did, right? Mm-hmm. Just like with Kobe Bryant. I mean, I have a lot of praise for Kobe Bryant. I don't say anything that's ridiculous about him. The dudes that I have that I talk about when I talk to Shaq, or when I talk to you dudes, the dudes that I have in my top 10, each one of these guys is worthy of being in the top 10. And I give legit logic on why each one of these guys is worthy of being in the top 10. It's not, I'm, I'm, I have I don't have Kobe Bryant in my top ten because I don't like the dude. Or I also heard that I don't I don't want to have him in my top ten because he beat me one on one. Now I'm thinking to myself, this is a 19 year old kid that I went up against 25 years ago who wasn't Kobe Bryant yet. He was becoming that dude. So I'm gonna hold that against him in a one on one game that's meaningless. Jay, oh, Jay, big, who who started that nasty rumor? Who I don't I don't know. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know who started it. To be quite it honest, it was me. It was me. It was me. Yeah, I, I think, you're lying, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're lying, uh Till. I think you're lying, dog. What am I lying about, ticket? I think it hurts you, bro. 
You know why, what I'm saying? Why, why would it hurt me? Why would it hurt me? I mean, there, there, it, it would be nothing. It, it would make me. It wouldn't make me happier. Nothing would make me happier if I had legit logic to put him ahead of Bird or ahead of this guy. It wouldn't. That nothing would make me happier to do that. I do not have anything personal against this guy. Again, I've said this in the past. The best game that I've ever witnessed in the arena with my own eyes. And again, I've seen Jordan play when he had hair. And they used to call him Air Jordan. I've seen Doc play. I've seen the bad boy Pistons play. I've seen Dominique Wilkins play. I was in the building that night that John Stockton broke the steals record. In fact, the guy who he stole the ball from gave me the seats. So I've been in the building for plenty of great games. The most amazing game that I have ever been to was on a Sunday afternoon in 2001 in Arco Arena. I watched Kobe Bryant go 48 and 16. It was the most amazing thing that I've ever seen. He was different than so, everybody else channel. on the channel. There's Kill nobody channel. else out there that I look hey, at Ron, and I go, yo, put, you similar come to back him. On the screen, Ron. Put, put your time back on the screen, Ron. Put your back on the screen on the big screen, man. Chill. Now look into the camera, man. Now look, look with a straight face, bro. You gonna tell everybody you was never affected by that man? That never, never. affected you? Not, not one time. No, I did not. Didn't bother you at all, Chill Town? Not one time. See, see, the difference between you and me, Ticket, is that you deal in emotion. I don't deal in emotion. I yeah, can't you deal like, in emotion. Chill, you look like O.J. Simpson. You like O.J. Simpson on the stand right now, Chill Town. How do I look like O.J. Simpson? What are you talking about? Oh, oh you looking real guilty, Chill Town. How do I look guilty? <laughs> yeah, we still make right. them. Bro, listen, right. it's okay, man. Hey, look, chill. You can let it go, this bro. It's okay. It's been all them years now. No Kobe and Shaq been got Kobe and Shaq. Kobe and Shaq got over it. Shaq is your fam. You can get over it too. I mean, look, that's your family member, bro. There's so at the end of the day, you're gonna hold that, you're gonna hold that beef in you forever, bro. We already know you're gonna hold that forever. Because see, I seen the I seen the look in I seen the look in your face, and then they should have put the look on Shaq's face. When you said that you had Kobe outside of the top ten, bro, Shaq's eyeballs went to the Shaq's eyeballs went to the sky, bro. Facts. Shaq's eyeballs went to the sky when you said that. He couldn't believe what you were saying, bro. He he knew Shaq knew it was hate, bro. You got to go in here, man, and just get past it. You got to get past it. Ticket. The post that's holding up the stance that's the post that's holding up your your tent is hate, and I'm telling you. What I seen from this guy, there is no hate. There is no reason for me to hate this dude. I don't owe him no money. He didn't do anything foul to me, right? Not only did he not do anything foul to me, he graced us with his game. I don't have anything personal against this guy. I love this guy's game. That's it. There is nothing else here to talk about in terms of, hey, I don't have anything, anything personal against that guy. I loved his game. I loved everything about his game. So, and any and, 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 and the guys from one to eleven, each one of those guys have a legit argument for being a top ten player. It's not like he doesn't have a legit argument for it. And I've said, "quote We can have a conversation between seven and eleven. I got no problem with that." And I've said that, but I don't have. I want to get. The, I want to get this. And Ron, you can put me in the tight zoom again. I want to make sure that we're clear. I don't have anything personal against this guy. I love everything about Kobe Bryant's game. I love everything about what he did. I don't have anything you. personal against him. Yeah. Nothing. It didn't bother you. It didn't bother you when he smoked you eleven zero. That didn't. That didn't bother you. <laughs> to be honest, to be honest with you, what you leave out is you leave out the fact that as a competitor, like you welcome stuff like that because you, when you see stuff like that, you recognize that as good as I think I am, I'm not that good, and I got work to do. As opposed to, yo, I hate that dude. I can't stand that dude. Who does he think he is? That's dealing in emotion, like you do, ticket. That's not how you deal with it right now. I'm not emotional right now. You emotional? I'm not. I'm chill. You, you, you. I'm actually chill. This, this, this and your ticket right now. You, you I, emotional right now. Hey, this is the way. This is the way I talk. Is that is that not correct? I'm not yelling. No, I'm, I'm saying, but you, I'm, you're, you're, I'm, I'm saying, but you. I, I know what it's all about. You upset that that Kobe when he told on Shaq shouldn't have did right. that. And you a Shaq family member, you 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 that bothered you, and then then it bothered you when Shaq kind of pushed him out of L.A. It bothered you, you know, you you couldn't go to the to the Staples no more, and you know you wasn't going to the Forum no more, to the Staples no more. So that bothered you that you was out of L.A. and um you know and, and like I said, man, I just you know li listen, man, I don't blame listen, I don't blame you because you a family member. I, I listen. I, I don't blame you. You're a family member, so you're supposed to be upset forever. You're supposed to hold that, but I'm just saying. It ain't no problem for you to admit that, brother, because any any time that Shaq walks around and says that Kobe's better than me, 
Anytime Magic Johnson says yeah, Kobe's yeah. better than me, anytime Kobe, yes, he did. Shaq did say that. Anytime Shaq says Kobe's better than me, anytime Magic Johnson says Kobe's better than me, anytime Magic says Kobe's the greatest Laker of all time, anytime all these dudes, all these dudes that played in the NBA, that played with and against Kobe Bryant, that played with and against LeBron, that played with and against these dudes that's involved in this situation, they all have Kobe up there. The only persons that don't have him are the persons that's emotionally scarred like yourself, sir. Well, like I true. said, I know, I, 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 I know the beef. I know the beef bothered you and what happened with them, but Shaq let that go. When they had that meeting, him and Kobe sat down, Shaq right. let that go. And right. I, I think Chilltown, you as a reputable, as one of the last of a dying breed on YouTube, as far as reputable basketball heads, I think that you need to go ahead and let and put that respect on his name because you, you and, and I, I'm saying because you you're not a, you're not like a Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp four years ago had Kobe Bryant two number two overall. Now he's best friends with King King James is what they call him, and Kobe's not even in his top ten. But but four years ago he said it's MJ Kobe and ain't no rest. That's well, what he here's said. The, here's the difference though, ticket. The difference is that. I would let it go if there was something to let go. There's no reason that I would. I, I'm, I'm not that kind of person. I don't hold. I don't hold grudges like that. Was you? Was you, a, 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 was you angry? Was you? Was you, was you had, no. Was you I angry? Was no, 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 no. But you ain't hear my question though. You ain't hear my question. Was you angry when the beef was going on with Kobe and Shaq? Because like you said, you were right there. I thought it, I was disappointed about it because I was right, right, right. See, now we get to the truth. So now, now, now we're peeling the layers. Right, right, right. So now, so you was bothered by that. So you was upset by that. Right. You was, you was enraged by that. No, you see, wanted to oh, do something. Oh, 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 stop right there. Whoa, whoa. There's a difference between disappointed. This is what you do, Ticket. What you do is you paraphrase and you start talking loud and then you'll throw your words in there and then you'll make it sound like it's something more than what it was. I never said the word enraged. There's a difference between enraged and disappointed. Slow but down. You wasn't in, you wasn't enraged. Oh, you wasn't enraged that Kobe. You wasn't enraged that Kobe was trying to run back out of LA. Pretty sure. Chill you, you wasn't in you you wasn't enraged. You wasn't enraged that Kobe tried to run back out of LA. You wasn't enraged by that. I'm 100 percent confident. I just heard myself say I was disappointed. That's what I said. Right. No, no, I'm saying, but were you angry Once that Kobe again, tried to run back out of LA? I just answered your question. You asked me. No, no, no. You I said I, I, but I asked I you, were you enraged. angry? I wasn't I wasn't enraged. I wasn't any of those things. I was disappointed because I was looking at this crew and I was like, yo, there's no reason why these dudes shouldn't stay together. So no. All right. All right, chill time. Yeah, and, 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 by, and by the way, and by the way, the, the logic of Magic saying that he's the best Laker, I mean, that, but, that, but that means that he's better than him. Just so you know, I mean, Dwayne Wade is the best. He, he ain't better than LeBron James. So, no, nah, he said that. No, no, no. They, but here's the thing they said this before Kobe passed away. This wasn't something they said after Kobe passed away. It was that's before still Kobe passed away. They were saying that. Right. No, no, no. So, I'm saying, no. So, what I'm saying to you is, is that even when it was see this is the part that that I couldn't understand. That's why I had to me it had to be personal because even when Shaq and Kobe was playing, Shaq was on the mic saying that Kobe's the greatest player in the world. Shaq was saying that while they were winning the three peat, he said Kobe's the greatest player on all nine planets. No, so he did I don't not understand what he said. I think he's the best player. No, 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 no. I got him on tape. I got him on tape. I Sacramento King tape. series. Sacramento King series at the game seven when I'll Kobe Bryant went right on there, yammed on the whole team and dropped the forty oh, ball. Kobe Bryant. Shaq went to the mic. Shaq went to the post game mic on national TV and said Kobe Bryant is the best player on all nine planets. It's on YouTube, chill. Don't lie, chill. Don't chill. Okay, okay, chill down. So chill down. We're going to talk about this ticket. Don't worry. Hey, Ron. Ron. You cue this, Ron. I did. We're at the twenty three fifty seven minute mark. You cue this. Now, hey, chill down. Quote. 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 I'm going to say it again, Ron. Quote. I think he's the best player by far. End quote. That's what he said. There is no what he, said. he said Kobe Bryant, the best no, player on all nine the, planets. I, I That's think, exactly what he the, said. I think he's the best player by far. Go exactly back and what look he said. 2001. He's a lab, boy. Resting time in the semifinals. Go look it he up. Kobe That's Bryant exactly is the, what he said. End I'm going to tell you how he said it, too. I yeah. Think, Kobe. I think Kobe. Kobe Bryant. Kobe. Kobe Bryant is the best player. He's the best player on all nine planets. Kobe Bryant, the best player in the world. There ain't no other. Yeah, man. Stop capping, man. Like I said, bro. Hey, I I love you, Chill Town. I love you like a brother, man. But you, you, hey, hey, Chill Town, you know who you are? You Isaiah Thomas or Michael Jordan. You still hold that in you, boy. And I feel that. I feel that to this day. I feel that to this day. Ticket. 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 What up? Do you know who this is? 
Fuck, bro. Uh-oh, Lamar in the house. What's up, brother? Y'all come, the, <laughs> y'all come over to Napalm Mom in here, man. This man, this, man, this man come in here with a raspberry smoothie. Come on. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Yo Lamar, up, FYF, what's good, bro? How you living? What up, man? What up, y'all, man? Uh, I just, I just oh, want to know, man. is Kobe the greatest Laker of all time? Nah. It got to go to magic. Mm. I mean, if you're just talking about greatness, you're talking about resurrecting an entire era of basketball. I mean, not just resurrecting an entire era. He resurrected an entire part of one of the reasons why the NBA is what it is today. He didn't save the Lakers. He saved an entire league from from falling apart. So when you talk about greatest and creating a new wave and style of playing basketball and, and, and making it entertaining so it's easier to watch for viewers on TV, he changed it. I mean, if you're talking about it, if you're just talking pure basketball and you're just trying to stick to basketball, who's the better player and you're trying to debate it like that, then it probably goes to Kobe. But if you're talking about the greatest Laker, I think a lot comes into being the greatest Laker and it's more than just being a better player. That way, that's, and, and, and when you talk about what they both were off the court and after their careers were over, Magic still has the – he still has this. So I think it goes to Magic. Well, Kobe Bryant – well, here, here's the thing. Here's the, here's the problem with your argument and the same thing with Chilltown. The actual aficionados who was there in the mix watching this thing you understand what I'm saying? The actual dudes that played in the association say it was Bean Bryant. Irvin Magic Johnson said Bean Bryant's the greatest player that ever wore, wore, wore a Lakers uniform greater than him. Shaquille O'Neal said the same thing. Shaquille O'Neal said Kobe Bryant's greater than me. So for you guys to come say something else, like I said, y'all can bear that hate in y'all heart, but if you ask the actual players, the actual players say something different. You saw the way Chill, you saw the way Shaq looked at his cousin Chill Town when he said that he had Kobe outside. He looked at him like he lost his damn mind. He looked like him. He looked at this dude like he was insane that he had Kobe Bryant out of his top ten. Not not that he was disappointed that this dude didn't know what the hell he was talking about. So cut it out. Like I said, Irvin Magic Johnson, Jack, and all them other dudes is on record saying that Kobe Bryant was before he died. This ain't after he passed away. This before he he died, after his career was over with. So like I said, y'all can check the record in Chilltown. I will be fact checking your lying ass tonight Absolutely. because I actually have the video where Shaq said he was the greatest player on all nine planets. So cut it out. Two thousand one Western Conference semifinals. Nah, you, you, you ain't gonna get that one off, dog. You ain't gonna get that one off, dog. You're not gonna get that one off. It's cool though. It's hey, salute to you. Salute to you and Fluent for epic interviews, Shaq. They, no, they said y'all was capping. They said y'all was lying, and y'all delivered. Y'all delivered the goods. And I seen all the people in there that was talking down, talking crazy. Y'all ought to be a damn shame to y'all sales. Now, all of a sudden, y'all want to ride coattails. Now, y'all should have listened to them when they told you he was going to pull up. Straight like that. But, yeah, Lamont, stop capping, dog. You know what it but is, bro. But, but y'all didn't ask me. Y'all didn't, nobody asked me who was the better no, I'm t- No, 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 no. I'm saying Irv and Magic Johnson himself. You saying Irv better than Kobe. As a no, Laker, I, I did not Kerr, say Kerr, I didn't Kobe, say he was no, a better player. No, no, I'm saying the greatest Laker ever. Urban Magic Johnson and the Lakers say it's Kobe. No, but I'm saying what to you, what are you encompassing when we say greatest? Is it just everything all, he pursued? Hold on, he did something Urban didn't do. He did something, he did something Magic didn't do. He did a couple things Magic didn't do. He didn't lose four NBA finals. That's one. That's, that's on the court. That's, hold on, that's one. Hold on, that's one. He only lost two. Secondly, he actually, he actually. Carried his team, you understand what I'm saying, to the NBA Finals. That's two, three times in a row. That's two. Magic yeah. had Kareem. He had those. He had Worthy. He had all those other guys. Kobe Bryant went and got a dude who never won a playoff game before in his life and, 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 and uh, powered the soul. Correct. He didn't know how to win. Mm-hmm. He didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. He had a young big man that didn't even know how to play basketball, Andrew Bynum. I had to teach him how to grow up and play from when you he came like, as, as a like Lakers. You talk like that team wasn't, wasn't a great team, though. They, hold on, time out. I'm gonna say it to you again, once again, bro. They, what, what were those dudes? Hold on, what were those? Hold on, let, let's be honest. What were those dudes before they played with Kobe? Everybody was saying Lamar Odom's career was headed to be a bust. That's facts. Those yeah, are facts. What, what, what nobody, Lakers, nobody. What, what were the Lakers doing before Pau Gasol got there? Though? Oh, they're like being carried by Kobe Bryant. To what? To, to the best record in the league in the, in, the, in the West. Yeah. See, if you're gonna if you're gonna talk, you better no, do your so research. What, what, because what, what, that what, what, year, what, what, that what, what, year what, what, before what, what, they got wasn't winning in the playoffs. That year, oh, you're not here. That's but that's 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 your logic, though, Tiki. 
That's not, not my hold on. That's, that's, hold on. That's fat. Hold on. Kill Town. I'm influent. What were the Lakers' record that year before they traded in midway through the season for Gasol? I mean, they, they were first they won, to the West. They, yeah, right they or wrong. 60, they, they won 65 games that year. That, they, they were they one of the best teams yeah. in the, before yeah. Powell came. Yeah. And you know what that was? Gasol that was Bean Bryant putting the team on his back. Period. In the in only 2007, thing. In 2007, what did, what did the Lakers? What did the Lakers do? They lost to Phoenix in five. Games. I mean, that's come on. That's cool, bro. What we talking about? Hold on. What we talking about? Come on. Right. But, but, but he showed. Hold on. He showed you how to go through the hard times and rebuild the organization. He built it back up. He didn't have to put no super team together to go get back the glory. Ticket and to, be traded. Ticket to put the to icing traded. to put the icing to put the icing on the cake. He went back after he lost to the Celtics and went back and beat them. Mm-hmm. He went to the team that smoked out LeBron James and beat them in five games. Mm-hmm. Hey, I love, he was I love this whole Bryant. time. I love, I love Kobe Bryant. I'm just saying, bro. We got we got to hold Kobe accountable, just like everybody. We else. hold him talk about. We do hold him accountable. He he went to he went to seven NBA finals, which they never praised the seven NBA finals he went to. Mm-hmm. Then y'all said then then the narrative was, and Fluent can vouch for this. He's a real Lakers fan, not a jackstrap. The narrative was when Shaq left, that Kobe would never win again. He could not win without Shaq. That was the narrative. Was. He went back to three straight NBA finals and won two of them. He lost that first finals versus the Celtics, but nobody talked about how Andrew Minor was hurt for the finals. They didn't have no big man, and Paul Gasol was getting abused. We didn't make those excuses like Chilltown make for not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, which is why he disrespect Kobe being Bryant to this day. So you can get mad, but the fact, hey, the facts is the facts, baby. My guy didn't have, my guy didn't have to go get all the best players in the world to go to three straight NBA finals. So, so, so rewind the clock back. So, so rewind the clock back. I don't even know how we. This is what we're not going to do. We're not going to get yeah. into a LeBron Kobe thing. No, but, you but the one that hold on. It, your cousin you want, told you. Your cousin told you you out of your damn mind. Yeah, 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 your cousin yeah, told yeah, you yeah, you yeah, out of your yeah, damn yeah, mind. Put that man over LeBron. But, but, but let's but, let's rewind the clock. Let's let's rewind the clock. Like you just said, he went and he and he built it up. This is the same Kobe Bryant who demanded to be traded. So he wasn't building it up. He wanted out, and it wasn't a bluff. He wanted out, and that's not. And, and he didn't want out. He didn't want out then. He also wanted out in two thousand four. But the Lakers decided to the, the Lakers decided to go with him instead of Shaq. They moved on from Shaq because Shaq wasn't he was breaking down and he was getting older. But then in 2007, they weren't building that unit around him like he like he thought that they were building that unit around him. Not only were they not building that unit around him like he thought that they were building that unit around him, his legacy was going to be about winning, and he felt like that they were wasting his prime, which would explain why he asked out. Not because he was running from the process. He asked out because they weren't doing what was necessary in order for them, in order for them to have an opportunity to win, which would explain why when they went and got Pal Gasol, how they, how much better that they got, right? So with all of that being said, none of that, none of that, none of that excuses Kobe Bryant from the fact that he's still awesome. And I don't I I don't discredit that. I still think that Kobe Bryant is incredible. I think he's the second best two guard in the history of the game behind Michael Jordan. I still think that he's one of the greatest players to ever play the game in the history of the NBA. I don't have any ill will toward Kobe Bryant. I think he's fantastic. What there's no ill will toward Kobe Bryant. But with all of that being said, I think that there are eleven guys. Who have no, we're, we're talking about we're talking about the greatest Laker right now, oh, though. So we're, so we're, so we're, so we're off of that. Okay, so we're off of that. And listen, so just, we're talking just about the greatest Laker. Trade, I just want to add, though, just when you're saying asking for a trade, l- l- let me remind you. Let me remind you who 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 was leading the Lakers in minutes aside from Kobe when he was asking for a trade. Uh, Lamar Odom, Luke Walton, Smush Parker, mm-hmm. Kwame Brown. Mm-hmm. Those were the next guys, leaders in minutes for the Lakers. Right. I'd be asking for a damn trade too. Here you go. He wanted out. Y'all not going to waste my prime years. Y'all not going to waste my prime years. Y'all not going to waste conversation because you know magic and kobe are my favorite players of all time period magic was first and then kobe took over but magic did a lot for the nba the difference for me why i have kobe ahead of him as a laker is the seven extra years is the seven extra years right Mm -hmm. magic unfortunately his career got cut short so when you look at what they did for the lakers they both brought five championships they both brought a ton of statistics and accolades and all that stuff. Kobe right. just was fortunate enough to do it for seven more years. So that's why he gets, I have magic over Kobe. As a Laker, I got Kobe over magic. So it's, it's, it depends on your criteria, right? Hey, and, and, and say this though, chill, chill. I mean, fluent. Don't finish. When you eating your food, finish your breakfast. Uh, chill, t- uh, fluent. Tell chill too. And not only that, 
that Kobe that Kobe Bean Bryant, not only did he if LeBron James had those same guys, your ESPN Chill Town ass would be up here talking about how the team wasn't doing enough to build around him the same way he did when he was in Cleveland. Right around yeah, fluent. Yeah. So he would have been here making every excuse under the sun. Let me make sure. Ho, 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 ho. LeBron, I've never blamed. I've always said this to, about LeBron. I don't blame him for going to Miami. I don't blame him for going to Miami. He put himself in a better situation. I don't blame him. Kobe didn't have that luxury. He wasn't a free agent because that's what he would have done. He would have left. So instead, he asked for a trade. It's it's the same thing and not, um, because they weren't doing they after Shaq got traded they didn't do him any favors i gave you the list of players no and, and, nobody and, and, not lebron james not michael jordan not jesus the real one no one's winning with that crew no one nobody. so the fact that they have 500 is a miracle which would explain why go ahead and have dinner with Fluent. Go ahead and have dinner with Fluent. Go ahead and have dinner with Fluent. Because you're going to have, you go have breakfast, right? skip the lunch, and get right to dinner on his ass, Fluent. Hey, hey, Chill Town. Fluent left out one thing, Chill Town. He left out one thing. Guess what? Here's the caveat of it of it all. This is what really makes Kobe Bryant the greatest Laker. Chill Town, yo boy, yo king, LeBron Ramon James, while he was winning NBA MVPs, Kobe Bryant was waiting for that ass in the NBA Finals, sucker, and he was a no-show. Both sucker. of them years he won back-to-back -back MVP. <laughs> and Bean Bryant was out here collecting the gold, baby. Believe that. So you can put that in your pipe and smoke it, baby boy. Sucker. That, I, you know what? That actually was... That, that is actually... I hate... That would have been... Uh, if, if LeBron would have held up his side, side of the bargain, that would have been two finals that uh, are finals that we'd love to see. <laughs> I'm sorry. No doubt about it, fellas. Let's go ahead and transition into a new topic. Uh, you, as we know, it's a it's a fresh new week. On Monday of every week, the NBA announces their players of the week. I have two players right here. I have Brandon Ingram. His team went three and zero. He averaged thirty one, ten assists, six rebounds. Jalen Brown. His team went three and zero. He averaged thirty one, eight rebounds on fifty five percent. I'm gonna ask you guys. Out of these two guys, you get to choose one to start a franchise with. Who are you picking, Jalen Brown or Brandon Ingram? Mars, I want to hear from you first. Brandon Ingram. Um, I think I think he's just a more reliable number one option. I think he's a much better playmaker and passer than um, Jalen Brown is. I think his ability to get to the mid-range and operate there is more consistent than Jalen Brown. Um, I think Jalen Brown thrives as a number two because he doesn't have as much offensive responsibility in terms of having to be a playmaker, whereas with Brandon Ingram, without Zion, we're seeing that that's what he has to do. So I think I just trust Brandon Ingram as a number one more than Jalen Brown. No doubt. FIF, how you feeling about this? Oh, uh, it's easy. There wouldn't be no question I'm going with Jalen Brown. Mm -hmm. Brandon Ingram, it ain't nothing about talent in his – it's just not about talent. It's just about him. To me, he's a loser. He will never win in the NBA. He, 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 he only wants to play good sometimes – and that's when he's motivated to do so when he has a good team around him. But outside of that, he's not built to – we've seen what he does when a bad team is around him. He wilts away. He do, doesn't really show up. He gets injured a ton. I'm not really relying on a guy like that. He's selfish. Didn't really start passing the ball until C.J. McCollum got there and had to motivate him to do something other than just try to score. If you're trying to start a team, i got to go with Jalen Brown. He plays both sides. He, maybe he's not the talent. But he's gonna give me all the other intangibles that I what would much rather have with a team with a, a young team from a startup. Yeah, he got he, he nailed it, man. Jalen Jalen Brown, you go with the guy who plays on both sides of the ball, who doesn't miss two months with a toe contusion. That's a bruise, by the way. And I think he's a lot less difficult to build around. And not only is he a lot less difficult to build around, I think because of his availability, that makes him even more viable. So when you're talking about a dude in Brandon Ingram, the talent. I mean, he looks good. I remember watching him in 2019. I went to a, I went, they came down here to play the Miami Heat, and I went to the game. And there was a soft, there, there was a soft vibe that I got from Brandon Ingram. I always, I felt like he was soft. Mm -hmm. There's something that's not that that's not mm -hmm. there with him. Jalen Brown doesn't really strike me as that guy. Jalen Brown strikes me as a guy that you could possibly build your unit around him, and I think it would be less difficult. I would have to go with Jalen Brown. Mars, um, this is it's not. Hard. It's not, oh, thank you. It's not really relating to Brendan Ingram and Jalen Brown. It's just more like just me thinking. Yeah. What What's the talent, like, what's the threshold of how talented you can be 
to where your lack of availability doesn't hinder our chances of building around you. For example, you guys brought up uh, Brandon Ingram's availability, and that's why Jalen. That's a reason why Jalen Brown you don't have a build around. But we wouldn't make that same argument for Kevin Durant versus Jalen Brown because he's so much more talented. If you get what I'm saying, even though he's less available. So what's the what's like the minimum amount of talent you would have? Well, let's, your let, availability would let, not let's re, let, let, let's rewind that we can't we can't use KD because KD is in a different space right now because KD is on the other side of being KD. If KD was in the same space as Brandon Ingram, he's a lot more durable. Yeah, so, if we were talking about fourth year yeah. KD, right. we would the the, the yeah, K, KD KD was just an example of someone who's immensely right, talented, right, right, right. but he's okay. Here, well, it could be a you, different player, but all right, yeah, use Zion. Saying. Use a guy. Yeah, what, what's like, the level of yeah? Zion could be one. What's the level of talent? Like Zion Williamson is immensely talented. And some people would maybe still build around him, even though he's injury prone. I would not personally, because I don't. Then your franchise like, would be losers. Like, how how ta how talented do you need to be to where like injury concerns, like Joel Embiid? <clears throat> how talented do you have to be to where that's not really a problem, and you still take them just off the back of their talent? I think you have to be somewhat of a franchise player, kind of like what Joel Embiid was, where we can if we could get 55, 60 games out of you, and then. We'll figure it out in the playoffs. I think it has to be something like that where we can look past durability as opposed to a guy that's playing 45 games, that's playing 40 games. I think you're, that your talent level supersedes your availability when you're playing at least, at minimum, you're playing 55 games. Now, if you're playing 35, 40 games, then I don't think that it matters because you're a bit, no, it doesn't matter how talented you are. You're not available, so it doesn't but matter. I, I've, I'll try to answer because I'm the one that said it. it. It has to be like, I think your talent and skill level will translate to being like one of a top five, a top three player in the NBA when you're healthy. So if you are that good, like Joel Embiid, right? They waited. He was hurt and they waited. He missed, I think, what, his first two seasons-ish, right? So, but there was a, hey, this guy's going to be so good. He's going to be a top five player in the NBA. If that's not the case, if you're like a top 25 you start to question: Is it worth it to take the chance on someone who's who's injury prone? I don't I don't like that for for GMs and just organizations in general. Like a guy like Zion. I mean, before before he got the last extension or whatever he got, I was already saying like, y'all just throwing money and y'all y'all just burning money. I don't know. I thought that was a big mistake. I said that at the draft. I said I love his talent. He said General that about Steph Curry too. Just don't think he's going to play. And then there's guys that pan out. Steph Curry with the ankles. They were scared about him. Joel Embiid, like we said, there's guys that – But for the but there's there's a difference between Steph and those guys, though. The, sure. way, the, way, the way Steph plays in comparison to the way Zion plays, Zion is huge. Yeah, and he's, he good. jumps – he's this high in the air. Like, you can't, you can't keep putting that much weight down on your ankles and your knees over and over again. And I'm no doctor, but just by watching it, I'm just like, that's, that's not going to last. I, and, and I would have missed on Joel now because I would have been done with him if I was feeling yeah. right now. We're not doing this. So. And, and I think Steph plays a less physical game than both Z than Zion does, and both Zion and Joel Embiid. I mean, Steph is more of a perimeter player who shoots the basketball a lot, and he doesn't get banged around as much as those guys do. So I think that those two things are completely different. I, I'll add just quickly on the Joel Embiid thing, but it also depends on your franchise. When when you look at Philly, they were in the process, right, where they were yep. tanking and they had time. So to take a chance on someone who is that generational talent, knowing that, hey, we're okay if we lose, or we don't need to win, we don't need this person to come in and save us. So they were in that that process. So, again, it it's, depends on that mindset of where, where the team is and where they're going. Mm -hmm. Yo, Bob, I didn't get your predictions on or who you would take out of Jalen Brown and Brandon Ingram. You know who he's been. <laughs> Jalen Brown. <laughs> <laughs> he want Jalen Brown in Sacramento. Forget in Boston. He, don't want, <laughs> he, he ain't picking them as a trade. Trade want, everybody want, but Sabonis and Fox, and let's get yeah. us Jalen Brown. <laughs> I hey, if, we can, if we can get Jalen Brown, we could talk about the air. Ooh. Uh oh, <laughs> oh. Hey, don't, hey, don't, I, I probably should have said that. Wow. <laughs> But I mean, tell, it. <laughs> tell us how you really feel, Big Ox. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what all due respect to Dean. The most clutch really player feel. in the NBA. You ready to ship him off? Nah, mm -hmm. nah, I, I don't think so. But nah, I'm, I'm just kind of expressing how much I would love to have Jalen Brown on the team. All right, yeah. <clears throat> all right fellas, we're going to go ahead and dive into these super chats. Yo, y'all see the title of the show The NBA Playoff Race is Heating Up, plus playing predictions. Everybody up here has their playing predictions. We'll get to those soon. Yo, FIF. Need your playing predictions. Uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit, so you got some time to think on it. 
as of right now, we're going to do these super chats. My man Jubian said, NBA app posted some 90s finals. Y'all should tune in. I've seen that. Did anybody I need, else see I don't, it? I don't need to tune in. I saw it already because we was there. So I don't need to tune in. All it's going to do is just remind me of what it was. I remember the 93 finals. I remember the 1990 <laughs> finals in Detroit and, and – and, Portland. Portland, I'm sorry. Between Detroit and Portland. I remember the <laughs> 91 finals. I Are remember you sure? The <laughs> that's <a> terrible. <laughs> I, I, that was a I, bad time to figure right. out. <laughs> I, I, I remember the Detroit Pistons being the best defensive team in the game and basically smoking the Portland Trailblazers, right? I remember that. So I remember the 97 finals. I don't need to tune in. I saw all of it already. I'm good. I'm going to tune in because I forget. He's got a photographic memory. I forget. I need to watch. I remember when uh, – NBA classics when they showed all the finals, like every finals game. Yeah. From, from the from the late from like the late sixties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, Pill Town, stop trying to talk all proper up here, man. You ain't number the street cat. I already there know that, dog. There you go. Uh, uh, there you go. All proper, switch up your talk, man. Trying to be all professional and stuff, man. I already know how you get down, dog. No, I already feel. I've seen how you play basketball. Play basketball. I, sure, I know bro. how you run, bro. Chill town. You can fool them. You can't fool me, chill. Chill, you just like me. You want them to think you want them to think that you're different than me, but you just like me. You came. I know how you came up, brother. So don't fake the funk. Yeah, I already know. You coming here? You can take as many courses as you want to on how to talk proper. You ain't fit to fool. I, I know what it is. Damn, hold on. Look, let me make sure. Well, hold, hold, hold on, hold ticket. Let me make sure. Talking that ESPN talk, man. Cut it out. <laughs> let, me, let me make sure I'm getting this correct. So, hey, remember, hey, today, remember today your ticket and he's chill. Right. Yeah, <laughs> man. You're trying to sound like a real reporter, man. Let me make sure I'm getting this correct. So every other word out of my mouth ain't mother or so now all of a sudden I'm talking proper. Nah, I ain't say that. Nah, you know what you be doing. And I ain't screaming at the top of my lungs. You can't lie, right? Mike, baby, you're gonna be the phony baloney now. What are we talking about here, Ticket? I ain't ain't doing nothing different than what I would. If I was talking to you or I was talking to my cousin, I ain't doing nothing different. There's nothing different up here, brother. All I'm doing is answering a question. That's it. What the hell? (laughs) Crazy. (laughs) Hey, you all right, though. Ticket, you all right. I do. I I live in your building. That's right. We went to school together. I grew up with you. That's not that. That's not false. What you talking about? That's a fact. It's your money, Jones. That's why. All right, y'all. The next super Good chat reason, actually man. isn't basketball related, but man, let's do it. Let's talk about it. King Shot of four four two said, "Favorite mom and pop restaurants in your hometown." What's up, man? Hey, hey we we got some travelers in the chat, or some people that may not know what your city's about. Let's represent our cities. Favorite mom and pop spots. I used to be a spot in Jersey City when I was before I was vegan. It was called Utah Fried Chicken. Man, I don't whatever they put in crack, that's what's in that chicken. Because if you eat one, <laughs> yeah. I can eat twenty of them. Oh my god. Hmm. Shit, I'm, I'm in the breakfast. I'm in the breakfast, so I have to say stage coach. Word. Mars, can we get some uh, some European love? What's the hot spot, Mars? If I'm in, if I'm in London, Mars, where am I going to eat? Where's the best, where's the best fishing shit spot, Mars? Where's the, where's the, where's the, if I'm in London, Mars, where the spot at? Where am I going to eat? Fire ass tea. See, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know the stats for restaurants like I do basketball. Come on, boy, that boy. That boy, Chill, I, that boy, Chill Town, that boy, Chill Town got y'all all food. That boy is Nino Brown in here <laughs> trying to act like the late great Scrooge Stewart Scott. Cut it out, man. Uh, ain't fooling nobody, man. You know what you hear, <laughs> <man, laughs> <man, laughs> What's up with you, man? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He think because he put on, he think because he put on a couple. Oh, now fool me, man. You ain't fool. You got these people fool. You ain't fool me, Chill. I know where you come from, dog. Straight like that. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Uh oh, ticket about to blow my cover. Yo, ticket, you gotta chill out, man. I'm trying, uh, to, be, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be proper. I'm not trying to yeah, you yeah, blow my cover. Chill out, yeah, man. Wow, ticket. Yeah, what you yeah, doing, man, yo? I guarantee your teammates say you got in fights every day. Oh, come on here, acting like he all proper. This, that, the third. Yeah, man. I don't say go try and make me look like I'm crazy. Nah, you crazy too. Period. <laughs> <laughs> I have two. I have two because I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you two because I, I I'm the one that eats the most clearly here. Um, if you're in Toronto, go to Square Boys. It has the best souvlaki if you like Greek chicken souvlaki, better than wow. in Greece. Um, but, and also in your neck of the woods, Ron, just outside of Portland, there's a place called Buster's that has the best brisket. 
period, ever. Go Buster's eat it. Right. We talking Portland. I know all the spots in Portland. You know Buster's though. You don't? Do you know Buster's? Best brisket you've ever had. Go is. Woo. Hey, what's that donut spot in Portland? I love that spot. Oh, that's that voodoo. 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 Oh my yeah. god! I've been to Voodoo a couple of times. That's what you do. You go to Busters and then Voodoo. That's that's yeah, the that's yeah, the circle. Yeah. And then, and then what do you go after that. I can't tell you where I go after. That. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's I, I hear you go for you go. You'll know this. You go for some tea. You go for some tea at uh, in Puyallup because you know the tea joint they got there where it's. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right fellas let's keep it pushing on the next oh uh, uh, no 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 we're not gonna keep it pushing because What's ticket that? tv gonna tell me where and when i'm in his city where i'm eating oh. <laughs> that's what i want to know when i'm in ticket tv city where i'm eating that ticket good spot find him there that's why he's he not gonna mm-hmm. pay for the steak dinner so it makes sense that's <laughs> why where, where you go Shit. Uh from Indian I'm in from Indianapolis, so damn. I would have to say uh barbecue heaven um on on, on Martin Luther King Jr. Street, um uh, Indianapolis. Uh they've been there for a minute. We used to go there after games, before games. Barbecue just, heaven, man. And just so you dudes know, just so y'all know, any spot on MLK, food <laughs> is fire. Yeah. Don't make a difference what city it's in. Whatever <laughs> if it's on MLK, it's fire. No doubt, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> Hey, right, come to Seattle and see the two spots: Ezel's Chicken or Catfish Corner. If you know, you know. Mm-hmm. Ezel. All right, let's let's go ahead and keep it pushing. Though a tribe mm-hmm. called Lynn said Embiid really ducked Jokic last night. Mm-hmm. That was some scary shit. I was I was going to yo for real. I'm man. so I, disappointed. I, I, I was looking too, forward to me that. Me too, Mars. I was yo. I was man. I was really looking forward to. It. He had a calf injury two days ago, right? It wasn't. <clears throat> like what happened with Cat a couple of days ago, um, earlier in the season, right? It wasn't what happened with 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 KD when, in the playoffs. It looked like it was a mild strain. It wasn't. It ain't like it was nothing serious. Like he couldn't get out there for twenty minutes. That's what that's what y'all telling me. It was a it was a quote unquote precaution. And this is why we have such a difficult time with these dudes, man. This is why we have. And, and then y'all want me to talk about them like I talk about Lajuan and Shaq and Jabbar. And I can't, man. I can't do it. <laughs> I was, oh, just, I was I was just looking for because Denver just played Milwaukee. I was looking forward to another, them going another MVP battle, and then the like the interview that Embiid had got released like the day before the game, and then you find out he's not playing. It just it was bad timing. I didn't, see, I, I, didn't I didn't hear that interview. I heard y'all speak on it earlier in Open Gym, or I, I never heard the interview though. Um, to paraphrase, he said something like he doesn't like listen to the expectations people have for him because he's never made any All NBA first teams or he's not a multiple time MVP. So he shouldn't have as much expectations as those type of people who have never done anything in the playoffs either. And then he said that the MVP narrative is always changing and that he doesn't really care about analytics because when you look at there's people who are terrible defensively based on the eye test, but then the analytics will say that that's some of the best defenders in the game. Yeah, so he, does, he doesn't really pay attention to the analytics, but he says the MVP narrative always changes. It was just bad timing for the, that interview to come out and then find out he's not playing against Jokic when mm. he was very clearly talking about Jokic. Don't don't uh, Milwaukee and, um, and Philly don't they play soon? Um, this Sunday, I think. So nobody thinks that Joel was actually injured. We're all positive. That- no, I believe he was injured. I mean, um, yeah, he, the yeah, narrative. They messed, maybe, y'all maybe, messed the maybe. narrative up. Y'all messed the narrative look, of MVP if, is if, so screwed up. He might not be. Is he hundred percent? Look, is he a hundred percent? Probably not. Like nobody, when there's two, three games left in the season, is a hundred percent. But. Mm-hmm. You know, he was so upset that he was came in second two years in a row in MVP. He dominated Jokic um, in Philly. He owed it to himself and the NBA and its fans to go to Denver and do it again. Like, that's what superstar players are supposed to do. They're supposed to relish those moments. And the fact that he ducked it with a lame excuse like, well, I don't care anyways. Yes, you do. You do care. You do care. That's why you. That's why you. We see you crying when you lose. That's yeah, why you yeah. got upset that you were second two years in a row. You do care. So I. I. I don't like that. Like I. I was he hurt? Maybe, but I don't think he was hurt enough that he couldn't play. He could have very easily just rested the Phoenix game. That was the second night of a back to back. They mm-hmm. didn't. They. He could have rested that game and then been ready to play against Denver. Because I know about the calf strain. He came out against Chicago when they were blowing them out because of it, and they, that was a precaution. So it's not like he just made it up, but. You had a back-to-back against Golden State and Phoenix. You could have rested one of those games. 
and then played against Denver, but instead you chose to play the back to back, but not against Denver. It's just weird. So before before I was blessed to to be able to come up on the panel with you with you good fellas, when I was when I was on the regular Sunday and Sunday and Wednesday show, I was very harsh about Joel and B. And this right here is why it's stuff like this, like. Oh, he's not injured. I mean, yeah, he might he might be have some calf tightness, but man, like you said, when nobody's nobody's one hundred percent when there's six games left in the in, in the season, and expe- especially so, and this is one of those things. Like this is these are the type of matchups that are supposed to be like marquee matchups that's we we could talk about for years. You know what I'm saying? Like when when this is such a tight MVP race and you guys get to face off against each other, and especially I mean we can't pretend like Joel didn't cook him last time. So it's like so you're not so you're not you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna allow this man to get his get back like you're not gonna prove like no I, I own you like with but with boxers for instance back well, there back won't in be the no day, rematch there won't be yeah, no rematch yeah like back back in the day boxers you know that that was that was a sign of respect like yo we gotta feed our family come on let's get I, I, you probably you probably might with me but you gotta feed your family I gotta feed mine let's let's get it in and so what? for him to, for him to duck this matchup like Mar said you could you could arrest it that Phoenix that Phoenix game. Lamont, you was you you were saying something about the uh, MVP criteria and Joker. I, I, I missed it. I'm just saying, like the way it, it like the the MVP conversation is so sensitive now. Mm-hmm. It let's say it's very possible that he could have came out that game against Denver and Jokic outplays him. That is because that's how good Jokic is. And if Jokic right. outplays him because of recency bias. Mm-hmm. Then the conversations all of a sudden go and shift. I'm mm-hmm. just talking. I'm not talking about us on the panel. I'm just saying right. in general, cross fan talk is going to be that all oh, Jokic is an MVP. Because to be honest, I even forgot that Jokic cooked. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, B cooked Jokic a while right. ago. Be- yeah. Just because of recency bias, and that one game right there would have swayed so many people, and it could have right. changed the conversation. It's just like I think I think Embiid has a point. What's the point? Because it don't matter what he do. To, like Dame Lillard said. Players just need to start playing for championships because don't nobody truly care about what happens in the regular season anyway because everything gets swayed so easily on a week to week basis. So I mean, he maybe mm-hmm. maybe he was right just to well just. You know. But the problem is you're you're talking about what the people are going to say, but the media who are the voters are going to say, oh, he ducked him, and that's going to affect their vote more but than I'm not the, seeing more that than the field plays him more than but the field. I, that, plays him. That's what I'm saying. I'm not seeing that from the media. I I, I would believe the media would have been thirstier to say, oh. Jokic is the true MVP. If he has a good game and drops a triple double and they win and MB play, the media is going to jump all over that, pushing a new case for Jokic being the MVP. I promise you, they would have been. So, it, I mean, so you don't, I mean, you don't, you don't think they're taking the he ducked him? I, I mean, I'm not hearing it. I'm hearing it from like us, but yeah, like Perkins, but I'm not hearing it from like the the voters and the people that actually vote. I'm not hearing that narrative. I'm here. I, I was I was hearing it all day today on on. on was you? I, I didn't watch Source in the day, but you know, I, was, I, mean, I, was, I haven't uh, seen anything come across. Yeah, I was my in the, I was on the freeway. I was on the freeway all day today, and I was on the um, uh, Sirius XM. So, um, who who was Scalabrini on there with? Uh, man, I forget. Um, I don't know. Uh, Rick 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 Campbell, I think they were they were on there. They were they were super harsh about it. Uh, the couple the couple of talk shows I did listen to, they were you know questioning. But are they voters what? though? Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I know. I know that I know Scalabrini's not a voter because he's with the Celtics. So, well, two things. Well, two things. Number one, Kendrick Perkins is a voter. Yeah, he's which, he's a voter. Which, and he's, which, which, which yeah. bugged me out because he said this is stuff like this that I'm going to remember. But he should not be a voter. But anyway, right, yeah, yeah, I, I don't understand that neither. But to uh, to to Lamont's point, the question that I would have is, well, isn't that part of it? When you talk about you know the narrative changing, it's, it's basically like rounds, like you're talking about boxers fighting. Well, one round you got this round. Well, the next round you may have this round, and then the people may very well be split because when you're talking about narrative in the terms of media, well, who do they listen to? They listen to the people too. It's not just them coming in with just the specific criteria. No, they also listen to the people as well. So if Joker puts four, and not Joker, I'm sorry, if MB puts 48 and 17 on me, if I'm Joker, I'm licking my chops because I can't wait to see him again. Because I want to make sure that that is not the last picture you see of us two. Because remember, before that last game, in, 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 in I believe it was earlier this year, before that game, these guys have only seen each other twice since the 1920 season. That's it. And the last time you got, and the last time you guys saw me and him get on the floor, he put almost fifty and twenty on me. I would, I would very much like to get that back. So for him to, so for him to bow out, and I'm not going to be able to go tonight. Well, hell yeah, if I'm Joker, I'm not happy about that, and I might even say something about it. 
I might even go to the media and I might even stir up the pot and I might even say something about it. I wish you would. It'd be fun. It'd be fun for conversation, but it would be. I just think players stop caring, man. I just think players stop caring. Why 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 is that though, Lamar? Why 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 do they stop caring though? Because, because it, narratives man like these narratives of t- like i think dame had a point i mean as much as you can criticize him i think <coughs> draymond criticized him and whatnot he does have a point um as far as the regular season really don't mean nothing no more it's all about ring chasing and so when i see these players trying to team up and do whatever it takes to go get these rings at the end of the day it just seems like everybody is going off recency bias they have short memories and then people are just gonna run the basketball reference and just count up how many championships, how many awards you got at the end of the day, and that's what's going to determine who's the best of the best. There's no context being put in these conversations, anything like that. Um, like the Hold things on, that Lamar. made Oscar Robinson great, nobody cares about that no more. The things Lamar, that made I'm like hey, Oscar Lamar. Robinson great, nobody cares. You, Lamont, you sound like me, buddy. You nah. sound like your brother over here, Lamont. Now we're on the same page. See, this is the type of foolishness. You just, you just made my whole argument on the player's choice that I've been making on here for seven months now yeah. is that guys like Lowe, who's MIA, who knows where he at. He probably somewhere in the strip club right now, get it in like John Moran was. <laughs> Hill Town, ESPN Phil, Mars, and the rest of these dudes that in here that cap a lot, a lot of records on stats. See, you just gave a perfect example of why I exist because of the eye test. You understand what I'm saying? So when I say stuff to Chill Town, like Kobe Bryant is greater than LeBron James or greater than this one or greater than that one. It's because of the eye test. That's not, not enough, though. Of, it's not yeah, enough. And the stats that guys are chasing. Lamont, not enough. I appreciate you for making my point for me, brother. Salute to FYF Sports debates for making the greatest uh, point that he's and made. It, and, and I, it's I, I Absolutely. It's a valid point. But the, but your logic ticket about the eye test, that's not enough. Ticket, I can't just walk up to a car and the car looks good. And I'm going to slap $50,000 down on it. I'm not going to drive the car. Yeah. I'm not going to look in the car. I'm not going to kick the tires. No, nope, car but looks you, good. But, 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 car. but the Kobe car enough. has been driven. Don't do that. The Kobe car has been driven and it's been tested. It has been tested. It's not a good car. It's a fantastic car. So the point is, is that we can't just go off the eye test. We can't just hey, go. Well, no, no, no. Well, well, hold on. Well, well, it don't. That, and that car doesn't have. And chill. That car doesn't have six NBA finals losses on it. That's not the point. We're not talking about that. I, I just don't know how this applies no, no. to me. Right. This is what I'm asking. I didn't even you? say the eye test. I this is, this is what I'm saying. We're talk, if, if we're talking <laughs> about this, if, 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 we're, 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 to, we're talking about this in its totality. We ain't just talking about, yo, I'm going to go look up that a dude average. T- this is what, and, and Ticket, you brought this up, and this is opening up Pandora's box when you do this, because when we just go off numbers, now it's something completely different. If we just go off the eye test, now it's something completely different. I didn't say just the eye test. I'm That's saying exactly that you had the eye said. test in it. No, you I said that you, you, praise, you, you, praise, you praise dudes. You praise dudes that chase stats and, and accolade. That's not I true. Praise dudes that get the, I praise dudes that get the accolades while putting in the lie. work. That's a lie. That's not true. You the, lie. The problem, the problem with what you're saying, though, with the, the ring culture, um, and I don't disagree with you, or Dame, for that matter, but the problem is people use it. And it's not just people and fans or media, it's players use it because you get idiots like Draymond Green who tells Charles Barkley he can't sit at his table because he's got rings and Barkley doesn't. So it's go. It's not just new. That's not something new, bro. Like this is something that's been going on. We disrespect Jerry West and, and Elgin Baylor guys who made it to the finals, but for other people, we, we applaud them getting to the finals and losing. These guys made it eight, nine times. And we're like, Oh, they suck. Or Stockton Malone got there twice. Oh, but they lost. So it's like the narrative changes depending on who your favorite player is. So when we say rings, this ring culture, it's, oh, it's convenient to use it when you want to. But you got to get these idiots like Green to stop saying nonsense. Like even some WNBA player, I forget who her name, I forget her name. I forget her name. But she said the same thing to Chuck was like, well, I got I got two chips and you don't. You can't talk to me. That stuff oh, is uh, nonsense, Parker. man. Parker is her name. Was it? No, was it Candace Parker? No, I don't think it was. It wasn't Candace Parker. But players now have less control over winning championships than ever before. They have more power now. I, I, no, I think no, it's that. no, I, I, no. I, I, and the reason why I say this is because mm. a, 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 a owner, a owner can buy a championship. If an owner truly wanted to spend the money, go into the luxury tax. There's plenty. Most owners are businessmen, and they're not dumb enough to do that. Most owners are content with just making a profit, and if they win, they win. But most of these NBA teams is just turning a good profit. Right. But 
owners can go just buy a championship if they wanted to over over the course of a 10 year period. If, if an owner was that dedicated, they could organizations can really control it. And with, when you talk about what they've done in Portland with Dane, the things, the pieces that the players that they've signed and put around him is laughable. If I talk, if I tell you guys about some of the contracts that they've surrounded Dane with, giving Evan Turner a whole bunch of money, Mo Harkless, and some of these guys getting seventy, eighty million dollars, it's just like, okay, Dame couldn't control that. Dame couldn't control CJ getting traded, right? Or even that duo not necessarily working and them putting the competent defense behind them to help. What Dame can only control as good as Dame is. Well, he but can he, he, control he can control so it in the sense he Dame, can Dame, by Dame, Dame has Dame has cho- taken the made the choice not to control it. He easily could have not re up, become a free agent, and go wherever he want. He easily mm-hmm. ended the trade because we see, didn't Paul George just resign with OKC, and then five seconds later, oh, now I want to go to the Clippers and play with Kawhi. The the players have more control than ever to build those units. That's what a ticket's problem is that they do that. Let me just go back a sec. It was plum. It was plum. She said for someone, sure. she plays for Las Vegas Aces, for yeah. someone that the girl that just uh, married Darren Waller, for mm, someone yes. that's never we won the lovely Kelsey trip, Plum. I'll I'll just give you some advice. That's really not what you do. Like like she's telling him like come on. But anyways. Now now, now Ron Ron is a little bit biased. Kelsey Plum, she went to the University of Washington, led the country mm-hmm. in scores. She's got, <laughs> yes, but she has no Ron, right Ron is a, to Ron's say a little bit biased. Because I'm, I'm, I'm biased, but she she bad. By the way, player's choice WNBA coming real soon. Sure. Very soon. But anyway, Tony, as I, you're saying, but I'm anyways, the, I I just think the players like when you say bye, like I I, I don't have the stat here in front of me. Maybe Mars has it because, you know, he's our stat guy. Um, when was the, you know, is it the Where's highest it? team that wins every year? No, right? It's it's not. You can There's bad contracts, high payrolls that don't win, but we do see players teaming up. So, Floon, what did she say? He he basically said, they. I, I guess they won the championship, um, and he said now, yes, now she should go out and guarantee, um, should go out and guarantee a repeat. And she said, for someone that hasn't won a championship, he's that's not how it's done. He, you know, he doesn't go because he's never won. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know how that goes. That's just that she, you know, trying to trying to sound cool for the new guys. But, but if, yeah, what you yeah. said a minute ago, like about about that's why Joel didn't play because the narrative, this and that, and then people saying the ring chasing. Like I get it, but that shit is soft. Like that's that's soft. Like if you, but, you but not, most not, of us are hoopers and we basketball junkies though. That's yeah, the that's problem. What, yeah, I'm okay, but that's what I'm saying. You you it, you know for an NBA player to be like, oh, it don't really matter. I don't need to. You know, it's the narrative, this and that. Like that's just as corny as it gets for me. Like, so now you don't want to compete because everybody else is already well, teaming up. In his in his defense, he was saying I was he was hurt, and 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 look, there there is a. I don't mean to not. I don't mean to, but to defend Embiid for a second. If he felt he really was hurt and he needed to rest and get ready for the playoffs, that's mm-hmm. more important. That is more important. So yeah. if that's true, then then it's okay. Not, 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 so much, not, not so much that. I'm not. I'm not necessarily talking about just playing. Because uh, well, I, I I am gonna say that though. If you're if you're if you're banged up, you're nicked up, you still gotta play. But whatever, whatever. If you don't want to, that's fine. But, but in this I'm era, do you? From, in this era, do you? Yeah, yeah, you you up and bang up. You still got to play. And that, that's and that's what I'm saying. Fluent, that shit is soft. But when but I'm, I'm more so talking about just the mindset now of oh well the narratives aren't going to allow me to win MVP. I don't need to compete against him anyway. Or or the media is unfair to me, so I don't need to do this. Or every time every time somebody makes a kissy face and look look at Don, she's oh I'm getting fat. Like like <laughs> it's just it's just it's ridiculous. Was it even like, MB's not, choice not, though? Was it even his choice I, not to play? No, no, and this this is the thing. If he um, wants to play, if he wants he to play, to play, play, play he if he wanted play. to play, he'd play. If he, wants, if he wants to play, nobody's gonna stand in front of him like no. If he wants to play, he'll play, bro. It's and he can nego- and he can and he can negotiate that at any point too. It ain't just ne- it ain't necessarily y'all playing. He could go, yo, I can go for fifteen. I can go for twenty minutes tonight. I could go for twenty five minutes. It's a, lot, a lot of times like that, right. people people right. want to blame people want to blame people's agents for having this. Well, you sign that contract. People want people want to blame coaches or coach or staff. Oh, well, they made him not play. You can play if you if you want to, but it's a cop out. It's like these 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 guys are habitual plea coppers. And you also got to remember too. You also got to remember too, like you mentioned about these teams buying championships. I mean, Oklahoma City Thunder. I think they had the highest payroll in NBA history in eighteen nineteen with Paul George and and Carmelo Anthony and Russell Westbrook. I mean, that thing was a disaster. Right. That thing was a disaster. And in the NBA, when you're trying to win the NBA championship, especially in the player empowerment movement in the NBA, if you're trying to win an NBA championship, this is not baseball. This is not pro football. You are not winning on the cheap in the NBA. 
That's just the way that that works. There's no way that you're winning an NBA championship with a bunch of B and C guys making a little bit of money. You're going to have to pay guys, especially especially A guys, in order to play, in, in, in order to compete at a championship level. That's why when I hear stuff like, you know, Bradley Beal's taking all the money. When you're on a championship team, most of the most of the best players are taking all the money. That's the way that works. All right, fellas, let's go ahead and keep it pushing in our discussion. I actually got a good one for everybody up here. Kaz with the super chat said, what would MJ's record be in LeBron's finals? T- 10 and 0. I'll move on. Sure. Oh, 10 and 0. Are you adding them to the Cavs? Wait, what team? Not, not, what two, team the 2011 one, the, the 2011 one, he, he would have won that fight if against against Dallas. He would have won that one. Yeah, ten, ten of them is fine. No, no, I'm yeah. saying, but what team is Jordan bringing in? The team that LeBron. What team is Jordan just, coming you with? Just, you, just, you just replaced him for LeBron. You just you just put him on the team LeBron. No, I'm. I mean. Yeah, in 2011. Yeah. I mean, and James is off that team. Jordan is on that team. Yeah. On that team. Like, James I don't is know. I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. I can't know because again, that's why I said zone, 10 and 0. It's, Jordan, it's, they used the zone, and Jordan said he struggled against zones. So I don't know. I'm on, I'm I'm on, on, I'm on, no, no, that is not that, that, true. That, that is not true. true. It was a that is not one. true. That is not true. That is not okay. What true? It, it was what is it, it was zone where there was no first of all rally. first of all they were playing zones the sky zones and there were times when no one, everyone forgets this comment when he was interviewed and he said they went into a zone and he had a great game and then when he sky said zone? they went a disguise zone yes a disguised zone it's not it a zone. The NBA. It's yeah not a real zone. before they changed the rule and then what he said was when he was not a player anymore is i don't think i would have had the same career i would have had if there was a zone that was partially because they didn't want the zone to come in because a bunch of old head players didn't want the game to change. So they said what they needed to say to try and stop it. He also thought because they thought head. the zone. Grand hold Hill on, let me finish. Hold on. He also thought at the time, not knowing that there was going to be a three-second rule that would clog up the lane, it would allow him, allow him to drive. He didn't realize that they'd be putting in a three-second rule, which would open up the lane and actually give him more space to drive the lane. So that's the reality of it. So everyone that's wants to take what he that one little because they want to take that one little sound bite and not do any damn research and know what the hell they're talking about. Jordan didn't say you, none of the th- nothing what it. you just said, Jordan said. You completely made all of that No, up. I did not. Go did look it up. Go do more research. Go do more no, research. No, Where did Jordan post, say, one. I want y'all to go find this. Where did Jordan say, oh, this all this additives about the defensive three seconds and that you just made all that up. You feel, you feel, you use filler for what you think was going through his head, but that's, I'm just going off his words. That's just his words. And, and like I said, I'm not saying a zone would have stopped Jordan. I don't believe a zone would have slowed him up. But again, the zone at the Dallas Maverick team, it worked against the Jordan 2.0. They swept Kobe. They swept the defending champions in Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Not, Kobe, not Jordan. No, it not don't matter. Kobe. What I'm saying is when you talk about guys with killer instinct, they swept Kobe and the defending champion he, Lakers. They held him to 17 points in back-to-back games. When so he actually played the team. Who's to tell me that this zone wouldn't have had any effectiveness on Jordan when we saw it shut down Kobe in two eliminate and and back to back games? Once again, once again, if if that's not he didn't know, he didn't know. He made a comment based on what they thought. And if you go back and look at what all the players were saying and all the GMs were saying, they thought it was going to clog up the lane. What did he say about playing against? Did he play against his own when he played? Let me ask you that. No, not a true zone. No. Okay, can you can you put a me design, in a, a, a sky zone, zone is not a real zone. It's called a, a handicap defense. Run? Because everyone wants to use that one. Works. Hold on. Everyone wants to use that one clip of what Jordan said. So here's something else Jordan said. Can you do that please for me, Ron? So he said they went into a zone on me, and I hit a couple of shots, and I got into a great rhythm. Like so I, said, I thought they didn't play zone again. How, hey, yeah, anybody that's in basketball in the chat, I want y'all want to know a zone is only as effective as the people that you deploy in it. And if I don't so know what team he played, I don't know what team Jordan played, but if they weren't very good defenders, it's not going to be a very good zone. The one thing that was proven with Dallas is that as a defensive unit, when you put them into that zone, they were elite, and they were elite enough to stop LeBron, one of the greatest players of all time, and they definitely stopped Kobe, one of the greatest players of all time. Once and to again, tell me that that same going. zone would not have any effectiveness versus Jordan, 
you got to be out of your mind. So again, FYF, we just you blindly imagine? say Jordan on the same team would have had the same impact. I don't know. Da- Dallas did have a t- Dallas did have a top five defense that year. Yeah, they had, they had, they had, like, just act like this Dallas team was trash. Yeah, we no, can't I'm leave never, that out. I'm never, I'm never, no, 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 it was trash. one of the greatest but, but, defensive but, but, strategies yeah. in a playoff run. It, FYF, like, I, I everybody you, labels everybody. How come nobody said they swept Kobe and they held him to seventeen points in games three and four? How is that not an elite defense? No one said it wasn't an elite. No one said it so wasn't what I'm saying defense. is, why, what, what's there to lead me to? So when, when you guys say that this defense, could it impact Jordan? Yes. If it was able to impact LeBron and Kobe, it could definitely impact Jordan. He's, wow. Not, wow. he's not immune from that. He's better. He, but he's, we talking about Michael Jordan. He's though. better, he's about better about than Kobe. Kobe. Okay. And he's a, much, and he's a significantly Bro. better mid-range shooter. I did not say the zone would stop him. And he's a significantly better mid-range it's shooter than LeBron if it kills the zone. But there's a difference between but it's a difference between shutting a guy down tone and slowing a guy down. Do you right? think he would have so, had the same? Do you think you. he would have had the same season? Nobody's that Brown gonna stop Jordan from getting thirty, but they will make it a difficult. Do you thing. think he would have had the same series that Brown had in 2011? Like I said, no, because he's no, not. The, the answer is yeah. not the and, the but the thing is, you can still have just as much of a detriment. If that zone forces you to force the issue and you're terribly inefficient, that's just as good. Is LeBron passing up a whole bunch of shots, not being aggressive? Taking bad shots is what his own emphasizes. They want you to chuck up bad shots against two and three defenders, or they want good players to go away from what they do best. That's what the zone's designed to do. Take away what you do best. Give the ball up to other guys. And they want you to throw it to that corner over there to that guy that nobody knows, and now make him shoot what we call time bombs at the end of the shot clock. That sounds that's that sounds good, but I think now we got to go into. And then I simulated oh, it on 2K and, and Jordan. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why are you always talking about what you simulated on? He always talking about what he simulated on. You call it, you call it disprove 2K. This man always talking about what he simulated on a video game. Lamont, Lamont, I was with you. This is the closest thing we get. When you brought up 2K, Lamont, I was out. I was with you until you brought up 2K. I'm just joking with the 2K. but but no, you're not. You're not. <laughs> Lamont, Lamont, this the this the thing though. We uh talked about who was it earlier earlier. So we we're talking about the difference between uh, Jalen Brown and uh, Bi, and yeah. it's that killer instinct where Lebron. I mean, Jordan's not gonna be passing the ball because Jason Kidd and uh and and my man JJ Barea are are forcing the one thing. Like, come on, uh, Jason and Jason Terry. Like, all with all due respect, especially to Jason Kidd. You know, I, I love love those guys. I love that team. But can you imagine? Can you really imagine? Michael Jordan passing up shots and you know doing things like that, not not looking at JJ Barea like are you looking at laughing at Rick Carlisle like are you kidding me? Like this is what this is hey, what you're about to do. I never in my life would have imagined that that Dallas team would have been able to hold Kobe to 17 points in back to back games where they looking to get eliminated. I never would have imagined that that team would have been able to like Kobe is a guy with that same killer mentality. So they they uh, they, they beat a guy you, you, with killer, you, you and they beat Lamont. a guy that's passive. You're capping Lamont. Lamont, you're you're capping a little bit because okay. you're not asking that Kobe Bryant. Back Kobe, Bryant Kobe Bryant Kobe Bryant ankle was the size of a grapefruit in that series. So you can't a reason why he wasn't really getting off his buckets like that. His ankle was hurt that series, and you and I both know it. His I'm ankle sorry. was the size of a grapefruit. Am I am I lying, fluent? This is the type I'm of this type of. You know I, I said I said I said ten and zero because I didn't want to have the discussion. I thought they drank. Like, and we have and we had the discussion anyway. So. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Trying to get away from it. I, I just want to. I just I just to say that. with with the payroll thing. I, I did actually look it up. The oh. only teams that have won with the since nineteen ninety, the only teams that have won with the highest payroll in the league, is the ninety seven and ninety eight Bulls, the two thousand and ten Lakers, the twenty sixteen Cavs, and last year's Warriors. That's so, four, so, so in, four, in thirty-two years, in thirty-three years, you got fourteen. Four teams. Teams. But Mars, so you can't buy a chip. That no, proves you wrong. Yeah, the true stat that's, to look up, Mars, would who's, be who's the highest pay, payroll this year? Me, Isn't it the Clippers? It's the Clippers. This I bet no, you they no, don't no, win it. This Mars, year. the, the question hey. would be: Find me a team that won a championship that was uh, actually under the salary cap. See, because remember, a team or a team that's not paying the luxury tax. That's not Find me one championship team. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm be totally honest. I can't be bothered to do that. Don't be tough. That, so that, that, luxury that, one was, that one was much easier. We need Low to look uh, it up. Where's Low? Because it's town thing that you breathe. But um, I was gonna cook your ass because you know it's kind of funny how you you ignore that fact about Kobe Bryant having a messed up ankle, but somehow a guy named Jay Reed from Akron, Ohio, aka LeBron James, tore his tendon 
but he the only person on planet Earth that can heal in one month with a torn tendon because he said his doctor say that he healed faster than any human being known to mankind. <laughs> Talk about that. Have, hey, hey, has, anyone have torn, different, man. has anyone have a torn tendon? Has everyone torn a tendon? Do you ever hear a pop? I've never heard of my knee. What do you call it? Oh, my uh, patella. I've had broken. I've, I've had my patella balls before. Mm, okay. You you definitely hear a pop when you tear your patella. You, you ever heard somebody healing in one month, uh, uh, uh fluent and coming back, dunk, and dunking and acting like he he got damn Wolverine? You you ever seen that before in your life? No comment. What's your point? T what, what's your point? No I'm trying to figure out what the point. Tickets, what's, what's up, point tickets ticket? upset that LeBron. Oh, you know what? Hold on. You know what the point no, is. You know what the point is. The point is. You know what the point is. What's no, I don't. That's why I'm asking you. What's your point, Ticket? Some people faking it and some people ain't, baby. So he's Believe that. <laughs> okay. Did you see the picture of him rolling his ankle? The ankle, nah, the ankle I, no, I, no, 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 no. I believe no. I believe he got hurt. I don't believe he tore his tendon. I believe he's a lion tapping in the blue. I believe ain't no way in the world that you the only person. You the only person. You the only person on earth that, that healed in four weeks and you, and had to been two and a half weeks because he said he was doing three a days for the last what two weeks. So if you're working out for the last two weeks, a torn tendon healed up in two weeks. But see, only, only, the, only the, 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 the followers of this dude will believe foolishness like that. You understand what I'm saying? But then you'll come in here, Lamont, on a different note and try to, you know, slide, criticize Kobe when he really had an injury that he was playing through that we saw his ankle the size of a grapefruit. But the dude that you praise constantly, you and Chilton, dude is the biggest capper in NBA history, but you guys won't keep that same energy. Why is it every time Kobe loses? Every time one of these guys loses, it's had some mysterious injury that prevented them from preventing That wasn't mysterious. That was no ankle injury. I asked for hold on. That's why I asked Fluent. Kobe Bryant's ankle that series was the size of a grapefruit. That's the truth. He didn't complain about it. He played through it. Okay. Every time these guys lose, they excuse is an injury. Who's it? Who's excuse the injury? Every time. I'm just saying, every time. nobody had more. With Kobe. Ain't nobody had more excuses than y'all. No one said Kobe was injured in those six years. He just lost. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the year Lamont said that he he said he was talking about how Dirk he was talking about how Dirk beat Kobe and got him up out of there. He capped. No, it was Jason Terry actually. No, he did beat him, but you didn't tell the whole truth. What's the whole truth, Ticket? The whole yeah, truth. He was, he was, well, was the size of a grapefruit. That's the truth. Okay. So, so, yeah, so, I, I so this year, that. when the if LeBron misses the playoffs or they lose, yeah, it happened, it happened in the end. So the angle, it happened he, in the he, he was hurt. Now, well, guess well, guess what? I, I do think he's hurt. I just don't think that guys like you and guys like ESPN Chill will call out the cap. Well, wait What's a minute, the Ticket. Cap, his, 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 here's a problem. You just said you, you just a twin right. tendon on him. He's right. just I mean, used but, injuries to defend right. Kobe. You just said right. That, that's where I was going. No, I'm talking about real injury. No, I'm talking oh. about real injury. Yeah, because you heard. Hey, hey Chill Town, uh, Fluent, look this up, Fluent. You heard, you heard that the, the NBA analyst said that he thinks LeBron faked the injury to get rest, so he'd be rested up for the playoff. Yeah. Why, 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 would, why would he have to? Why would he have to fake an injury? You know why? Rest? That's ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say. This. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always there. It is. I'm always no, there. look. Is it, is it possible that it, there wasn't a severe injury and he wanted rest? Sure, but that's that's what players do nowadays. So would that surprise me? No, but I don't. I don't know anything to say yes or no. I don't know. Well, well wait a minute though, Tom. Wouldn't he? With the status that he has, couldn't he just say, "Yo, I need some time off"? Couldn't he just do that? He's done it in the past. No, nah, because he'll, he'll, he'll get more. Point. He'll get more criticized if his. No one's more aware of their legacy uh, and the narrative than LeBron. So there's no way. So if he did need a rest, yeah, I could look. Maybe he tweaks his ankle and he says, "Hey, it's something else." I, I and I'm not just putting that on LeBron. Let's be clear. I think 50 percent right. of the players would do the same thing to get a break or a, a, someone that has his status. You know, Kawhi. Kawhi would do that in a heartbeat. Um, you know, Bi, we talked about Bi, a toe contusion, and he's out for two months. That's a bro's too, bro. That's a bruise, <laughs> bro. bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hard, easy for me to say. So, like, I think players do that all the time. So, yeah. I, so, so do I think oh, it's? Do you, uh, Chilltown, do you believe that? Hold on. Do you believe that, Chilltown? Do I believe what? Ticket. Do you, do you believe that LeBron James what's tore his tendon and healed up? What's, what's, more, what's more realistic? What's more realistic? It wasn't as bad as we thought. And he took extra time to rest for the playoffs, or that he really had a whatever that was, and he miraculously healed faster than any other human in the history of the world. What's more realistic? What's more realistic? The the the, the former than the latter. Is, you is think that he, that he healed that he healed faster than yeah, anyone? The first one. The first one. Yeah. 
that's because so even, well, that's, even why, that's why that's why that's why I respect you. You got morals and ethics, so that's why I respect yeah. you, bro. I, I just don't think. It Wait a minute, ticket. Okay, it's just, it's I think the LeBron minute, what, holds, I, I, it's one hating, I got morals and ethics, and then the next minute I'm a lying sob. Which one is it, ticket? You hate me or you love you me? Say. It depends what you say. And then we just. Man, me and Ticket are here today. Me and Ticket are right here. Break with this dude. One minute I'm lying, that's so big. The next minute I got more. I've been listening. I've been listening to you and Fool show for a long time. I know how you cap, though. Ticket, listen. I if one thing I noticed about tickets now. Yeah, you're more. He's more. He's more fluent lately. All right, fellas, let's go ahead and keep it pushing. This Saturday, I think everybody up here is going to be playing one on one against each other, chat. Right? Yeah, for real. For Saturday, is that April Fool's joke? Woo! It, it happens oh, to be April Fool's, but this is not an April Fool's joke. This Saturday, we will be doing our first King of the Court. Now you see everybody up here. I want to know who you guys think got the most game. Who's gonna score the most points? Now, uh, it's gonna be something kind of like a player's court, if you will. Chat, you guys will determine the topics. And let's say FIF starts with the ball and Mars is guarding him. Uh, he has a minute to defend his stance. Mars, you come and you have a minute to defend your stance. FIF, you get 30 seconds. Mars, then you get 30 seconds. And chat, you guys will determine who won that round. Winner gets a point. Loser, you get kicked into the crowd. Next person comes up. <laughs> chill, you come up. Now, let's, let's say FIF won. Mars didn't play no D. Now, chill. It's chill and FIF. FIF wins again. He has two. If Chill wins, he has one. So and so, first person of five wins. Mm -hmm. As you guys can see, that's how these we're going are real basketball. Okay. <laughs> Yo, oh. FYF, are you mad that we left you off of this? No. Nah. Why would we be mad for it? Oh, I'm saying because you can get a late invite if you would like. I mean, that's, that's up to y'all. I mean, look, it, if if y'all want to keep it amateur, that's fine. If you want to <laughs> make it <amateur. laughs> uh, <laughs> For, I just want to say to anyone in the chat who isn't picking me, just remember we've had two of these debate styles, and I am the only, only undefeated in every round. So, I beat the man. You gotta beat the man. <laughs> remember that. Hey, Jay Blay, I, I, I see what you're saying. I'm definitely winning this. What are the topics, though? How you choose the topics? I'm what gonna come with about ten preset topics. Mm. But when the super chats come through, those will be the topics that I'm gonna give to you guys. With that being said, I don't know the topics. You guys want to know the topics. Hey, we, so we, 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 what, we, what if the two people agree? Like, what if one of the topics is like Tim Duncan versus Wilt Chamberlain, and both of the people think Tim Duncan is better? You got to come up with something different because that's not going to work. Come up with a better reason. Then it, exactly. It's whoever articulates their points more. Dang. Mark, you shouldn't have a problem. You're pretty well spoken. Yeah, there's nobody more articulate than me. That's why I never lose. The accent should probably win you over. But, hey, but this, bro, I don't like, I don't like how you be careful. Be careful, Mars. It's at two o'clock. That's tea time. Hold on. What what day? Hold on. What day you say? What day did you say? Uh, uh, uh this Saturday, starting at. I can't make it. You know you can't make it. Yeah, we we we, we gonna be. Uh, we, nah, we got it. We got a game. We got a game. We I'm, nah, I'm gonna be. Not if I have talking and ducking. We got you said. Nah, uh, I'm gonna be. Look, I'm, 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 I'm live streaming the game. It's Somebody game. pulling a Joel Embiid. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Nah, I got a game. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Hey Ron, I don't like how you insinuated that Mars ain't gonna play no defense stuff. Like, I don't like, I don't like that at all. I don't like you insinuating Mars not playing no. He plays. Oh, so you I, know he, I know. Mars, he moves, you, I know he moves his speed on defense. Do you Ooh. defend it all, Mars, or are you a liability? Which one is it? Hundred percent a liability. Hundred percent. Oh my god. So he doesn't oh, play defense. Oh, you know. My bad. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday, April first, two p.m. Eastern time. Be there. Or be square. Uh oh, there's a prize on the line as well. I'll talk about it more when it comes, but uh, uh, it will be financial incentives and, and all of that good stuff. Oh, see, at first I was going to take it easy on y'all, but we're talking about some bread. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Mm. When, when, when the bread come in, it's something different. <laughs> all right, y'all, let's keep it pushing on these super chats, though. Yep. Lonnie Williams said, has a player missed as much time as Wiggins over a family matter? It is a business. It is a business. Also, Dubs AI and Giannis take was wild. If I heard him correctly, I don't know what Dub said about AI and Giannis. Oh, so uh, okay. I don't either. 
Wait, wait, wait. Let's 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 talk about Wiggins and then Mars. You could talk about Dubs, AI, and Giannis. Take. Let's not talk about Wiggins. I don't. I don't I, there's nothing to say about whatever he's going through. I hope all is good. I'm not going to speculate on why he's missing time. I'm sure it's a valid reason. It doesn't. He doesn't need to explain anything to anyone. People just like acting like they deserve to know everything about everyone. He's missing time. Golden State know why he's missing time. Golden State are supporting him while he's missing time. And if the Golden State lose without him, they lose without him. If they win without him, they win without him. It doesn't matter why he's missing time at all to anyone. It's not totally no agree. Business. That's There's the no key right there. Yep. That's the key with Mars said. The team is supporting him. If the team wasn't supporting him, or if they trade him after the season, you know that they wasn't supporting him. So I guess after the season, we'll wait and see what happens if he doesn't play. But I agree with Mars. Like, yo, if, the t- if, you, if you got something personal going on, if Fluence says, hey, man, Ticket, I got something personal going on. Hey, I respect the man. I ain't gonna sit up here and say, "Hey, man, what you doing, man?" He said, "I got something personal. I take him for his word." Unless I catch him in the strip club doing a dougie. <laughs> All right, sometimes, sometimes the strip club doing a dougie is the healing process, brother. No, no, no. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Yo, Mars. So, what is this Giannis and AI take from Dub? Um, Dub said if you take Giannis off the Bucks and replace him with AI, they'd still be a top three seed. That's what he said. <laughs> Boy, need to be slapped. If you take he Giannis, said, he, he said that with a straight face. <laughs> no, he can, no, he's. No, I, look, I'm, I'm not mad at that. I am. Hey, Bob. See, see, Bob. This is what I'm talking about, Bob. Come on, man. We 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 gotta get we gotta get on it. So so a, in in the Eastern Conference, which has gotten tougher than it's than it's ever been. So we got AI, Drew Holiday, Brooke Lopez, right? Bobby Portis, Connaughton, Joe Grayson Ingle. Allen, Joe okay. Ingle, who who and 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 what's his name? Jay Crowder, Allen Iverson as the head of that attack. He's taking that team. They better than Philadelphia, and they better no. than Boston. No, well, let, me, let me say, let me say, not, 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 better, not, not better. I'm sorry, they better than not Cleveland. Better. They, so, they better than Cleveland. They I better think, than I the think, Knicks. I do, I do think. Uh, so it, it it changes it changes the way they play. It changes it changes pr- almost everything. But right. you got shooters. So it, who can what guard? shooters? Okay, I, I, shoot, I, I mean, Chris, keep going, Chris, keep going. I'm Chris, sorry, I'm with Chris, you. Chris Milton is, is, right. a, is a competent shooter. Keep going. Joey was a competent shooter. Uh, yes, even Grayson Allen, who I don't Bro- care about. Bro- Brooke Lopez, Bobby Bro- Bro- yes. Bro- Bro- Right, right. So, keep going. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think that, so that, so that, that, change, that changes the way you play. It changes right. the way you play. But you have you have Biggs, you have Bobby, mm-hmm. you have Brooke. You got you got defenders on that team. You got you got Drew Holiday. Oh, I don't, I don't see. I, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a di- it's a different look. It's a different style of play, but it's still, it's still. Crazy. I, at you first, I, thought, at first I thought it was crazy, Bob. At first I thought it was crazy, Bob. But you know what? When I That's look, when I look, okay, it's really, are they better than, forget Milwaukee and Boston. Are they better than Cleveland, Brooklyn, New York and Cleveland? Well, I think yeah, they're get, than, get, get the Knicks out of here. Get the Knicks out right, I think they're better than Brooklyn and New York. So it's really, are they better than Cleveland? So you put AI on team to Bob's point that has defense and that has bigs, that has shooting. Mm-hmm. I, I think you're having but a conversation. They don't have Giannis. I well, think it's easy. Bob, 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 just showed, Bob just showed why he's going to win the king of the court. Bob just showed why he's going to win the king of the court. Bobby, you talk to them, Bobby. He just showed why he's going to win the king of the court. He just, he just changed everyone's minds. He just changed everyone's mind in a minute. Top three no, I just had to think about it for a second. They're top four, so yeah, you're really just having a debate about Cleveland. You can make that case. You can make that case. Dub, dub, another another big W for Dub. Facts. Mm. Well, we're, we're being nah, but you didn't defend the point as well, Dub. Hey, you no, point. you didn't defend back, the bro. point as well as Big Ox Mob did, man. Oh no, no, Bobby, <laughs> Bobby was wild, and he just he just cooked crazy. This all stemmed from uh, everybody telling me how much better the Bucks have got. Your mic went off. Oh, Dub. Get him back. <laughs> Get him back. Damn, L Dub. Nope, still can't hear you, dog. Still, still can't hear you, dog. No, no one wants to hear the nonsense. I can't get, get the mic back. Uh, <laughs> can't hear you, dog. Get the mic back. Yeah, hear me now, now oh. yeah, a little bit. What is happening? Yeah, hear me now. There good? we go. Now we hot. Now we hot. Okay. Now we hot. Now, okay, yeah. now, we hot. now, now yeah, you're saying, dog, keep going. No, nah, this all stemmed from you know everybody telling me, you know, the Bucks got so much better, bro. They're so much better. They don't have to rely on Giannis. They don't rely on Middleton. This, this, and that. I'm like, okay, cool. If we're going off of that logic. And I guess if AI's there with all that shooting and all that defense, hmm, they'll still be a top three seed, man. Well, I'm asking you the question, dog. Because is and Allen Iverson is he the distributor that Giannis is? Is he the playmaker that Giannis is? He's now they're gonna play not like like Bob said they're gonna play different, right? They're gonna play different. But in terms of his ability to get guys open shots, like is he getting 
Connaughton open shots? Is he getting Grayson Allen open shots? Yes. Right. Well, is he, is he, is, 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 even more yeah. so than that year, they're getting him open shots. As opposed to back in back in the day when he used to have to take on two, three guys. Right. They, they, they can't play him like that no more. So he I'm not saying he's as good as a passer. I'm just saying if, if guys are wide open on a driving kick, it's not too hard to just, you know, boom, fundamentally jump stop and pass out. You know, the little drive dish and deliver drift. That's is that, I don't see how that's going off him. Cause, Cause what it sounds like to me is that Phil is that Milwaukee team take out take Giannis off that crew and put Allen on that crew. Is that team better than the Philadelphia team that went to the finals in 01? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For yeah. sure. Mm. Yeah, and I think Allen Iverson's a better passer than playmaker than Giannis. Ooh. I think it's Drew Drew Holiday more than anybody changes everything. Mm. How do you yeah, replace yeah. Giannis's defense? That counts for a whole like. With the existence, of, with the whole whole existence of Brooke Lopez and Drew Holiday, that's how. Got Drew. No, no, you can't. They no, they got they got defense too. They got defense is only what it is with Giannis in it. It's not the same yeah. defense. If you it's, remove it's, Giannis's defense, yeah. it's not the same. Yeah. It's different. That, that, no, that, 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 that hasn't right. been as true this year. That no, you, you're right. Good, Lamont, you're, you're right. It is different, but it's still, it still it'll still be good. It might not look the same, but just, that's what I'm saying. Giannis and AR are such different players that everything looks different, but it's still competitive. You know what I'm saying? You still you still have to finish. Pat Connaughton plays D. Uh, I mean, we know Brooke, Brooke is in the running for defensive player of the year. I think he's actually going to get it. Drew, we know Drew Holiday's a lockdown defender. Chris Middleton plays. Bro, they got defenders everywhere you look. Yes, they do. That defense is still going to They can only play five still, guys. They're, they're still like a top five defense without Giannis. If four of your five how, how do you how do you are, are how do you figure that the math out? How, how are they a top five defense without Giannis? Like what math or equa- medical equation? Can no, no, you come up with? Are you using basketball? It's a ve- okay. If you want, if you want, if you want to, if you want to know the very simple know mathematical, mathematical or equation, or what algorithm it, you use to come up with? It's, that. it's not really. Yeah, an algorithm. Algorithm. It's not really an algorithm. It's just, it's just it's a very simple concept called defensive rating. And it's okay. how many it's how many points the team allows. Defensive rating is the worst defensive metric ever created. That's literally how everyone measures team defense. That's not how everyone measures it. How do how do they measure yes, it? That's, that's not how everyone measures it. How do they measure, how measure it? How how is the how is defense not, measured? The, I mean, there's a lot of things you can look at if you're looking at the game of basketball. There's a lot of things you can look at because mm-hmm. you run the defensive rating, you can easily get tricked. But mm-hmm. um, first, you have to look at health and teams being healthy. What players are available? What players are not there. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that can change it a lot. But I, there's no way I'm just relying just on that alone in a team setting. And then removing Giannis, the team. Well, you're removing team. Giannis from it. Like I said, in the playoffs, would y'all feel comfortable going into the playoffs? That was but that topic. wasn't the, that, that wasn't the topic. topic. So no, the, the goal, the goal person. Oh, no, what, was, what was the, the goal? What, what, what we said. What you said. said the, you was, said. How do you replace the defense of Giannis? And then I yeah, said. I'm the saying, defense. The defense who, is still pretty. Who takes Giannis' spot on the floor? Allen Iverson. Yeah, Allen Iverson. Huh? Allen Iverson would play instead of Giannis. I'm saying defensively, the the people that Giannis normally guards, because obviously he's a big player. Who guards those guys? You can't put six players on the floor. No, you can't. Drew Holiday, Allen Iverson, Chris Middleton, Bobby Portis, Brooke Lopez. That's not the same. That's oh, not, that really, that really no is one said. No one said it's the same defense. I said that defense is still good without Giannis. I never said it would be the best in the league. To say that defense is still good. I just don't believe it's. I mean, no, it's, argument, it's, still, it's it, I think. Go ahead, Doug, I'm sorry. No, the, the, best, argument, the best point the of attack defense in the, in the NBA and the best drop coverage in the NBA. Argument, How's that the not argument, a great defense? The argument, the argument. The argument isn't the fact that the Bucks are going to be better with Allen Iverson. The argument is the Bucks would be a top three seed. So the Bucks, the Bucks would in the East as constructed right now. A hundred percent. The Bucks with the good defense. The they're, Bucks, they're, they're definitely maybe. top five at least. They're definitely top yeah. five. The I Bucks with the defense that they'll have, because even though, yes, we could agree that Giannis being there affects the defense, but the defense will still be a top 10, yeah. maybe even top five defense with those guys still there. Still and then right. the offense that AI provides with the spacing that he's never had in his whole entire career, man, that team will be going What spacing together. is Ivers going to have when he's hey, a mid-range is- player? He's a mid-range player. Okay. He never had the spacing on the books that he had on 2000. He's not going to get any more spacing. He's going to have to operate from a congested mid. Why is he not going to have any spacing? Everything's going to be contested. That's, that's what. That's what. That's what they did. It's not going to be more space. No. That's what they. That's what. It's they not going to be more space out there than 2001. Hold, 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 hold on. That's, that's why. That's why they constructed the team around Giannis to give him some shooters. So how they all of a sudden Giannis spacing? How is AI not going to have spacing? Yeah, but I don't. Boy, I don't. I don't see it. 
What? I think that team is way, way worse. They got two big. They can be the way team. worse because we think with Giannis, they're a championship team. With AI, they're a top three seed. That means they are worse. Yeah, that's not saying much. Uh, yeah, Lamont, I'm going to tell you okay. something. That's, that's not saying much. saying much. It doesn't need especially, to say much. It needs to say what it's when saying. I just talked to Ivers' teammate, and he said he oh. wasn't even a superstar. Who he was said the man? He said the man faked like, injuries and was trash. Because you, you, you let some bozo that played in the NBA. How's he a bozo now? Hold on. Because he's, 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 he's a bozo. He's a bozo. He's a bozo. He's a bozo. He's a superstar. Yeah, he's a bozo. You're a bozo. You're listening to him. Just because he called your favorite player manipulative, fake injuries. He's not my favorite player. He's kind of messed up. Y'all get mad at me because I saw an instant whole interview, but I did see a clip, and that was the most personal take I've ever heard in my life. Yo, my favorite player is Kevin Garnett. Allen Iverson ain't my favorite player. But if you let somebody tell you that Allen Iverson wasn't a, wasn't was in a, the locker room, a, 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 I don't care. Where, I don't care if he was at his mama so house. Why would, why, 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 so no one, wait, wait, wait. So no, one fears, so no one fears LeBron James. No one's ever feared LeBron James because Mario Chalmers was in his locker room, and no, that's what he said. No, what you know what Mario Chalmers said, and just like most NBA players, like Gilbert Arenas, can sign with. Is that the way LeBron attacks is not fear? But the thing is, Mario Chalmers, in his own statement, made a made a very con conflicting statement because he said, in one sense, before the game started, nobody feared him, but when they lined up, they feared him. That's still fear. So, however Mario Chalmers slices it, he still basically said players fear LeBron because he said it. Oh, well, uh, before the game, they didn't fear him, but then when they lined up, yeah, they were scared. Well, what kind of stupid statement is that, Mario Chalmers? That's, That's still stupid. As Stacey King saying Allen Iverson ain't a star. Oh. That's how stupid it is. And then, no, siding with a guy, siding with a guy saying that Allen Iverson is not a superstar, even though that they played with each other, that doesn't move me. I mean, Chilltown, and I just realized to uh, go check out the interview with Shaq that Chilltown's I think cousin he was talking was about on the level of a champion. No, 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 no. But Chilltown's cousin says himself that Kobe Bryant is a, one of the best players of all time, the closest to perfection. And Chilltown doesn't agree. He doesn't agree with somebody that was playing with Kobe Bryant on the same law, uh, on the same level, and in the locker room. So just because a dude is in the same locker rooms, dude. But he don't. But Shaq don't even have Kobe as the goat if he's perfection. Closest Chilltown has him two. outside two. his top all ten. Closest thing to yes. perfection. Why do you? Why do y'all think the top ten is this like this like um, precious? Holy grail. Like, holy grail. Yeah, I, yeah, like, I, 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 I don't really care. Yeah, like, I don't what's wrong care. with eleven? What's wrong with fifteen? It's the same. Reason, is, it's the same reason why a triple double is so like praised. But if you average nine point five rebounds, that. The like point is, the point is, just because top. just ten, because ten is just a round number. People like round numbers. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The, point well, is, well, the point is, though, the point yeah, is, though, the point is, though, just because somebody's in the locker room doesn't mean we just have to take their exact word for it, as if it's. I, I'm just saying, he said he didn't think Iverson had what it took to be a champion. We've seen, we've seen Giannis do that, and when you put that type of guy on this team. Yeah, I don't know we if it's going to work. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Why, but, but no one's giving him championship champion. expectations. Here's the thing, though, Lamont. We talk, then, I mean, again, you can replace we, anybody we, we, with anybody. We, 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 we got to – but you don't, that doesn't mean that you're going to get the same result when you replace anybody with anybody. That's not true. So back to the point of us being a top three seed and the gravity. So you're basically taking 29, 30, and 12 off the roster and replacing that just with buckets. Yeah. That's what you're replacing it with. You're replacing that with buckets. You're not replacing that with the gravity that he that he carries with him. You're not replacing that with the defense that Giannis carries, right? Not only just the defense that him individually, how he can switch. He can play on the perimeter. He can play on the block. He can play in transition. He can do all of these things in addition to what Milwaukee does. So now if he's off that crew and Allen Iverson is on that crew, are they still a top three seed? Like you said, Moss, all they have to do is be better than Cleveland, right? All they have to do is be better than Cleveland. So if I look at that Cleveland squad, I think the only difference where the separator would be if they were better than Cleveland, it would be because they're young. It wouldn't be it, it wouldn't be solely because Allen Iverson is on that crew because that Cleveland squad is younger than than Milwaukee. And I don't think that they're there yet. It wouldn't just be because if you got Giannis on that Milwaukee team, they're better than Cleveland. And it's not just because they're young. They got a better team, period. Well, let me see. Oh, go, go ahead. Let, me, let, me, let me say this, man. I'm stuck in between because I do think AI with it, with the shooters that they got, yeah. I, I think his playmaking, I do think that they could, he could carry them and get a lot of wins, especially in an area where they don't really play that much defense. I do agree with that. I, I do think, though, also that the effect of Giannis, his size, and the way he puts uh, pressure on the defense, I think that also even more allows – elevation of the talent around him because he AI, yeah, he could get to the cup, but 
AI would also stop mid range pull up, things like that. So and that Giannis is not doing as much of that AI is doing. So um, AI did rely a lot on the jumper too, and he wasn't a great uh, field goal. Uh, he wasn't a great mid range shooter, but he was a he was a great slasher to the basket. But at the end of the day, I I, I, I would say that I would think they would be a a top five team in the East to say top three. Right. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say top three because because I don't really I, I don't think that Cleveland would be better. I don't think I think the AI could lead that team better than what the, the exact team just take off Giannis. I do think they'll be a, a third. I think it'll be them, Boston, and, and Philly in the East. So I, I I do think that. I, I just think that it'll look different. I think that it's, it's one with Giannis, and I think it's three with AI. That, that's how I feel. Yeah, that's I fair. just don't see I don't see how it would work defensively. Like that defense would I would be. I, no, let me ask you. Hold on. As a coach, I would. But Lamont, they got great geez. defenders around Giannis too, though. They got great defenders. I, around I know, but when you're so, talking about replace, look, you to taking away a great defender and you're plugging away the guy that plays essentially no defense and definitely don't have the defensive <laughs> versatility. He don't. Have, he true. can't switch. He, he don't have the defensive versatility. Well, he don't well, have the size. But, but Lamont, there's nobody in the he league. He don't have is really a rebounding. He don't. No, he, Lamont, he hold on, but Lamont, nobody in the league is really playing deep. So when no, you're talking about when you're talking true. about switching, hold on. The, the one thing AI was great at is what playing the passing lanes. So AI led the league in steals multiple occasions. So him leading the league in steals also gets them in a fast break and gets them easy points in transition. So I can see them getting easier points in transition because I think he's better uh, with dumping those lanes and stuff than uh, uh, Giannis is. But I do no. think Giannis is better. To play, but the Bucs have a great defensive team no, without him. What I'm saying is with Giannis, the Bucs defense right. without Giannis oh, is still very good. No, no, I'm not I'll, saying this I'll, defense I'll, is not good. Ticket. Real, real quick, ticket. ticket. Yeah, real, I thought real, you was a coach. I'm Ticket. saying, uh, I'm saying, I'm Damn. saying that Damn, I'm I, all I'm saying is that just Giannis being on the floor is a deterrent to a whole bunch of things that just teams want to try to execute. Right. So going into a game, knowing that Giannis and Lopez are on the floor and Holiday is on the floor, that completely changes how you attack as an offense. You take Giannis off the floor, that opens up a whole new type of playbook of things that I can go explore, especially out of the pick and roll with Iverson that I can now use that I could not use when Giannis was out there. So uh, when you, we, uh, Iverson might give you a few more buckets, but right. he's going to give up a ton more on the other side. That's going to cost them more games to say they would stay at third with Iverson. And you, I, which I was asking tickets. To ticket, me, it just don't make sense. That's the thing. Sense. Ticket, ticket, we're, comparing it, we're comparing it to the, we're comparing the Bucks to the Bucks. They're not going to be as good as the Bucks with Giannis. I think we all agree on that. I, I just can't are envision better, how that team would even better, play. The style of play are they better sense. than the style of play has to completely change? Are they better than the Cavs? And I think the answer is that there, there's a conversation. So I would go, yeah, they're third. I, like I said, I think they're Ooh, still third. Because it, it, sound, it sounds like they, 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 look, they give a Cavs, they, they give they get a Cavs competition without Giannis. Without Giannis right now, that would still be a competitive series. It wouldn't just be a sweet blowout walkout series without Giannis. Without Giannis and the Cavs, that's still a hard six game series that the Cavs will probably win. But it's not a, it's not a, it's not like one of those just breeze through. When you're looking at AI, you're just looking at different styles, man. So if you put AI in there, guess what? He's going to get in the lane a lot more. He's going to jump, shoot the gap and get a lot more steals. And so that's going to open up transition. And they got actually got shooters. So in his era, he led teams to winning based off of just him having to carry the whole offense. Now, with the fact they can't play him like they want to play him because he does have all those shooters around him. And you got guys that are willing to do the dirty work like Bobby Portis. And you got guys that are protect or rim protectors if he gets beat off the dribble like Brook Lopez. So we ain't really talking about that much of a game. We talking about an era where dudes don't really play no deep. So you got true, hold on, true. 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 keep this. Hold on, and keep. He's not. He's also not going to be expected to to d up the best def, the best offensive player from the other team. No, right yeah, today's yeah, NBA, yeah, they, they don't ask you. They don't ask you to stop guys either. on the perimeter. But the question that I was at the question that I was asking, and I want to ask this to ticket specifically when when you look at Allen Iverson on this Milwaukee Bucks team defensively, is he is he the same Allen Iverson? On that 2001 Philadelphia team defensively, if you look at that that team, are they better defensively than this Milwaukee team? Uh, yeah, they, they were more tuned and tuned in. I would say it was on the same level. I think it's on the same level. I think because of different reasons, it's on the same level. But me, me personally, man, I, I I just think that yeah, they'll be top three. I think with Giannis, the number one. I think with AI, they're number three team. But I just think that with AI brought to the game, man, was so was so special the way he could get in the lane and penetrate. And then if you're kicking it out to the shooters, they got. 
And AI can find the shooters. They say AI was a ball hog, but he averaged like six and a half, seven assists. He averaged the same amount of assists as Steph Curry for his career. And they don't call Steph Curry a ball hog. So, and AI wasn't the point guard. Eric Snow was the actual point guard. So, at the end of the day, when you look at that, I think he generates more assists, more opportunities for his teammates. I also think that uh, defensively, he can roam more with that team. He can do more what he likes to do with that team because of the simple fact that you have Brook Lopez at the rim. You understand what I'm saying? Who's who's probably uh, going to be top two, if not one, in defensive player of the year award this year, along with uh, JJJ out there in, in Memphis. Then you then you look at they got Jay Crowder in the trade. So like Fluen said, if you got a problem on the perimeter, we're putting guys like Jay Crowder or Middleton on them at, at worst. Then with AI, like I said, that, that, too. That, they got Pat too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that team allows AI to do what he what he can what he likes to do even more, to be honest with you. Because now he got guys that cover him defensively and then offensively, they can't just all ball down on him. So now his efficiency will go up, his field goal shooting will go up because now he's getting better looks based off the guys he got around him. I agree with Fluent. Yeah, but but what if so like y'all forgetting about so many elements? It's like so many elements of the game we forget. Giannis is giving close to 14 rebounds. You're again. comparing I, Giannis. I, 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 no, no, what I'm saying is no what I'm, because you like have to taking, compare you're taking 30 because, and 13 off the floor. No, That's a no, big I'm deal. not. What I'm saying it's is when you though. like it's like subbing a guy out. Let's let's just say right. let's just say they on the same team. And you right. sub Giannis out and you bring in AI. Let's just say they on the same team. That way we ain't comparing like so if I'm taking Giannis out and I'm putting the guy in, I'm thinking about okay, what am I bringing in? But also what am I losing? And then what do I have to put on the floor? That means what I have left on the bench to choose from. What do I put on the floor to supplement it? If I got AI on the floor, how do I make up now for 14 rebounds? How does how do how does this team still rebound the, the ball? Same way, the same way they do when Giannis not playing. They still out rebound teams. When, when Giannis is not playing, they still out rebound teams. Look at look 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 at look at the numbers. They still out rebound teams and they still beat teams when Giannis is not playing. You're 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 forgetting that they're going to play a tough. different style, and I think this team, this Bucks team, actually would would make AI better because again, he's going to have the defensive help both on the perimeter and if they get beat at the rim, and he's going to have shooters, which will allow more spacing for him to do what he does best. This actually, this team actually accentuates AI's positives, and they have enough defense to cover his negatives. I, that's I'm why I say it. Like going going I don't think that crazy. I mean, I high that. volume, high volume, low efficiency. And you replace with a guy that's high efficiency, and not as much volume. Hold on, Lamont. Lamont, that's cap. No, 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 no so he yeah. didn't have level <laughs> scores <laughs> like that. This team needed him to shoot a lot. This right. team would yeah. not need you're him to do that. About an era. You're, you're talking about an error. You're talking about a getting, he's getting, era in the 2000s where bro, scoring he's getting better was looks more bro. prevalent. Hold on, but his starting lineup, hold on. His starting lineup consisted of like Matumbo or Theo Ratliff, Eric well, Let's Snow, not act like they were just Lynch. pushovers. Like there was no I, scorers. He had okay, to do I, that. I, 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 hold on. They don't, you don't get to the NBA finals without scoring. They were he able scored to all the points. They, he, they he just ran into a juggernaut in the Lakers. No, no, he they scored all the points, though. That's all but they he did. Scored on, but Lamont, he scored all the points. Oh, it was AI care. and the oh. second best person, like the second leading score on the team, average 11 and a half, bro. Like, that like was Matumbo. I think that I was Matumbo. I can put you on the court with four yeah. absolute scrubs. You can score 80 points, and I'm going to bring my guys, and we're going to still beat you by 60 points. You got to have a great team on the floor to get to That's the That's not finals. true, bro. Bro, you that team he had, bro, he had dudes that were career eight point per game scores. Career six point per game score. Getting it done when they needed. And remember, you're talking about a. He's pace talking down about bro. It was him. Hold on. Ten double digit scores in that era. It's a pace down bro, era. Not, no. So what I'm saying. Hold on, Lamar. And that what, 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 what we're talking. The 2001 season. Is that the one we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one he went, went to the final. Early 2000s. Season, you're right. They're Gordon averaging. Cook, Gordon Cook for He was in those playoffs. He was averaging 33, and his next leading scorer was Aaron McKee. And Dikimpe Matumbo, who are averaging like 14 and 13. Well, and then eventually just, just had 9, 8, Aaron 7. Didn't he win 6 man of the year that year? Yeah, just like he did like, last they, had the, they had the he best rebound. Right, right, right. but, but, right. but on this Bucks team, he's going to have a guy, Chris, Chris Middleton, who's going to score over 20. A guy in Drew Holiday's going to get him 15. Chris Middleton only scores. There's enough scoring. you got to get the ball. All right. Go ahead. Sorry, Ron. I know we got to go ahead and move on. What I do need you to do, though, is just simulate it on 2K. Yeah, there you go. That's the answer. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. It'll work out perfect. You can do that? Yeah. Oh, my God. I might you can do, do anything. That. That it doesn't, do that. doesn't mean do that. anything, but you can do it. I might do that one. 
I don't All know right, if it's pans out. Stay, off, stay off of basketball reference, kids. It's bad for you. Next super chat from It's good for you if you go back and watch the game that you're looking at the stats for. Sorry, go around. Do y'all see the Heat beating the 76ers? Oh, they go home. They going home. They play the Heat. They going home in the first round. What I seen from Joel and B last night showed <laughs> the fact that once again, in a, in a big moment, that you you were MIA. You don't show up. It shows me he hadn't changed from the year from the previous seasons. Then James Harden is going through it right now. What the hell is going on with James Harden and his Achilles? He he breaking down. Got injuries that's holding him out of games. I'm telling y'all, bro, this team is destined to flop. I pr- they hit the wrong they because I'm Miami's gonna be a buzzsaw for somebody in the play. They're gonna hit either them or Boston. They're gonna whack them dudes. That's how I feel, bro. Mm. I do think Miami can beat Philly. I want to see that series because I think Eric Spolster is known for A defensive adjustments and B, he just knows how to guard guys like Embiid with Bam Adebayo and sending a lot of help his way. If they can get over that, I'll have more faith in um Philly. But I do think that's a series that could mess them up in the first round. I See, Jimmy Butler elevates his level in the playoffs. Yes, J- playoff Jimmy Butler is a real thing. No question about that. And add that to the fact that Spo is a better coach than Doc Rivers. And I think he could outcoach Doc Rivers in this series. And Alex Pickering. I disagree with that. I disagree with that. He did it last year. No, 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 no. He's not a better coach. And just because he outcoached you because you, you got dudes that are chumps don't mean he a better coach. <laughs> so the man has James Harden, who is known, known for flopping him and MB. So don't say that, bro. Just because of that don't, it, don't make it, you a better coach. Ticket, understand the difference between adjustments and motivating guys. So Eric Spolster, for example, he knows that Duncan Robinson in the meat and potatoes of the game is a liability. So he keeps him off the floor, right, as opposed to Doc Rivers, who knows that Seth Curry is a liability when they're playing against the Atlanta Hawks, and they keep going after him, and he won't take him off the floor. That's bad coaching. Let me, ask you question, right? Let me ask you a question right now. Who's he- and all you guys can answer this. Who's held in higher law in NBA history right now? Doc Rivers or Air Sports? It's coaching. I think it's Spo. You think it's Spo? Who's held in higher regard? They, they were both think, in the top 15, right? I think it's yes, I think it's were. incorrectly Doc Rivers. Thank you. That's not Y'all, y'all just play Doc, man. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. What you what you think? Uh Mars? I think held in high regard by like most people was probably Doc A because he played in the league, so he just has that type of respect from players and people around the NBA. But who's actually a better coach? I think Eric Spoelstra has shown he's a better coach consistently. For a he's he's gonna neck. He's gonna Spo is gonna get knocked because he had Pat Riley above him. And they're gonna say he was pulling the sp- strings, and he had LeBron. And so I, I don't think he's going to get the respect he deserves. Much like Mike Brown wasn't getting any respect for leading teams to 61 and 61 wins as the number one seed in the NBA. They gave all the credit to LeBron. Well, guess what? How's he doing in Sacramento there, Bob? He's going to win the coach of the year. Yes. He right. Is. He's gonna, oh, I guess he's better than we thought. Yeah, he's going to win it's the coach. It's the same thing. His offense changed when he got out with Steve Kerr. We had to say that. His offense was not the same before Steve Kerr. That, that's fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got I got Spo. I got I'm with I'm with with most of you. I got I got Spo over Doc Rivers. Are we judging no, Spo should just off because he has championships, or is he just no, we judging Spo? We, we just judging a really good coach. Right, that's it. What, what are you what are you judging what are you judging Doc Rivers on, Lamont? Because I, I I I've seen him fail with rotations. Now again, I want to make sure that we're clear. There's a difference between motivating guys and making adjustments. And Doc's biggest problem, which costs him games. His inability to adjust in game, as opposed to Eric Spolstra, his his ability to adjust in game rotations, different defensive schemes, which is what he does better. That's why I think that that's the separator between him and Doc Rivers. I mean, I mean, if you give Doc Rivers LeBron a prime LeBron, he might have some championships, here regardless of uh, well, rotations too. I mean, I mean, they gave him a super team in Boston and he won one time. So I mean, I don't know what more you really want from him. I mean, yeah. I mean, when you give when you give a good coach, great players are going to succeed. But I mean, I don't know. I think it's close. I think it's closer than what people don't. You can't go wrong with either. But I oh, think I'm not saying it's a wash, Lamont. I'm not going to say oh, that. I, 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 I am saying. I don't. I don't think it's a wash, but I do think Spolster is a better coach than Doc. Rivers. Okay. I almost think Doc is underappreciated a little bit. I, I think, think he's overrated. Appreciate. All right, y'all. On to the next super chat, Angie Carr. The one and only said Mars was nasty last week. Hey, Angie. He was on a super villain-ish towards Shaq last Thursday. Hashtag free throws. 
Yeah, Shaq knows I'm better than him at free throws. Facts. <laughs> That's heat, Mars. <laughs> I can make he can roll you up in a ball and use you to, to shoot a free throw. You better watch And he'll miss it. And he'll miss the free throws. <laughs> That'll hurt more if he yeah. misses. I can make, hey, I can hey, make six Hey, y'all, I got I to gotta go ahead and dip out of here. I got to hey, hop Lamont, out. Lamont, good to see you, brother. Good to yes, see sir. you, brother. I appreciate y'all, man. You. For having no doubt. Me. I'll definitely right, be Mark. back, man. Appreciate yes, sir. It. All right, FYI, next time. Yes, sir. All right, back to the next super chat. Yeah. Zudo said Bucks might be playoff frauds. I'm a Giannis fan, but if he has nights off or if the bench slash Middleton are inconsistent, the Bucks are out by the Eastern Conference Finals. That's anybody. That that's Look, not just the Bucks. What, what are you the talking Eastern about? Conference man? Final. Yeah. Well, maybe that, that, that's anybody. If any, if any great team, if any great oh, team so is that low down right there? Low down is in the house. Lose one game. One point that I was making. What up, low down? What up, what up? I had, I had to join just real quick because I'm in the middle of doing something. The, right. audac- the audacity of anybody saying that Doc Rivers is in the same stratosphere as Eric Spolstra is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, Doc Rivers. No, don't come here with that cat, bro. Don't Doc, say Doc Rivers, stratosphere. Doc Rivers is not even like remotely <laughs> close to the same caliber coach as Eric Spolstra. It's not even close. They're both in the top 30 of the NBA right now. Hold on. Hey, hey, hey Lowe. What, what, what is, what is Eric Spolstra? I don't, believe Doc, I don't believe Doc Rivers should be in there. What, hold on. What is Eric Spolstra if he never got the big three? Say it again. What is Eric Spolstra if he never got LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh and their prime handed to him? That's what is he? What is, what is no, 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 no. Hold, hold on, Mars. Mars. Hold on before you say that. Because Hold on. Doc, Doc Rivers was a coach. Hold on. Doc Rivers was a coach that had already went to a bad team and, and took them to the playoffs with, with the Orlando Magic. So he was already kind of building his resume before he got the, uh, the, the Celtics. Uh, with, with that trade, okay. He's coach Eric Spoelstra has coached teams that have not been um, that well rounded, especially post on uh, LeBron and when Bosch got hurt, and still been able to coach those teams to playoff seedings as well, have them overachieve, and on top of that, they they made the finals in 2020. But just from a coaching standpoint, the adjustments that he makes, the defensive philosophy that he has, um. And also just being able, like offensively, I think his positioning is way better than Doc Rivers. No, he's a he's a way a, a, a much more soundly better coach. And to I can reverse the question to you: outside of coaching a super team, what has Doc Rivers done? Because if, Co- if, 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 Co- if, we're, if we're well, well if he coach a dude that you guys call the perennial if choker. If we're if we're ta- if we're talking about the talent that someone's been coaching with. Doc Rivers, undeniably, has been coaching with more. That's, hold on, I agree. Tell me, I agree. But you guys call dudes. You guys always have have renownedly called Paul George a playoff toker before Doc Rivers came around. You said he was a playoff toker. These are all facts. So when Doc Rivers comes around and Paul George does exactly what you've known him to do, how you gonna blame Doc? The same thing you guys said. Because that's not the reason why they lost that. that's not the reason why they lost that. So hold on, no, 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 no. That was the reason. Hold on. That was hold on. That was the reason why. Because Paul George was playing like crap in all those games when they were getting walked down. He, he was yeah, out there more worried about his personal it's, it's a part of the reason. It's a part of the reason. Yeah. That's a major reason, bro. bro. Uh, no. how's, then, how's, then, how's, you got, then you got Lou Williams. Then you got Lou Williams who, who got stepped back in the bubble because he wanted to go to the strip shack and get some and get some lemon pepper wings. So you, yeah. you got all and this you, going and on. You, and you, and Mo, was in there with him. And then, and then, then got, hold on, <laughs> hey, hold on, low. I'm not low. I'm not finished barbecuing yet, you yet, because our show is coming. Our new show is coming, and I'm gonna do this on a regular basis on your ass. Then let's put into effect that his six men of the year, Montrez Harrell, his grandmother died, so he had to leave the bubble and then be and couldn't play because he was attending that situation. And then when he came back, he didn't look like the same person. So you got Lou Williams at the strip shack getting lemon lemon pepper wings. You got this dude, grandmother died, so he left the bubble, had to come back, be quarantined, and did, wasn't even in basketball shape no more when he got back to play. Then you got Paul George going through a personal issue where we already know what's going on with that. You understand what I'm saying? So he dealing with, Doc Rivers dealing with all these different things as a head coach, and all the dudes underperform. That's not his fault. That's their fault. Okay, so let me let me respond just quickly because I got, I got Matt the place I'm at. Doc Rivers is also the coach that made little to no adjustments like, all throughout his time in Orlando when they were in more advantageous situations to win and never did it. Doc Rivers is also the one whose entire defensive philosophy and identity out in Boston uh, basically basically was established through Thibodeau. And then once Thibs left, 
defensively, that team never looked exactly the same. You could easily argue part of it had to do with KG falling off because he wasn't the same player either, but he never adapted or changed his defensive philosophy, carried it over to the um, the Los Angeles Clippers, and any time the Clippers faced the Warriors, they struggled to, to, to contain Curry because they would just do the same things over and over and over. All right. I think we lost him. Low, low has to go tee off on the. He's on the twelfth hole, I think. That's what it looked like. He might be on the sixteen. You on the back? He on the back nine? Yeah, you on the back nine? Uh, you on the back, you on the back nine, low? Yeah, and then, and then just this last point. <laughs> he can't and also, you had, and then you also have Doc Rivers, who when he went to when he went to Philly, um, is another coach who for whatever reason decided not to sit this man, um, Ben Simmons down, even though he had more than enough competent pieces around him, and even this year. But there's several times where Doc Rivers just isn't playing personnel that he has on his team. The floor spacing on that team and positioning is still egregiously bad. Instead of actually positioning their players in, in pr- appropriate situations where Embiid can make the proper reads, he just puts Embiid that he flashes Embiid at the free throw line instead of actually developing players. And then, and then finally, defensively, I still think that that team is not sound enough. And I don't really think that Doc has really ever coached a sound defensive team outside of his time in um in what you call it. Doc is not That's that a lot. coach. He didn't he didn't develop he didn't develop Maxi. He didn't develop oh. Reed. He didn't develop Maxi. Tyrese Maxi. Uh I don't think I don't think there's much that Doc Rivers has done to Free. develop Maxi outside of Maxi just becoming a better player. No, no, no. See, that's cap. You can't do that. No, that's not you true. Take- no, that's not true. Get away from no. it, bro. No, he literally developed Maxi in front of our own eyes. And, yeah, and Maxi no. is, is damn near a verge. He's verge being a star player if he gets on his own team. He's he's one of them guys that they can be on his own team and average around twenty to twenty two a game. Well, he's, he's doing, doing that right now. What about what about what about Tobias though? Take it. What about Tobias? How how, how is he gonna? No, no. Go ahead, but he, go ahead, go ahead. Hold on. He coached Tobias great when he was with the Clippers. When Tobias was the number one option, no, he let they about... overachieve with that team. In fact, they took the Golden State Warriors with KD and them six games with uh, Lemon Pepper Lou, Tobias Harris. And, and God dang on uh, uh, Pat Beverly. So what are you saying? We don't applaud losing. I think that's the only time he's ever overachieved. What I, was trying, what I was trying to ask you, though, Ticket, is why why can't he put – why can't he get the best out of Tobias with Philly, though? Like, what's what's going oh, on? Oh, he is. Really Hold on. Bro, when James Harden – excuse me, when Joel Embiid, Maxi, and Harden are getting the main shots, bro, the fact that he's still averaging 16 is amazing as a fourth option, bro. That's fine. I, I can dig that. I can dig hold that. on, hold on. As a fourth option, where you don't even know how many shots you get on a night to night basis, the fact, and we all, everybody bang all over Tobias Harris. But when Tobias Harris was the guy, he, he showed that he could carry a team to a winning record in the West. And he was averaging a dub when he played with the Clippers as the main guy. These are facts. So he took That's a right. back seat. He took a back seat and went to the fourth guy because he's behind Embiid and behind Harden and behind Maxi on that team. And he's I still like giving you 15 a game. No, I'm saying, but you don't hold on. Y'all acting like you know what I'm saying. Y'all acting like he underachieving. He's still giving you 16 a game as a four. You tell me, uh, fluent or or chill or Mars. Any team in the league that's giving you 16, any player that's giving you 16 a game as a fourth option, that's damn good to me. And what what is he shooting for fluent? What is he shooting from the field fluent from the three? Uh, Tobias sorry. Harris. The stock guy's coming. Don't worry, I'm on my way. He, 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 as a fourth <laughs> option, no, because he, he asked me why isn't Doc Rivers doing better with Tobias? He is doing. He's doing everything he's supposed to do with him. The man giving you sixteen, like what, four and a half, five rebounds, and, and what? He's well, fifth, he's basically fifty four, e eighty seven, basically. So that's that's great 90. as a fourth option. Yeah, that's, no, that's fire. That's fire. I, I was I was asking questions. I ain't, I ain't know the stats, but you know. Yeah, so no, I, no, that's, no, what that's, what that's what the stock guys for. That's what the stock guys for. So we underrate him when Lowe says he ain't developed nobody. He helped develop Tobias Harris into the player Tobias Harris was because he wasn't that before he went over there to, to the Clippers. He was a dude who just put up numbers in Detroit. He developed uh, Tyrese Maxey into the player he was today. Fieldtown gave him credit to that. He helped develop, um, to me, he helped develop uh, Rajon Rondo in, in Boston into who Rondo was. He got Rondo when he was a baby in the league. Rondo to one of the best point guards in the NBA at that time. These are all facts. So we're not going to say he he isn't. He man- He knew how to manage roles then. When he had all those guys on that team, when he had uh, 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 Leon Poe and all those guys come off the bench, he had great rotations. I'm just telling y'all, in the situation where Doc failed, he, de- he dealt with perennial flunkies. He dealt don't, with dudes don't, that don't, not only with Doc failed in many situations. These are facts. But, but Ticket, don't you think that Doc, uh, especially those last couple of years at the Clippers, 
Don't you think he could have done better making in oh, Okay, let me ask you a question. Wait, wait, let me ask you wait, a question. Wait, 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 wait. I'll answer your question, but just you know what I'm saying? Wait, like, wait. Don't, don't you think he could have uh, he could have done better by no. making in-game adjustments stuff? No, because listen, who you gonna listen? You, the guys you had, you had to play those guys. It ain't his fault. Lou Le Williams went to the strip club and got lemon pepper wings and was never the same after that. Lou Williams literally shot 16% for the three in the bubble after balling the whole season. Him and Montrez was both battling for six men of the year on the same team. Yeah. Montrez Harrell left out because his grandmother died, came back, it wasn't the same, was a shell of himself. And hasn't I been the same Doc, since. I think Doc, I think Doc <laughs> catches a lot of a lot of the weight for, for uh Paul George falling in the playoffs the way he did. That's another thing. Hold on. That's another that's hold on. That's another thing. That's another thing. They always they call Paul George a choker. Since he's been in Indiana, they called him a choker. So, but now all of a sudden, when he gets with Doc, we're gonna put it all on Doc. The same thing with Chris Paul, the same thing with James Harden, the same thing with Joel and B. We, they all who do they blame before then? Uh Fluent. They blame uh Brett Brown, the former coach of the Sixers, right or wrong? Correct. Brett Brown was a terrible coach. Not not right. So they y'all say he's terrible. Then they get Doc, and, and the star guys are doing the same foolishness, but we're gonna blame Doc. Well, wouldn't that wouldn't that be the coach? That's why we brought the coach. You know, you're bringing, if you're bringing up spe very specific examples, which I get. The fact of the matter is, we've seen Doc as a head coach blow three one leads. We've seen him get out coached. We've seen other coaches make adjustments and him not being able to counter. We've seen that. So to say that he's not as great as we think he is, uh, it's a fair but statement. Hold on, So as a statement. coach, because you coach basketball, Florian, as a coach, you're benching. Your guys is making a hundred or fifty million dollars, sixty million dollars. You're benching these guys for dudes that are unproven dudes that ain't showed you none on the end of your bench. You're doing what oh, you, you need to do. You got to try something. You're doing what you need to do. You're what you, you, you about, I'm, I'm, I'm saying you, you got to do something. If, if look, if, if you out here making hundred fifty million dollars, but you playing like you're making hundred fifty dollars. I'll tell you this: it's game so, seven with a couple seconds left. I'm double teaming Kawhi. I'll tell right. you that. If you, if you, if 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 I don't, it don't matter how much, I, and I, I don't like, I don't like that argument. Somebody else got to do it, not him, y'all. Somebody else got to do it. I don't care I'm, that I'm, it's I don't people act like you can't sit somebody down just because they make the most money. Like if you're not so, playing like you make the most money, then you got to sit down. Is hold on, is is is, 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 there, is, there to, is there a supposed to bench Jimmy Butler if he's not playing well? Well, we haven't seen that. But, no, but, but the, the, the thing about the ticket is you don't. It, it, benching isn't the only option. You, there's more than one form of adjustments. You know what I'm saying? You you could get him off the ball for a couple of plays, run run it, run something. Who did, hold on, but who didn't say he didn't do that? We're not saying he didn't do that. I, it, it didn't look like he was doing it to me. That's all I'm saying. It just just for me. And once again, I I don't coach an NBA. I'm sure Doc Rivers knows more. Uh, he he knows way more than I ever dreamed to know about basketball. But from my uh, eyes, I just, I just don't it's, see. We're never gonna get anything done in an hour, bro. Fluent, fluent, fluent knows that. And this is my last thing. Fluent knows this as a coach. It's easy to blame the coach when the coach draws something up and the players don't execute it. You that's, can draw some up every single damn practice. Floyd can draw some up. Floyd can draw some up every single damn practice, and then as soon as Floyd gets to the game, is one kid that forgot where he's supposed to be and messes up but the whole fluent, play. But Floyd, uh, but Floyd, during practice, are you putting these kids in situational uh, settings? You, are you run, are you running the, the two minute drills? Like, are, are you are you running these with these kids? Or are you just drawing up the play and expect them just to understand why they're doing it and what they're doing? So that's if you, what if you is for. Yeah, you can't, you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't just be a coach and, and, and say, okay, let's do this. And if they don't run it correctly, that's your job as a coach. So, yeah, maybe if your team doesn't run it correctly, that could be your fault as well. No, but I, I get I get what he's saying because, like, I run this similar plays for the U10, U12, U14s, <laughs> and U16s, and sometimes the U 10s get it get it better than the U14s. Right. So I get what he's saying. The players still have to make the play. Like, that part is factual. So, okay. Okay, let's let's concede and move on. Jalen Lindsay said he would he would pay to see Phil, <laughs> Fluent versus Bill Simmons. Oh, I'd smoke that dude. <laughs> <laughs> Need to uh, get him on the event. This Saturday. Set that up. I'll smoke that dude. Yeah. All right, y'all. On to the next super chat. I read this one already, but we didn't quite comment on it. Zudo said Bucks might be playoff frauds. I'm a Giannis fan, but if he has off nights or if the bench slash Middleton are inconsistent, the Bucks are out. By the Eastern Conference Finals, do we I'm send a thousand right now? Tell him send a thousand right now if he think they froze. Really? I bet him a thousand right now. For real, I put that money up right now. You put hold a on, on that right now. Whoever your name is, Ron, put his name up on the screen. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, 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 y
Yeah. 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 I see your thousand and I'll raise another thousand. I got two. That's right. If you, if you think they play off for us, put your money where your mouth is. Right in the Eastern Conference Finals. Frauds would be frauds would be first round for them to make it to the Eastern Conference Final and play a Boston or a Philly and lose probably in a seven game series. That's not a fraud. Like that happens when you're playing the one, two, three seed. So that's not a playoff fraud if they lose in the Eastern Conference final. He the, the contradiction in that super chat is 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 makes it well, invalid. I just don't it doesn't mean if it's it is it's like that applies to any team. It's common sense. If it, if that's the best players don't play to their level, the team is yeah. going to lose. Yeah. yeah. If, if, true, if, if Steph if Curry true, doesn't if, play well, guess what? The Warriors don't win a championship. We can apply that logic just, to anybody. If Philadelphia, if, if Joel and B sucks, if James Harden is garbage, and then that bench is inconsistent, we're probably going to be out. Yeah, exactly. With that being said, Bucks and six. Uh, Q Spade said, "Props to Chill for standing his ground about Kobe." One hundred. No, I mean nothing. You still got cooked. <laughs> Hey, ticket, let me hey, real, real quick, and we ain't, we ain't gonna go into this ticket. I'm gonna be honest with you, my man. When he beat me that second time, I was thinking to myself, if this is what the NBA looked like, I don't have a chance. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was like, if this is what the NBA looks like, I don't have a chance. Man, at, least you, at, least, at least you got to play him to come to that conclusion. I told not, you, I just met I just met your cousin, and I was like, I can't play with a dude like that. Not realize, not realizing that, yo. I was I was dealing with something different because not everybody in the NBA. But I'm thinking to myself, if that's what the NBA looked like, I don't have a chance because I'm not that good. No. You should have played JJ Redick. You would have beat him and felt better. <laughs> All right. I am yeah. more fluent. MV with the super chat said, "Nah, the way Chill was smiling when that one dude came on and started listing the negatives about Kobe's career." Says otherwise. Uh, dude, 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 happy. Well, yeah, that's facts. That that dude, that dude, that dude did research for three months. Didn't tell us what he was going to talk about, and just blah, <laughs> splurted it all out. He was ready to go. <laughs> Chill up there, smiling the whole cheese and the whole time. You, were smiling. you were smiling. Yeah. <laughs> because were, I'm so. The reason why smiling. I'm smiling is because I'm so used to doing this, but now I got somebody <laughs> that's making a point. I'm like, <laughs> you were damn like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the next super chat from I am Stephen Allen said, "Y'all be jumping ticket. I got your back, big fella." The fact, man. Ooh, ticket. You, you can't. You can't. You can't walk in that. You can't walk into the party and, 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 and punch, and punch on punch on ten people and say, "Why y'all jumping me?" Nah, that's I ain't punch on ten people. I ain't punch on ten people. I didn't punch on ten people. You ticket walk in the party. Ticket walk in the party and punch somebody in the face. That's with eight dudes and be like, "Oh, they jumped me." Well, <laughs> hey, look, that's a that's a lie. When I came over here, go back and look at the first video. I came in peace. The only time I turned up is when they start all trying to jump me because I I said something amazing. Ron was there. One that's of them it. came. I mean, I was, me and Jay Will got that yesterday. I, I literally watched that video yesterday. Yeah, when well, me and Jay Will got into it. Yeah, everybody jumped me from then on. It was a ticket against the whole world every single uh, week. Hey, that's a fact. That's a fact. I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I'll never forget the infamous moment where Ticket directed <laughs> his comment towards Jay Will and said, fuck you, you hoe ass. <laughs> so I just <laughs> that right there. When I stood there, it was me and Bob had beef for about a month. Me and everybody was going there. Me and Chill Town was going there. All right, hold on. Wait right there. There we go. There we go. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't get over that Scotty Pippen stuff. He made. He he made. He made Jason Williams quit, and we had to change the name of the show. Uh, <laughs> how you run? How you run off white chocolate? That's crazy. The numbers is up, baby. The numbers looking great. Yeah, they are, they are. We, can't, we can't fight that. We cannot fight that. Can't argue that, is not, that. that is not cap a lot record. You think right he's there. coming back now, though? Go ahead, boy. <laughs> he'll he'll come he'll come back when he see what it is. Shout out to Jay Will, man. Man, the price ain't the same today as it was yesterday. It is not. Hey, no. and tomorrow is no. damn near gonna triple. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not the no. same. Can all, can all producers the, the, please get paid? The, 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 the number, <laughs> the number different today than what it was yesterday. It's way different. All right, y'all. Lego Rover said, "Chill. What's your opinion on how Shaq talks about Dwight? If my question's inappropriate, you don't have to answer, but we love not. to hear it. It's, it, it's not. Um, I was a big Dwight Howard fan when when he was coming up and. He was the competition. That's all it was. Now, I don't know what it is now. I, to be honest with you, I can't speak on what it is now. But back then, it was about competition. That's all it was about. Dwight was becoming that guy, and Shaq was 
that guy, but on the way out. And that's why that conversation was constantly going on because it was about competition more than anything. So I don't know what yeah, it is now. I can't, I, 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 I can't, I can't talk about what, what it is now. I think he, I, steal the man. I think he tried to steal his swag and didn't do it to the fullest. He tried to take the Superman stuff that Shaq had bought in and then he didn't fully like fulfill that. Like yeah. when you walk, when you put like Jordan told Kobe, you can put on the shoes. <laughs> it's something different to put them on, but you can't wear them. You know what I'm saying? You can't fill them. You can't fill them. And it's yeah. listen. You're trying to compare American made Superman to Taiwanese made Superman. It's just not gonna work. It's different. It's different. Next super chat is from Brian Laguerre. He said, "Fluent. You could say that's why LeBron left the Cavs the first time. Keep the same energy." I think that's the conversation we were having earlier. Uh, I don't remember yeah, exactly but, what it was. Referencing. Uh, he said, "Yo, he said that the fluent, and this is quick. He said that the fluent because I told fluent that." Remember, I said that Kobe, if he had the team Kobe had, that, that uh, Chill would be saying that, that his team was flagrant. But the truth oh, is, wait, wait. Oh, LeBron, I, LeBron, I, LeBron, 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 I read off, hold on, I read off who was on Kobe's team and I said I would ask for a trade too. What did I say five seconds after that? That's why I don't blame LeBron for leaving Cleveland. I said, I say that all the time. You guys don't listen. I do. And, and you're wrong for that, uh, Fluent. But <laughs> no, that's okay. No. Yes, you are. He's a free agent. Free to go wherever he wants. Man got, free man, to go got to the, wherever he wants. man got to the NBA Finals and lost three games by three points, Chill Town. I mean, Fluent. That's all you need to know. He's that's free to go wherever he wants as a free agent. That's it. Okay. Brian Laguerre with back to back super chat said, Ticket the opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. You in love with Braun. No, I, actually, I, 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 I love my girl. I don't, I don't love Braun. You guys love Braun because y'all say I hate Braun, but y'all still come listen to me, which shows you how much you actually love LeBron James. I don't think they love you, Ticket, more than you. You're a necessary evil. No, I don't say they love me. I say they, they love LeBron James. They, 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 they love LeBron James. Yep. So the same reason they, they listen to anybody who says something negative about LeBron, they'll come listen to me. They'll listen, listen to me before they listen. They'll listen. They'll listen to me before they listen to somebody who says something positive about LeBron. Ticket, ticket. Do you I think? think there's a there's a thin line between love and hate ticket. Do you think that LeBron could do something to make you flip over to the love side? Were you seeing Just be real, man. Just be real, man. Just be real. Stop all that capping. I'm asking you a question. Did you ever sing his praise? Just be no. Just be real. Stop it. Oh, Didn't know nothing about it. Mm. Don't fly on the plane back with him and don't tell him that you're going back to Cleveland. When it, when he rolled with you that whole time, did every interview with you. Just be a hundred. That's all. Don't come, on a, don't come on an interview. Don't come on an interview and say you tore your tendon. Before they come out with anything? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, don't come on an interview and say you tore your tendon and the doctor said you healed faster than anybody known to mankind. Cut the cap. So. Mm. All right, fellas. Uh, it's been a while, but Aramis Jones coming through. Hey. With chat, old friend of ours. He said, my Pelicans are a dark horse. April 5th, Zion's potential return date. That would be that would be huge, Aramis. I heard you're looking for a new car. Uh, if you don't know, that's my industry. So if you need some help, reach out. Let me know. I'll get you a good deal. Man, uh, but yeah, no, he's, he's right, man. They have if if Zion comes back, things are looking up for them. If he can stay healthy, you trade him this summer, though, right, Fluent? Oh hell yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I I show them how good he is, and I and I get as much as I can for him. Absolutely. Mars are the Pelicans a dark horse? Um. With Zion healthy. Yeah. Um, Dark Horse to go to the finals? No, because I still don't like the fact that they lack, they lack a facilitator on that team. And that's the issue I've had with them for a while. But in, to like, I think they could be a tough beat in the first round. Like, if they went up against Memphis in round one, or like they went up against the Kings in round one, I don't think they'd win, but I think they'd be a tough out. No doubt, no doubt. Well, with that being said, oh, Bob, nice of you to rejoin us. Now is the time where we might as well go ahead and get into our playing predictions. Speaking of the Pelicans, they happen to be right outside of the play. I'll give you guys the current standings as is, and then I need to hear from everybody what they think it's going to be. In the West, we got the Golden State Warriors at 39 and 37 at 7. The New Orleans Pelicans at 38 and 37 at 8. The Los Angeles Lakers at 37 and 38 at 9. OKC Thunder at 37 and 38 at 10. How do we feel the West will end? Chill, I'm going to start with you. I think that the Western Conference is a, is a lot more competitive from 4 to 13 in terms of records. So I think from 4 to 11, I'm sorry, in terms of records. So when I look at the Western Conference and how it's situated, I think that the way Oklahoma City and 
Golden State are fit are, are configured where they you, I think they only got one game separating them. So the way the play in tournament is, I think you could be the Lakers, the clip the, not the Lakers, I'm sorry, the Lakers. Um I had Dallas and, and New Orleans as playing teams before the season started, and I'm still sticking with that logic. I think they're both playing teams. I think Dallas is they could very well be on the on the outside looking in, but I think that they still could be a playing team. So I think Dallas, I think New Orleans, I think um, the Lakers. I had Minnesota as a top five seed. They're a game out the sixth spot. So I mean, they're a game out the fifth spot. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Minnesota still being close to a top five seed. But that third that fourth spot could be anywhere between the Clippers, not the Clippers. I'm sorry. It could be any. It could be any one of those other four teams. That that's a tough one. The the thing is with with those seven teams though is the Pelicans have a, um, a rough how many games they got seven they got a rough seven games right the schedule so I could see I could see them falling out of the AC and yeah. the Jazz or the Mavericks taking you know taking that taking that spot the Lakers don't necessarily have an easy seven games either though so I think that this 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 next five this next this five game road trip is going to determine whether or not the Lakers win, the Lakers make the playoffs. Yeah. Well, they this got five I mean, they beat the playoffs. Yes, this five game road playoffs. Trip, yes, this five game road trip is going to determine whether or not they make the playoffs. They got Chicago tonight. Um, I'm sorry, not tonight. They got they got Chicago tomorrow night. Then they got uh, Minnesota. They got Utah. Um, Houston, 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 Houston. There we go. Utah. Yeah, that's and then, and, and, and then and then they got the Clippers at home. Which, by the way, they haven't beat. They, they the last time they beat the Clippers was the year they won the NBA championship in, 20, yeah. in the 1920 season. So. I think this five game road trip for the for the Lakers is gonna determine whether or not they make the playoffs. Well, but even that I I'll feel you with that the next five games, but the after that they got the Suns. Yeah. Right. And then they got the Jazz again. I so, but here's the thing, here's the thing though. I don't think it's gonna come down to the last game of the season. I think that this five right. games they can make they can separate themselves whether or not that they're gonna be in the playoffs. And again, I, I still mean, think Dallas you don't think you don't, think, Orleans, think, you don't think it comes down to the last two games when the fourth seed to the the eleventh seed are separated by three and a half games? No, not well, not not with this particular team. Because again, we're talking about a team that could go like what happened with Dallas. I think the if, if I'm not mistaken, with Kyrie Irving when they got Kyrie Irving on the roster, this crew was before they got Kyrie Irving on the roster, they were giving up 100 and 111, yeah, 111 a game. Since they got Kyrie Irving on the roster, they four games under 500, and they given up 117 a game, and they've dropped. They were at the they, I believe they were at the five spot. They're now in the 11 spot, and that's happened within a month. So you can go with you could you could have a four five six game stretch where you could go from being in the fifth spot to being out the playoffs. And I think that this Los Angeles Lakers team with the the five this five game road trip, this is going to determine whether they're in the sixth spot or they're completely out the playoffs. Hmm. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, Ox, you want to go ahead and give your your Western Conference playing predictions? Oh man. It's kind of rough. I, I don't think the Pels are going to make it. Mm. I would I would say I would say that it's probably going to be Warriors, Lakers, OKC, and I guess it's I guess Dallas is probably safer than than Utah. Probably Dallas in the team. Probably Dallas. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Mars. What you looking like? What's your, um, what's your list? Like Chill, I also had Dallas in the play-in before the season. So um, I think Dallas will be in – I think they'll be in the 8-9 spot, one of them. But I think Golden State will get back up to six. So I think it will be Minnesota, um, Dallas, OKC, and the Lakers is the four play-in teams. In that order? Um, I think the seven and – oh, I forgot New Orleans. Um, okay. I think Minnesota, New Orleans – Dallas and the Lakers, and I think that's the order. I think the Lakers will be the ten seed. Okay. So, Mar so Mars, you got you got the Warriors getting into the six. Yeah, I got the Warriors getting the six yeah. seed and Minnesota dropping down. Yeah, I could, I could see that too. I didn't, you know, I forgot about. Minnesota. I think they only have. I think they only have one road game the rest rest of the way. It's against. I think it's against Denver, so they're gonna lose. But I think they only have one road game the rest of the way. So um, no, no, they they got to go to Sac and Portland. I'm pretty Damn sure they still. I'm pretty sure they still be Portland. Oh yeah, Portland to shut down Dame, so they're they're, yeah. they're just coming into the tank. But, but they're, lo they're losing that to go to one center. You guys should have gone into the playoffs yesterday, man. 
I don't know how you guys lost to Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota, Minnesota's a bad match. Gotta, for us. We, yeah, we, 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 have, we have real tough games against Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. The only time, the only time we actually looked good against Minnesota was when Sabonis fouled out like midway through the fourth, and we brought Trey Lyles in, went small, and we got we got him that way. But. Mm. Oh, yeah, their last two games are on the road. But I, I think them against New Orleans, San Antonio should be a free win. And then I think they can beat OKC at home. I think they'll probably be in the sixth spot by then. And then Portland's last game of the season will probably just secure that, in my opinion. Fluent. What's your list looking like? The play-in, Golden State, mm-hmm. Minnesota, New Orleans, OKC. Are you doing that? Are you doing that fan of the team thing where you lower the expectations so that if you make the play and you're more excited? Is that what that's what he's doing? That's what he's doing, Moss. That's exactly what he's doing. If you notice that the Lakers are out, you yeah, notice that, right? Okay. Oh, I didn't say they were out. They're not you getting have six, the Lakers bro. being a six, six seed, baby. We're going on a <laughs> run. We're going. If he's really the king, if he's oh, really the, king, the Lakers are going to go on a run. Here they will go. be in the six seed. Knocking down Minnesota. Actually, Minnesota drops below Golden State. So Golden State, Minnesota, New Orleans, OKC, Lakers six seed, no playing. Um, or he's not the king. Or he's not the king. <laughs> Take him out the goal conversation. Just toss him out the goal conversation if he can't do it. Mm. All right. Hey, you heard it first here. Bulls. Six seed they Lakers. The, fluent. They got the Bulls, Wolves, Houston Jazz. Bulls, I don't Bulls, care Jazz. if they have the 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 72 and 10 Bulls. <laughs> they need to go on this run. You ain't being Houston. That's already a loss. Just... Hold on, fool. If they need to go on this run, or they will go on this run. I'm Both. getting, I'm getting mixed signals. You're, you're talking as a fan, but we don't need you as a fan up here. We need some objective. No, they're gonna, they're gonna go on a run. I think, I think the, I think they understand what it takes now to win. They, they needed to have that one game where they brought in, you know, LeBron and and sit, figured out what his role is going to be in this offense. They realized, hey, this needs to run through AD, AD if we're going to be successful. And um, yeah, I, th- I think I think they go on a run. I think they surprise a lot of people here, and they, they they finish the season off strong, heading into the playoffs. They don't want to be in the plan. Trust me, they they are gonna they do not want to be in the plan. Okay, okay. Ticket TV predictions, thoughts, and predictions. How you feeling? Ticket think TV. Ticket. We lost ticket. Words, words, words. We could get ticket back. Yeah, All right. Well, that. when he comes back, he'll yeah. give us his Western Conference predictions. Now we're just going to jump over to the East mm-hmm. and talk about what's going on over there. As the seventh seed, we have Miami at 40 and 35. Eighth seed, we got the Atlanta Hawks at 37 and 38. Ninth seed, actually tied. The Toronto Raptors at 37 and 38 as well. <laughs> and then at 10, we have the Chicago Bulls at 36 and 39. We're going to go in the same order. Chill Town, I want to hear what you think is going to happen with the East and how it's going to pan out. I thought that Brooklyn was in the – I thought Miami had jumped Brooklyn because they were both tied. I, I, and I thought that, that, that Brooklyn – I mean, I, I thought Miami – Miami won. has a tiebreaker. I, 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 yeah, Miami has the tiebreaker. So they're in the sixth spot and Brooklyn is in the seventh spot. So if it ended today, I think that they – I think Miami – Brooklyn is in the seventh spot. And I don't like where Brooklyn is right now. I mean, they, they're, they're going into – they're going into the rest of this season. I mean, they, three of their last seven games, they playing against playoff teams. They lost six of their last seven games go, coming into this, right? And Brooklyn is a team that I've always stood on this logic. That's why the Lakers were as good as they were. That's why Golden State was good as they were. Because you got a guy who – you got a bunch of guys who can keep it close. And as long as you can keep it close, you got a chance because you got that one guy who can push it over the top. Brooklyn, they got a bunch of guys who can keep it close. They don't have that one guy who can get them over the hump. And I think that that's going to be difficult for them. I see them in the play-in tournament, but it's going to be it, it, it's going to be a haul for them. No question about that. Atlanta is also another team. Even though Atlanta got six of their next seven games, I think they're on the road. But with, with having Quinn Snyder there, I think he switched up some things. I think that they're a play-in team also. Toronto, I don't know what to do with Toronto, Tone. One minute I'm looking at Toronto, and they look like a top-five team, and then the next minute I'm looking at Toronto, they look like a lottery team. I don't know what to do with them. Fred Van Fleet, he gives me he gives me definite indigestion. I don't know what to do with that dude. <laughs> and I don't know what to I, – I, I really I don't know what to do with him, Tone. And Chicago is probably playing the best out of all four of these teams. I mean, I think they've won uh, – I think they won five of their last seven games or something like that, and um, they got a pretty good schedule coming up. So – 
I, I, I can see that being the play in, but I think that it gets bunched up. I think Brooklyn may drop to like eight or nine. Got you. Okay. Okay. Big odds, Bob. Thoughts on the East? Can't hear you, Ox. Um, I, I definitely got definitely got Miami catching Brooklyn. I don't know about the Hawks or anybody or the Raptors or anybody else catching Brooklyn, but that's that's pretty much the only thing I see changing up from what it is right now. Uh, so that would make make it Miami six, uh, Brooklyn seven, Hawks eight, Raptors nine, and uh, saw so the Bulls ten. Yeah, I could I could see it pretty much staying the way it is, except for obviously, like I said, the Heat switching with Brooklyn. Okay, how you feel, Mars? Um, the East is a lot more straightforward than the West because there's no one like of the teams that are in, like Washington, Indiana, etc., aren't going to catch up. So you already know who is going to be between. It's just, I think Miami will be safe at six. I think Chicago will be in the seven or eight spot. I think Toronto dropped down to 10, and I think Brooklyn dropped down to nine. So I probably got Atlanta, Chicago, Toronto, Brooklyn, or Atlanta, Chicago, Brooklyn, Toronto. But uh, I do think Chicago is starting to peak at the right time. I think that comes with Zach Levine just starting to get his legs back under up under him. He looks a lot better. I think he needs to be the best player on the team if they want to have any sort of success. Um, Vucevic has looked good the last few weeks, which is kind of a surprise. But um, I think Miami, they want that six spot, I think. I think Miami want to play Philly in the first round, so I think they're going to do whatever it takes to get that spot. Um, Atlanta with Quinn Snyder, Trey Young looks like he's trying on defense. Still not very good, but he's trying. So I don't know if that's like changed something around there. Um, Toronto, I don't know how I feel about them because, like Chill said, some some games they look like a contender to make a second round conference finals, and then another time they look like a lottery team out. Yeah. I think it, maybe it's because the consistent outside shooting or something to do with players not understanding their roles. I don't know, but I've got I've got Chicago, Atlanta, Toronto, and Brooklyn as my playing teams. Cool, cool, mm. fluent. So, so Brooklyn owns the tiebreaker because the first tiebreaker, if the record's the same, is the head-to-head matchups, and Brooklyn is three and zero versus the Heat. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't think that Miami does enough to beat them, like because Brooklyn has a tiebreaker. So I actually think Miami stays at seven, Brooklyn stays at six, Toronto will move up to uh, eight tonight. As a matter of fact, because they're going to beat Miami and Atlanta's going to lose. Um, and Chicago stays at 10, especially after they lose uh, to the Lakers in the next game. So it's Miami, Toronto, Atlanta, Chicago. And just to the Toronto and just to the Toronto thing, you got you guys are absolutely correct. They've they've got they, when they make shots, like when they share the ball, they they are a team that can get into the second round pretty easy. The problem is it's not that they don't know their roles, they don't like their roles, and they push back on it and they consistently have bad shooting nights, especially Fred Van Vliet, who I think is at their second or third worst field goal percentage in the entire NBA this season for those that qualify, which is horrible for your lead guard. Um, and they they consistently allow over 50% from the field and from three. So the, the their staple defense just doesn't show up a bunch of nights. So you're right. They're going to win and then lose and then look like a horrible team the next night. It's it's annoying. It's so with that being with that being said, with Toronto Tone, how are you feeling about Nick Nurse? Has has his welcome been worn out, or, or or do we do we hang out on Nick Nurse for a little while longer? The problem with Nick Nurse is that he's a look. He's a good coach. Right. He's, he's he is a good defensive minded coach who's very much hey play defense and I'll give you minutes. That type of coach is like Tibbs. Right, runs out. Hey, you're welcome after a while. Right. Um, and when you have, like, if you look at the Raptor 905, their their developmental league, their G League team, they are very much on building. Look at all the guys that have come through that system: Pascal Siakam, yeah. Fred Van Vliet, oh, OG exactly. Anunoby. Like, they do a great job of building up those guys, and then they come right. to this very strict type of coach, and it doesn't mesh with the way that they've been taught and brought up through the system. So they're going to need a coach who is as much of a developer as an NBA winning coach, and Thank that you. doesn't just doesn't fit that system. You capping. I was about to say you capping because he's more of a college coach than he is a pro coach. You think Nick Nurse ticket is more of a of he, a he would be a great college coach, coach because he's a very, very, yeah, disciplinary. Coach, bro. You have to listen coach. to me. Yeah, he would yeah. be great in college. He'd be great in college. I, if, if you I want a more free, like if you want a more free coach, I'll give you Steven Silas for Nick Nurse. I, no, 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 no,
I'm I'm just saying that Nick Nurse is a college coach because you can't run that. Listen, when you're dealing with pros, everything that Fluent just said right there, I know how pros operate, and they don't like guys like Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse, he'll run – like he said, he'll run home his welcome quick. You know what I'm saying? As far as because of his style and because of the way he wants to do things. The pro guys, they do things otherwise. They're not trying to hear all that stuff from him. And you'll take that stuff from a guy like East Bo because East Bo, knowing he's been around the game to know enough – to he know where to pull back and when to pull back. You know what I'm saying? Even though he still do piss a lot of dudes off with his style, but he has a cachet. I still think even though Nick Nurse won a chip, them guys don't look at him like that. They look at that like Kawhi went over there and got over the hump. They don't look at him like he's a championship qualified, certified coach to where now if I'm doing this Larry Brown type shit, everybody just got to bow down and, and kiss the ring. No, nah, not working like that. Yeah, let's re- let's remember, right? Like to 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 get's point, he took over like a fifty six win team, coach of the year, no, Dwayne Casey, no. and then they added, and then they added Kawhi and uh, Danny Green, basically for Yaka Pertle and, uh, and yeah, so Yeah, so, and so, so it's so. you know, it's it's not like he wasn't gifted this beautiful thing, but right. the thing with him more is it's it's that inconsistency. There's a lot of young players. There's, they have a really good young center, rookie young center in uh, Coloco, and it's like he plays them twenty minutes. He's a starter. Then he plays two. Then he's then he's thirty minutes, and then it's five. You can't do that. It's not it just it doesn't fit with the, I, with the team. Now you you capping about the Lakers now because what I saw from the Lakers, they're not finna go on a run. They're going on. They're going on. They call going to run when they're Houston. They're gonna lose, they're gonna lose to the Bulls so again on Wednesday tomorrow night. Nah. They're, gonna lose, they're gonna get smoked by the Bulls again tomorrow night in Chicago, and then they're gonna lose to Phoenix. They'll probably win the Utah game. I actually got, I think, and, and I thought it differently, but when I saw how LeBron did this last couple weeks, it changed my mind on the Lakers, bro. I think he messed up everything with them, how he just played this situation, man. I think the guys on the team know it. I think he's deflated the air out of them. I think when they go to Chicago and they get the hell beat out of them tomorrow night, I think that that's a loss. I think Phoenix a loss. I mean, excuse me, I think Phoenix a loss and the Clippers are a loss. So those are three losses right there. I think that the Dallas Mavs and 10 – over the Lakers. I think they might end up with the same record. And doesn't Dallas have a tiebreaker over the Lakers? Um, I'm not sure. I'm I not don't sure know because they, they, just, they just blew that lead to them not too long ago. I think. No, they beat the, no, they beat just, the Lakers last no, night. Right? No, yeah, Lakers, they just, Lakers uh, are going know. to smoke the Bulls tomorrow night. It's not even. I don't good. believe that. Patrick hey, Beverly. Hey, 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 don't have bet nobody that, Do not bet Patrick, nobody that. Patrick Beverly is going to have something to say about that. I'll bet you that steak dinner you owe low. Hey, listen, I told low I'll pull up. Low the one scared. <laughs> he's scared after you feed him his, his steak you're gonna beat him up that's hey, right. yeah that's what he think but i ain't on that I, hey as i told you from what i saw when they go on the road tomorrow first yeah. of all who knows what's going on and this is the problem d has not been able to play malik beasley's been vastly inconsistent you don't know when he's gonna be on and off vanderbilt doesn't give you enough offense and then if he plays too hard a defense he get chippy fouls and get in trouble then austin uh, uh austin uh reeves his game comes and goes because he's not getting 10 free throws no more. Now he's getting 13, 11 points. Then you got the situation with um other boy who's on the team, Roy Hachimor, who's getting DMP. So how is he going to bounce back from that? Like, to, to me. Well, the, difference, the difference with that, though, the difference with that, though, Ticket, is that when they play through Anthony Davis, when he is the most effective, they are the most effective because yep. the, offense is, the offense is wide open. Not only is the offense wide open, that means that they play in defense, too. And they're holding teams down. But the problem is, is that when James comes back, James is so polarizing, right? And now he gets the dominant space back. We don't need him to be that. We need him to be more woven into the unit and stick to what we were doing, which is running the O through Anthony Davis, him being our defensive anchor, in addition to Vanderbilt also being our defensive anchor, speeding the game up and playing fast in transition and not having guys like James taking all the shots, right? We need to get Beasley more open looks. We need to get Austin Reeves more open looks. We need to get Anthony Davis more involved in the offense early and often because when he gets involved, when he gets involved in the offense early and often, they're so I much it. better. I think that's the difference, that's the feeling, bro. I, I think they get. Sm- I think Vujicic comes back is ticked off. I think he puts up like a twenty-five and fifteen game tomorrow. Um, the big dude for getting ejected for no reason when they were trying to cheat the game. Um, you know he got he got ejected for looking at the ref. Like, come on, bro, this is cap. I think the Rosen plays better at home. I think the other role players for the Bulls play great at home. I think Pat Bev is still on the edge because they just lost to the Clippers last night. So they're going to come back mad. They need this game. So the Bulls, they need this game. And I think that Zach Levine, the Lakers focus too much on him tomorrow. And remember, who knows what's going on with D-Lo? D-Lo is a big key to all this. 
D'Lo, he gets a, he gets an injury. This dude was out for two weeks. So at a time, so I think he's a big key to this D'Lo with helping with the off ball pressure. I think teams have figured out Austin Reeves for right now, as far with the foul situation with Austin Reeves. I just don't, man. I'm tell you something, man. I think I think they lose tomorrow. I think they do beat the Rockets. I think they lose to the Clippers. I think they lose to Phoenix. And I think they lose. So Hold on. I asked Mars, did they tie, hold on. Did they tie with the Mavs this year? What was it? What was the season series with the Mavs? Let me see. I think they finished with the same record as the Mavs, and I think the Mavs get in. Because I think the Mavs win. These next five games ticket, it's uh Chicago, Minnesota, Houston, That's two losses, uh, Utah. And then the Clippers. Those they went. Hold on, no, they're Houston, Houston, Houston. You you forgot Rockets. That 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 one of that one of free. Chicago, Minnesota, Houston, Utah, the Clippers. That's that's. Hold on, they beat. Hold on, they beat. They beat the Mavs this year. No, that one and free, so they've lost three, one, one. Okay, yes, yeah, so it's over with. I think they end up yeah. with the same record as the Mavs, and I think the Mavs get in that last playing spot. I, I mm-hmm. think that I think the Lakers beat Utah, and I think they beat Houston. I think they lose to everybody else right now. But the way the way I'm telling y'all this. Bro, the way LeBron James did this, this chill town is going to backfire, bro. You had a rhythm. The team, everybody was playing better basketball. Austin Reeves is feeling comfortable doing what he's doing. Now LeBron just comes back out of the blue. I'm coming in the game. I'm playing 30 minutes in the rip. Now, now Roy Hachimura, who was balling for you, he, you know he's not mentally tough. Now you give him a DMP, and you're trying to re-sign him in the offseason. You gave him a DMP? Right now, are you saying Coast LeBron only came back because they were winning and he didn't want to let yes. the other guy he admitted? Get hold on, hold on. These ain't my words, these are his words. He said when he saw the team playing like that, he said this last night in the interview. He said when he saw the team playing like that, that motivated him not to get the surgery. He said that, not me. So, like I said, go look at the interview. This dude is a shrewd operator, and all I am, I'm here to call the cap so everybody can get mad at me. But at the end of the season, all these dudes gonna be agreeing with exactly what I'm saying. Period. Like I said, LeBron James, he quit the season after he broke the scoring record. He quit. It was season over with. You guys fall for the cap. You guys fall for all this. Oh, I'm playing through 80. 80 will be gone at the end of this I'm, season. I'm, fall, I'm obviously falling for it because I'm having a I'm having a difficult time believing that he quit. Nah, ticket. You ain't selling me that one. Nope. Bro, the man literally broke the scoring record and walked off the court. I, I believe I believe I believe he took a vacation and celebrated his that. He quit. I, I believe no, that. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. Then he then hold on. Then he took another break. He said, "Nah, that wasn't enough. Let me go ahead and tell him I tore my tendon, but I'm the fastest healing doctor in the history of the world." And they asked him what doctor was, and he said, "The LeBron James doctor of feet." Now they tell me that's not cap. <laughs> well, that's cap because if he was the LeBron James doctor of feet, he'd fail sixty percent of the time um, when it matters most. So <laughs> he probably went to somebody else. You can, you, can so, never, you can never, you can never not give tickets. You, you can never not give fool, you can fool, chill, chill. He can fool you. He can fool you. He can fool me. He can fool you. He can't fool me, chill town. He can fool you. He can fool you. Can't fool me, dog. Can't fool me, man. In the words of Mr. Ordell Roby, my ass might be dumb, but I ain't no dumbass. No. But this is the dude you praise, though, dog. This is the greatest player you ever seen. Absolutely not. I'm not. Like I said, my ass might be dumb, but I ain't no dumb ass. So hey, hey, look, and, and, and I'm gonna say this to you. This is the last time I'm gonna leave it to you like this. All of this stuff, you know, is making him look worse. That this dude averaged 30, that he had a guy like AD, that he had all these dudes on his team in year 20, he couldn't even make the playoffs. That's a shame, bro. That you think that's cool? My, right now, Michael Jordan would have had a better record than him in his last year in year 20, bro. And Jordan's last year in the league than what LeBron yeah. is right now. LeBron's averaging 30. Let's remember this. Just remember this on Monday. When we start our, am I, Ron? When we start at twelve, is it twelve on Monday? Yeah. Just remember, just remember, I'm gonna bring you the box score from the Bulls losing to the Lakers tomorrow. Uh, you you talk about the panel fluid? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how we'll be here on Monday at twelve Eastern. Yes, sir. And yes, Tuesday sir. at twelve Eastern. Yes, sir. Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Wednesday. Friday. and Wednesday and, and Thursday, Wednesday. Friday at twelve Eastern. Yeah. Yes, and one, one person's Ooh. not gonna be here with us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> first week and he's taking a vacation no nah, i'm definitely gonna be there Bill Town, don't change them lies now we're going every day you can't change them lies up no more oh, ain't they, they, you ain't gotta worry about this that this is uh-huh. the truest super uh-huh. i've ever read hold on he said i joined the player's choice super team 
That's right. What are you, you talking about? Came. <laughs> when, I, when, I came, when I came over here, bro, listen, bro, I was already established. I came over here with my brothers to break bread. What are you talking about? I didn't come over here with zero subs. I didn't come over here with zero following. I came over here 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, so, 94, so, 95,000 like, so, strong. Would you say like you came with like a couple MVPs, the best record in the league, and then you joined That's the right. That's on. These are facts. Nah, I, okay, I, got, I got over 67 million views on my channel. So what are you, talk, what, what are you talking about? I, when I came with it, hey, it ain't my fault they try to hold me down because I cut a group. That's on Super team. Kevin, Kevin the Ticket. <laughs> Kevin the ticket. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, next super chat. Officer Ricky said a bunch of grown ass men assembled late at night to hate on LeBron on Ticket TV. On a scale of one to ten, how sad is this? It's sad that you watch. It's hold on. It's sad that if you don't like me, what's that you what's continue to watch? What's worse? Hold, hold on. What's worse that they're getting paid to do it or that you're sitting up watching them late at night? When y'all watch the show y'all don't like, bro, do you just yeah. keep watching the show every single day that you don't like? Like, man, I can't stand this show. I'm gonna keep watching. That's what these clowns do. Uh, you, only, you, 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 usually, you usually only you usually only watch something you don't want to watch when your wife or your girl makes you. So that's fine. So so she must, you must love me. She, she must love me. In the words of in the words of Easy E. Yo, they ran over our records, man. They bought them shit, so. <laughs> Thanks. Angie Carr with another super chat. She said, confirmed. Chill mainstream. Chill not a businessman. He's a business man. I'm not, man. That's ticket trying to sell y'all. <laughs> that's ticket trying to sell y'all that I'm something else, right? Y'all speak. Yes, me. That's ticket trying to sell y'all something else. We all know Thanks, it's not it's not news that yes, I am from. I live in the same building that ticket lived in. Yes, let's make sure we clear on that. No doubt about that. I'm from the mm -hmm. park that ticket used to go to. Yep, you can find me there too. I was there, I was absolutely there. So it ain't really no. Don't don't make it sound like yo. I'm just buttoned up, tied, and no, I'm not. No, I am not. That's not true. He ain't Carlton Banks, believe that. No, I am not. No, do not get me confused with him. Big Jeff with the super chat. This is a good one. He said, What's next for the Portland Trailblazers since they shutting down Damian Lillard? Trading him. They better, hold on, they better not trade him. They hold on, they better not trade him. He better stand on that. He told he told Paul George and them, y'all switching teams, ducking the grind, jumping from team to team. He he better not he they better not trade him. He better stand up and stand ten toes on that. That's just like if me, if me, if me and Chilltown go do a crime and, and we both get popped. Guess what? I got to stand tall on that, man. I can't snitch on Chill because I, I was down with it too. So, yeah. so Dame Dollar, he told them dudes. Remember Dame? He told them in the bubble of uh, Chilltown. He said he told that Paul George and them when they was laughing. He said, "Man, you dudes laughing? Y'all do some chumps." He said, "Y'all out here uh, ducking the grind, jumping and dodging teams, trying to win pace championships." So now he can't go and do that. Cause if he do, I'm gonna demolish his ass. Go ahead. And see, this is this, and this and this right here. This is the logic. That's why he is. He's in. He's in a completely different conversation. And the reason why, is for that reason, right there. If I stay here, yo, you were the one who stayed there. That team was bad. But if I leave, this is what it's gonna be. So you gotta be real careful about the stuff that you say, man. Because people, there's cameras around. I don't need the cameras around. We can go back and we can rewind it. Now the Trailblazers are not serious about winning. They not because the unit that they put around Damian Lillard right now, this team is not comprised. This team is not built to win the NBA championship or at least compete for the playoffs. So if you dudes is serious about winning, if you dudes is for real serious about winning, you got to come off Damian Lillard and you got to start over if y'all serious about winning. But if y'all not and y'all just want to sell tickets and y'all just want to be box office because that's what Damian Lillard is because it ain't like he's just showing up. Again, the dude, let, he's leading the league in scoring since January 1st. He was averaging 38 and 8 a month before the All-Star break. So he's clear. That's he's clear. That's clear. That's clear. That's clear. No, it's not. How about, how, about pack, how about package Dermy Grant and package the big dude and go get him a, a real star uh, a sidekick? Well, here's the thing, though, Ticket. How long How long is it going to be before we do that? Because, again, no, we've, had no, no, no. we've had opportunities to do that in the past, chill and down. they didn't. It ain't my fault. Chill town. It ain't my fault them idiots trade all the assets they had to the Clippers. They All the assets they had with Norman Powell, all them dudes, Norman Powell was averaging 20 points a game. They could have packaged those guys up and went and traded and went and got you a legitimate superstar to put beside Dane. They had the pieces. 
And the same, and and they had the same thing in nineteen when they went to the Western Conference Championship. When that team was that was the best time to make that team better. Only except you didn't. In fact, you ran it back. And everybody else in the West, everybody else in the West got better. Again, New Orleans got better, right? Uh, Memphis got better. The Warriors got everybody else got better. So what Portland did was they basically just ran it back. So if you dudes are serious about winning, y'all gonna have to start over because what y'all doing right now is obvious that y'all not trying to win. Y'all not. Elder, you talking about like who? Bro, this is easy. I package Jeremy Grant in a pick, and I go get Pascal Siakam. And then if they want, I throw in the big dude. I go get Siakam and Fred Van Fleet. Or I go get Siakam and the other boy, Anunoby. Why would Toronto do that? Because they're going nowhere fast. But that – Okay. I actually had Toronto with Jeremy Grant. I think Jeremy Grant brings some of the same things that Pascal Siakam does with probably less head than what Siakam's going to get a coach. I mean, straight <clears> up. That, that might – their pick this year actually won't be too bad, Mars. The Blazers are – Oh, yeah, the, that pick's going to be great. They're getting a lottery pick. Yeah, and so – like, I mean, it, it could possibly – like, let's say they get the fifth pick. If you're Toronto, you don't consider that? You got Scotty Barnes. You got OG and OB. Pascal, yeah, he's still relatively young, but he's old enough to the point where – you might consider coming off. He in his prime. He in his prime, right? And he gave you damn near what? 27 a game? 28 a game? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, Siakam? I, think, I think it does yeah. depend on the yeah. level. Siakam, of Siakam killing, bro. Siakam, Siakam is a top 15 player. I, 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 think you can make a, I think you can make a legit argument. You, you, at least top 20. Top right. 20. Yeah. I, 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 I think you can, think you can make a legit argument. He's top 15, top 20. I think, I think you could argue he's top 20. I don't, maybe. I don't know. Hey, the league is, the league is very talented. Apart, you go get Cat, bro. If the T-Wolves fall apart, you go get Cat, and then you see if the Lakers trying to come off one of those guys, potentially, in a deal for uh, what you call it. Uh, let's say if the Lakers want to go get uh, – let's say if the Lakers want to get a guy like Jeremy Grant, right? Uh, then what you do is is it that you uh, hmm. deal over to Portland in return for, for, for Jeremy Grant. And then what you do is you package the big dude and something else, and you try and you try to go see a pick, and you try to see if you can go peel off uh, Siakam. For a big dude, an, another role player, and, and one of those first round picks that's going to be very valuable that they got. See if you go get see it. And if the Trailblazers were thinking like that, why haven't they done that? What have they done to upgrade that roster over the last? Well, no, I'm years? saying no. I'm saying that they they played the game wrong. They should have never gave up uh, Norman Powell. They should have never gave up Robert Covington and all those pieces they had to the Clippers for nothing. They got nothing for that. They should have never gave it up. That was, a, that was a money, money move. move. I, that that was a that was a that, what that was ticket, that was a, that was a money move no. over the summer and they thought that they were going to be able to to bag a big time free agent to come to Portland with Dame and it didn't work that was a money move. Right. You always use your assets to go get assets. So to me, they they could have kept those assets and they could have went and got a legitimate star in the league. You could they, look they legitimately could take a shot at Cat in the offseason. Dame and Cat is a disgrace defensively, but I I think they should just trade Dame. I think it benefits everyone. Dame allows you to get pieces back for a rebuild. You already have Shaden Sharp, Anthony Simons, the potential of Cam Reddish, if you still believe. Then whatever picks and young players you get from whoever you trade Dame to, it'd have to be a contender. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you wanted to trade him to... Damn, what teams really have young players that are content? I'm like, good moving up. And, and by the way, Miles, I'm good moving up Nurkic too. He can go too. Oh, yeah. Oh, Nurkic, oh. Nurkic, Nurkic needs to go. But, like... Yeah. If, I was gonna ask you that much. What team like if if Sacramento offered up Keegan Murray, Davion Mitchell, etc., and some picks? But Damian and, Lillard. But Damian Lillard. Oh, there's no way Sacramento saying no to that. Don't forget you're bringing in. Don't forget you're bringing in Jalen Brown too, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's the type. That's the type of move that. I think. Like Dame would only go. Like Portland would only send Dame to a team that would not have to blow up their whole team to get him, but they can still compete when they do get him. So well, hey, for example, not, they're hey, not going to send him to like. Lake, hey Mars, if the Lakers break up, I'm going. If you're Portland, I'm going to take a shot at AD. I'm going to see if I can give you Jeremy Grant, uh, the big fella, and a pick, the, and you give me AD and one of those other role players you got. So, right, so, ticket, so, not, ticket, you're trying to save. To so, so, ticket, you're trying to save Dame in Portland. Everybody else is trying to trade Dame. Don't duck the grind, man. Don't duck the grind, bro. You don't duck that grind, bro. You don't say what he said and then mm -hmm. and then let them get you out of there. 
You still well, that, 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 that grind is not going to work. The grind is not going to work. He's been there 12 years. He's been there 12 years. That is not true, bro. Bro, listen, listen, listen. The Milwaukee Bucks are a small market team. They proved you wasn't true. When that team needed tweaking, they made a small move, an underrated right. move to go get Drew Holiday, and it made them championship contenders. And then they kept making small moves. They were already were a very good team before. You're not Drew hearing me. They kept them over small the top. Moves. Hold on, hold on. Let, let me say this. They went from a 51 team with, mm -hmm, with yeah. the keys being, excuse me, Middleton and Giannis. They kept failing. Then what did they do next? They went and went and made an underrated move to go get Drew Holiday. Right, a one-time All-Star. No, he wasn't no big name on the free agent market. He wasn't the number one. They they made great underrated moves. Then what did they do? They go do. They went and got Bobby Portis from the New York Knicks. Then what did they underrated move when Bobby Portis was written off and now Bobby Portis is probably six men a year? Then what did they go do? They don't win now. They got Jay Crowder. Then what are they going to do? All these little pieces they got, bro, bro. That is what Portland can do. If right, I'm Portland, they're not if doing I'm looking that, at the Lakers, that's the problem. You keep you keep telling them that he got to duck. The, he's he's ducking the grind. He, he wouldn't duck the grind if they were doing those sort of things. But he's been there twelve years, ticket. And in the process of him being there, what have they done to build that unit? They let Lamarcus Aldridge walk out the front door. In the process of letting Lamarcus. In, in the process of letting Lamarcus Aldridge walk out the front door after the 18-19 season, we're in the Western Conference Finals and they get swept, and it's time to and it's time to upgrade that roster. They don't. They don't do anything. That's their fault. But that was their fault. Hold on. Right. That was so, their fault. So why are you asking? So why no, no, no. Are you right. No, so why are you asking no, 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 him no, no. to continue no, no. to stay there? No, no. I'm saying that was Dame's fault. They lost that series. They were up 18 points every game that series. Dame had a crack rib, but they were up 18 no. points from the Warriors every game and lost every lead. That's Dame fault. In the fourth quarter, he folded every single yeah, that, game. That's that double digit leads going into the fourth quarter. Going dollar. That's going Dame dollar. dollar. They ain't gonna organize it. I'm not gonna fight that part. That part I'm not gonna fight. But what I can't do is that I can't get on board with you telling me that he's ducking the grind when he's been there for 12 years, and for the majority of that time, they haven't done what they needed to do to continue to build a team around him in order for them to win. Plus, we gotta remember. Yo, a lot of times we look at these guys as championship. A lot of these, a lot of times we look at these teams as championship contenders. A lot of times we gotta accept the fact that yo, maybe this dude just ain't good enough to win it. Maybe bro, he's you just not good enough to win it. You gotta fire the GM, bro. You gotta fire the GM, man. You, you got great. Go ahead, Marsh. I, I was just gonna say I, I agree with like what you're saying. I think if Portland were closer to competing than they are, like if Portland were what Milwaukee were before they added Drew Holiday. I'd agree. What they need to do is just make some extra additions, and then they can can compete. The issue is they're trash. They they can't just keep making small additions with Dame being thirty two. They're, they're more, yeah, they're more than a couple of tweaks yeah, away. They, they can't yeah. afford. They no, no, I'm they saying they were just trash. They, they, they were just trash. They before they was trashed with Dame and CJ. They were in the mm -hmm. Western Conference Finals. They got walked down because Dame Dollar did not show up. Every single game of that series, he got outplayed. That, 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 that was the time for them to make tweaks. That yes. was the time, but now we're four years too late. At that time, if they got rid of Nurkic and brought in a real big and done some things, then I agree with you. I think too much time has passed now, anyway. and this is. I, I think they're so, 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 so with the Lakers. With the Lakers potentially dealing AD, you don't think that they could package a Jeremy Grant, the big dude uh, Nurk, in a pick and try to go get AD this summer? And okay, then if, so the Lakers, let's say the Lakers are wholesaling. That's so what you do. On. Okay, hold on. So let me ask you this. So oh, if you before you go, Tom, before you go, hey, Ron, I got I got a hop. But yo, right. fellas, it was dope. I'll see y'all do it soon. No doubt. Keep going, Tom. I'll see you. I'll see you Thursday, brother. Yeah. Um, do you think Dame and Day to Day Davis is enough to get over the I hump? Mean, I, I think AD is more motivated on a team where he ain't playing behind LeBron no more. I think he liked that at first. I think he dreads it now. I think on a team without LeBron, I think it motivates AD to play more. I think that AD is now at a point to where he's going to want to prove something after that guy to prove it wasn't just about him. And I do believe that with a guy like Dane, I still, even though Dane shoots, shoots the ball the way he does, I think him and AD could have him a top four team in the West. Do you think Do you think he can hold up to be that guy? No, I'm saying I think he would be motivated. I think, I think he'd give you around 69 games. Yeah, okay. All right. If the Lakers trade, I, I just what I'm saying. If, if you do that, bro, with the other little pieces they got over there, the Shadens, uh, the Winslows, all the other dudes that's playing D, that's 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 those look like better uh, uh, role players now than what they did before when you didn't have another guy. But if, if the Lakers are going to wholesale, and let's say the Lakers are in the business of Jeremy Grant, and let's say the Lakers can then get a big man like Nerd in the deal with a first round pick, 
a good first round pick that could potentially land you uh Wimbanyama, your mama, whatever his name is, Wimbanyama, that gets him. Um, you I, I think you do that. Look, I, I think if they're gonna move off of AD, which I don't think is a bad idea, I think they're gonna look to have a bona fide like they, either they star still want to compete or, with LeBron. That's yeah. The thing. If they trade AD for Jeremy Grant and Nurkic in a pick, that would always yeah, they might as well they might as well. No, but that pick could be one my, that pick would be one my young. That, that yeah, but when Wemby Yama wouldn't be a winning player straight away either. Like LeBron, yeah, is, don't you watch your damn mind? You think Wemby Yama can be the you second to right. LeBron for a championship? Wemby Yama, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wemby Yama is that's a high expectation. That's away. a high expectation. He's a high level. Hold on, he's a he is a he is a generational type player. Wemba is, Yama is, is a generational type player, bro. Why, why would why would the Trailblazers trade away a pick that could be if, if, the, if, the, if they if if the Blazers won the lottery? I promise you, they wouldn't trade the pick. They'd put yeah, Wembenyama next to Davis. Especially not for Anthony Davis. No, no, no. If uh, you they would put they would put Wembenyama no, next to Davis. That's you, what you, they would. You, no, 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 no. You don't trade. I don't consider trading Wembenyama. I actually consider trading Dame. Oh goal. yeah, they they, they, they might do that as well. Yeah, like, yeah, that, yeah, that makes yeah, we, 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 we've been on any that. any team that gets the number one pick. I don't think there's anything you can offer that they would trade it for. Mm. Unless like well, maybe, you just you just like Dallas you you just put the own narrative. You just say. Think when Manyama gonna be like that? No, I said I don't think he can be the second piece on the championship winning team in year one. That's why I said. Yeah, I do. You can't. You the way, can't, the way he look. You the, can't. The way he look. Like, hey, hold, let me ask y'all a question. Do y'all think LeBron James could have been the second piece on the championship winning team in year one? Highly doubt it. No. Hold on. Hold on. What? Hold on. You no. hold on. Hold on. Fluent. 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 I'm mean, hold on. Fluent. Do not say fluent. See, even your mic don't want you to ask that question. <laughs> but you can't you know, on, on the on the Spurs with Tim Duncan when he came in the league and won a chip. Yeah, with the Spurs, yeah, I think I think I, we talked about this a while ago too. We did I talk think, about think, this a while ago. Yeah. Okay, there might be a scenario, but in most yeah, scenarios, yeah. no. Yeah. And his rookie year, no. In so look, hey, hold on, look, so you hold on. Y'all saying look, hold on, y'all saying LeBron James rookie year, he couldn't have been a second option on a championship team. I mean, 99% I of said all I highly know. doubt it. That's crazy. How many it teams are in the league at that time? 29? I think on like 27. Of them, I, know, I, I know. said a second option, dog. Not a first one. Y'all, it's crazy, bro. I'm, ticket, I'm with you on San Antonio, bro, but get, throw, throw out Carmelo, the all them dudes could have been a second option, bro. If you would have put Carmelo on the Pistons, he'd have been a second option and won the chip his rookie year. Boy, well, never would have come off the bench. He would have been a second option on that team. He would have come off the he's, bench. You think he's a higher option? So Rip Hamilton was the number one option. No, so dudes, it's awesome. So you, you think, oh, you think he's a higher option than Charles? You know, you know Larry Brown because he did the same thing in the Olympics. He would bring he would bring Carmelo off the bench, so he'd mm -hmm. be the sixth man of the year, maybe on a championship team. Sure, LeBron, LeBron on ninety. Yeah, 90, I'm just saying on most of the teams, Bro, wouldn't be the these number fools got me defending the LeBron James. This is a special day, right here. What day is this? I did it on purpose. <laughs> this is crazy. Y'all saying the man couldn't be a second option on the championship winning team? His, 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 rookie, his rookie on most teams, I don't think year on most teams. Option. No, yeah. no. Wait, wait, like, so are you, are if you, you, put, if you put him on like the Timberwolves with KG, do I think KG and LeBron could have made it to the finals that year? Maybe. Do I think he could have made it to the finals on the Spurs? Maybe. But there's more teams than not where I don't think he could do that. That's no, to the dude who said I'll cap, I didn't say he couldn't make it. I said he wouldn't have won. That's what oh. I said. I said he wouldn't have won the chip. I said because he would have folded like he did in the finals. In 2007, I didn't say he couldn't make it. Now put that <laughs> in your pipe. Are you, are you saying, I want to know how I was someone in the chat said this is why I don't watch this show, dude. You're commenting, that means you are watching the show. And it was, <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Ron, Ron, drop that poll, Ron, Ron, drop that poll, Ron. Ask him, yeah, do LeBron James could have been the uh, second best player on a championship team in his rookie year? I guarantee you, the whole chat agrees with me. But the whole Yo, no, the I, whole I, I think I think I think we agree. God, it's it's not no no no. It, but Florent, Florent, I, I mean, think, I, think right now, too. I think we agree too. Florent, just, Florent. I, I think the it's man, a average, very select number of teams. Florent, that's Yo, sad, bro. bro. Yo, but to, I can't believe but, you said bro, that. Bro. Are, you, are you are you saying are you saying that if if Victor Wembanyama was on the Lakers next year, then him and that's why I'm also saying no because he's trying to put them in the time out. If Victor Wembanyama is on the Lakers next year without yeah. AD with LeBron James, they yeah. are talking about them with championship expectations. Yeah. Okay. So, so now, so now, so now, that's so, so, so now, that's that's now that you said that though, ticket, you, you said that though, ticket. So now I got to ask you: Can you be the GM, meaning the GM for the Portland Trailblazers, that trades a guy like that for Anthony Davis? 
No, I'm not saying a guy like that. I'm saying you trade the pick because you don't. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's not. It's a hit or miss chance that you get that, that you get no, that, no, that no, number no, one pick. You can trade. You can trade the pick like at any. No, if I know, if I know, look, if I know the pick, if I know the pick is one Banyama, I ain't giving it up. Right, right, but but that, but that's what I'm saying. though. ticket. When when is that? When is that ticket? I mean, when is that uh pick available to be traded? You 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 can't trade it for until after they know what it is, right? Like now, I mean, like now that nah, you can trade it when the season's over, right? Uh, right? Or what you call it? As, as, oh, as soon as the season's over, they can make that trade. Nah, nah, yeah, no. At the when after the season ends on um, I forget the date. What's it? What's the date? Uh, ch uh, ch Phil for it's the um, late, it's gonna be late July. Or late, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's before. It's gonna be before the draft. That the, the, the trade the trade opens up before the draft, dog. No, but they'll they'll know who the first overall pick is. Kind of midway through the playoffs, they do like they'll do the whole lottery. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, okay. So I, that's what I was asking. I wasn't sure if the if the pick was gonna be available before they knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. Ron, what they saying? That, and, 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 and did you drop that um that poll, Ron? Yes. Uh, uh, what they say? One percent of the people as of now say yes that. LeBron, and now they all that, agree with LeBron me. LeBron could have been the second best player. Of course, because it's because it's their love for LeBron, dude. Like you can go through the teams. There's we're saying most teams. If he goes uh, on, so, exactly. hold on. Name the name, name the teams. I'm gonna put you on a docket. Name name the teams for me. Nick is just cooking y'all today. He's cap. No, Bruins cap. Name the teams for me. The Clippers. He's gonna be the second option to Elton Brand. They go into the chip. Okay, I know he won't. Go ahead. Okay, uh, the Phoenix Suns. Stephon Marbury and them. He's gonna be the he's gonna be the number two to 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 yeah to Marbury. Are they going no. to the chip? Nah, go ahead. No, okay. Um, the Seattle SuperSonics. Ray Allen. Ray Allen. Him and Ray Allen oh. going to the chip in his rookie year. Uh, they they might make they might they might be a contender. That team no. that team will be good though. I'm gonna tell you why. They might they be a contender. Not gonna be good. He's saying they they're winning the chip. Nah, nah, for I'm, sure. I'm, just, I'm just stating that that. No, team I said championship really contender. Good. I said contender. He goes to uh, where? Where? What's the next one up? Uh, Golden State with Jason Richardson, and he's the second. Don't forget, he's the second option. Nah, go ahead, keep going. Okay. So so that's far, four. We're over. okay. Um, no, that's five. Oh no, sorry, Port Portland. No, no that's four. Okay, sorry, Portland, Portland, Portland is five. Zach Randolph, right? Zach Randolph. That Randall. is that is. Um, that is uh, I guess the leading store. Yeah, is, is Zach Randolph. Him and him and Zebo. They traded Hold Rasheed. Who else was they, on that team? Though? They traded. That was the year they traded Rasheed. Him, so. Zebo, Damon Stoudemire. Yeah, that team. Who, who I like them. Wasn't it somebody? It was some other pieces on that team, though, right? On that uh, team, uh, yeah. let's see. Uh, Zebo, Damian, uh, Damian Stoudemire, Rasheed Wallace gets traded. Derek Anderson, Jeff McKinnis. Hmm. I, I like that. That team, that team, that team, that team's gonna move me in the West. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Was Robert Patterson on that team? Yeah, I like that Portland team, bro. I like okay. that Portland team as a the real Utah team. Jazz. The Utah Jazz. He's the number two to Andre Karolenko. No, don't wouldn't... say that. Who, who, who was the top player on that team that year, bro? Andre Karolenko was the leading scorer. So I'm talking about. No, that was the that was before Darren Williams and them got there, right? Because Darren Williams was the overall yeah. So is he is he taking that Utah team to the final as a second oh, option? Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Okay. So what far, we're, we're more no's than yeses. For the record, uh, if, he takes Carmelo, Carmelo, if he takes Carmelo's if he takes Carmelo's spot on Denver, they go into the chip. No, no, you can say it. No, 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 no. no. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Houston, if he's the number two behind uh, what? Who's the number Francis? one? Steve Francis. Yeah, Steve Fran well, I guess it's y Yao Ming. Oh, yeah, Yao Ming. Oh, Francis. Yao Ming, yep. Championship contender. But they a championship two. team, no contender. I said yeah. contender. Yeah. I said contender. Yeah. A real contender. That's what I argue against. Um, Memphis is actually a pretty good team because they have yep. Al Gasol as a yeah. rookie. As a rookie, uh, oh, are they a contender? Yeah, I don't know about that. Okay, hold but on. I said the contender. Yes, the the Chicago Bulls. Well, who? Ben Gordon. <laughs> Next. Well, who? <laughs> I, don't know. I could I could be wrong. I'm, 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 Eddie Curry are the top two guys there. Yo, stop, well, hey, yo, you cap. <laughs> this man trying to cap. That's Bro, who's there. Jamal Crawford, Eddie Curry, Gennaro Pargo, Jalen Rose, Kirk Heinrich. Like this team, I don't care. LeBron. Oh, no, hold on. I like that team. Come on. I like Tom that squad. You shouldn't. They won 23 games. Um, Atlanta with Sharif Abdul Rahim. 20 and 10, B. Nah. Go ahead. The Raptors. Woohoo. DC, right? That's, uh, they traded him, right? that's Vince Carter, Jalen Rose, Danielle Marshall. Yep, Ooh, championship. I like oh. that. 
Championship contender. Let's go. Rookie LeBron taking them to a yes. chip. Yeah, I, like, I, like the the yeah. I, I like the team. I like the team. That's all I'm gonna say. Yes. I like the team. Yes. Okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say Cleveland because he went to Cleveland and couldn't take them as okay, a rookie. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, Milwaukee. Well, who? Michael Red. And Michael Red. Tim Thomas was on that team. Who uh, was on that team? Michael Red was on that team, and Tim Thomas was on that team. They're the only guys I remember. And who else? No, who was on that team? Mars? Oh, let me look out. Michael the, Red, Tim, Tim Thomas. It's, it's um, Keith Van Horn was on that team. Keith Those Van Horn, names. Joe Smith, TJ. He Ford. was not, He was so, the solid role player. And old Tony Kukoc was on that team. Yeah, Tony Kukoc was on that team. Yeah, that team's not moving me. No. Uh, okay, Orla Orlando. Who was the main guy? Lil Flo was good, homie. Huh? T Mac was the main guy. T Mac was the main guy back then. Him and T Mac. What year you talk? Oh yes, championship Let's contender. Go. Let's keep going. As, as a rookie, we're using his rookie year. Yes, the, yes, the yes. Washington Wizards, the Washington Wizards with Gilbert Arenas. Hibachi. Um, he's number two to nah, Gilbert. Don't forget. Who else was on that team? Who was on that team? He's the number two option. To yeah, this. but who's on that team? Who else on that team? Gilbert Arenas, Larry Hughes, Kwame Brown, Jerry Stackhouse. Um, Jarvis Hayes, Eaton Thomas. Right. How many games they won right. right. How right. many games they won right. here? Don't look at Nick. They won 25 games that season. Don't go, uh, okay, nah, uh, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to cap. I ain't going to cap. Go ahead. Go to the next one. <laughs> um, so, hey, I, hey, I got six teams right now. So let's go. You, you, got, you got 12 teams. I got six. Go ahead. Second, sec, second option. Second option to uh, Island Iverson on the Sixers. Ooh, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so yeah. you're talking about so we, so we, we, we talk about, about AI not having space, and you're going to give him rookie LeBron. Hold on, hold on. You put hold on. You put LeBron. Rookie LeBron. I just want you to know. I just want you to know. You're taking rookie LeBron to take a 33 win team to to win a chip, and you better change your mind. Hold on, that changes the narrative of that team, though. AI and LeBron, the same team, changes the narrative, bro. But we we know we know what Allen Iverson was like without spacing. LeBron James this, doesn't this, help with the space. But hold on, but he, he didn't have another. He didn't. He never had another guy that could help take over the game either. Uh, I, I, I agree. I think that's why I think they improve. But the, goes, the this lack is, of space Celtics. is still there. Celtics. He goes to the Celtics with Paul Pierce. Anton Walker's there. Uh, and he's right. the number. He's the number two on this on that Celtics team. Gee, as a rookie, that. don't forget, not at his peak, guys. As a yeah. rookie, yeah, who yeah, averaged twenty a game, couldn't post up. Like, remember who this is? Anton Walker was still there. Yeah, yeah Antoine Paul, Paul Pierce, Antoine Walker, and LeBron. Uh, oh. No, it was Paul Pierce, Chucky Atkins, Mike James, Ricky Davis, Mark Blunt, Paul Pierce, Vin, yep. Vin Baker, Antonio Antoine Walker, Walker, was Walker is not on that team. Antonio Walker is not on Paul Pierce. Yep. All right, so, so you so you think he takes thirty win teams and turns remember, them? Into remember, in order oh, in order for them to make the final, they have to beat the Detroit Pistons. Man. All these teams have to yeah, beat hold Detroit. On, hold on, hold on, fluent, fluent. They said no. LeBron had nobody on his team that first year in Cleveland, right? And he led them to what thirty some wins, right? So 35. he's worth twenty. He's worth twenty more. Wins. Hold on, he's worth twenty more wins himself. So you think him on those teams that won twenty and thirty games? Defeat he's worth twenty more wins himself. So if you put him on a thirty five win, thirty six win team, I'm I'm giving him twenty more wins. All right, and go through whoever's in the finals, the 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 Spurs, I the championship Lakers. contender. You're saying win the whole damn thing. I'm saying they I got a chance win. to win it. No, you said he could be the you second best said. on a championship team. No championship not on a championship team. Championship contender. All right, you said all right team. go ahead, go ahead. You said Hold team. on. Now, name the top teams, Fluent, because you named all the, all the trash teams. You tried to cherry pick. Yeah, I said on a bad because yeah, because if he's getting picked there, he's getting picked on a bad okay, team. So, no, we, so we've concluded all the top teams all you can put him in the second year. No, because the, the reason the reason this came along is what I did was about Wemben Yama on the Lakers. What I did was because you're trying to say Wemben Yama can go to a team as a second option and be a chip, and I'm saying no, and, and you're trying to compare him to Braun, and I'm saying look, here's all the sub 500 teams. He's not taking them to a chip, of course. So let me ask you one question. He, could, he, could he go right now? Hold on, hold on. Let me ask you a question right now. If you put could him he, on the Spurs, if you put him on the Pistons, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, he's gonna win. They're gonna on, win. But, but, but let me ask you a question right now. If, if you put one Manyama on the Miami Heat right now, the second second option is Jimmy. Does that make them a championship level team? No. I'm not. They've already been to the Eastern Conference Finals. See so you, that, bro. Not as good as LeBron. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm saying if you add Wimbanyama to Jimmy Butler, who's already took that team to the Eastern Conference in the NBA Finals, how in the hell are you going to say they wouldn't be a contender when you added a dude like that? I think he is. I highly huh? doubt he's the second option. He's not as good as you think he is, and he won't be the second oh, option. Crazy? 
Maybe maybe I need to watch more Wembenyama. Y'all dudes hating on me, bro. Oh man, y'all. Hey, but this dude came out. It's not hate to say I don't think he can be the second best player on the championship team out the gate. Bro, this man came to the station, annihilated all the competition, and flew in over here like, oh, yeah, I don't believe it. In the G League. In the G League. I don't care if it's the G League, the D League, the C League, the the, the, the whole B League. I don't care who it is. He came over here. There's a a difference between doing it against G League competition and doing it against the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay, so so when the best players in the league say this dude, when the best players in the league vouch for him, and then then you say he can't can't play, I'm supposed to listen to you, Mark. I'm not saying he can't play. Ticket, I'm saying I don't think from day one he can be the second best player on the championship team. I'm extremely high on his ceiling. I think his ceiling is through the roof. I'm saying from day one, I don't think he can be the second best player on the championship team. What do you you think he puts up his rookie year? uh, In the history of the NBA, in the history of the NBA, how many rookies have come in as the second option and led a team to a championship? How it's many? Ma- magic and I, didn't say lead them. I didn't say lead, but they're saying, listen, not only am I saying they're... The, no, no, answer my question first. Is he is answer a my question. How many? One. Go ahead. How many? I'm asking the question. How many rookies c- have come into the NBA as the second option on a team and taken them to a championship? How many? What, like first know. year or first year or like first year? Rookie, like rookie, years. rookie. It's That's magic. Magic. I don't know, but it's fluent. I, I, I give you that, but magic I'm saying... Like Bill Russell. Hey, here's my, fluent. Here's my answer to you, Lauren. If one or two have done it in the 75... But, but Lauren, here's my answer to you. Here's my answer to you. It's only one or two players in the history of the game that's like this dude coming in. Sure. I, but I don't... Th- again, he's he's not going to go to a team. He's not going to go to... going to be so wrong, bro. He's not going to go to a team. change your on this, bro. Ticket, he's, he's not going to be on a championship team anyway. He's going he's gonna to be on Houston. enough. You are going to be so wrong, bro. Y'all going to be so wrong about this kid, bro. I promise you. He's not going to win a championship in year one. Ticket, he's not. We got to move on. Let me finish. Let me just say, finish the point. When no one's saying he's going to be bad, what I'm saying is he's not going to go to a team that's good enough that can go to a championship where he and him being the second option, there's it's just it's impossible. He's gonna go to like the Pistons or he's Houston, gonna go Houston, to the Houston. Rockets. Yeah. They are not even as the first, second option, whatever, they're not gonna be good enough. They're not. It's nothing against him. It's just that's the way the, the NBA is built. He's not hey, mind, how many wins, how many wins is he worth in his rookie year, your mind? Uh, probably 20 more than they had the year before. It depends on the team he goes to. I think if he went on the Spurs right now, they're like a 20 win team. I think they can win like 35 games. If he goes to the Magic, ooh, I like that. Oh, oh yeah, you like that? Oh, yeah, I stroked your ego yeah. just now. No, 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 not yeah. a championship team. Not as a, cha- not as a championship team. Yeah, he said, not ooh, I like team. that. Yeah, bro. He liked that. Not, not as a championship team, but I think they could be a 40, like 500 team if they go. 40 the Magic. Cap, boy. If you, Orlando got one Benyam, I think they can be a 500 team. You just said, ooh, I like that now. Yeah, go, yeah, going, from, going from 25 wins to 500, yeah, I like that. If you think it was me and I low, then you try to tone it down after you fake like you like it. What, what's what's, I, what's, I did, what's I did, I did, 25 like, games? Ron, you Orlando, Orlando he he like 25 wins. Ron. He thought he was talking to low. He said, ooh, I like that. When he seen he was talking to Ticket, he toned it down like, nah, nah. Oh, Orlando have 32 wins. Oh, yeah, they're definitely 32 wins? Yeah, they're going to be 500 with one Benyam. I believe that. No, no, I'm saying they're a 50 win team with him. They're not going to chip. Fifty. Okay. Okay. He's going, to, he's going to Houston anyway. So I don't think so. And yes, yes, I take, I, I take it. Yes, I, I take it literal. You're absolutely right. When you say someone's three hundred times better, don't say that if you don't mean three hundred times. I think you right. guys are. I think it's been overstated how much when I think you're wrong. Had the game out of the gate. I think you're wrong, Fluent. Fluent. Is there anybody in the draft you take over him? No. No. All right, Denver. No, he's he's by. No, far, this is a foregone conclusion. Far, he's going number one. Listen, he is by far generational a, talent. It is by far a generational talent, and he's the number one pick, and he's gonna make a difference. What I'm saying is, he's not gonna go to a team that him will take them to a chip. That's it. Playoffs will be happy if he makes playoffs in his first year. I think that team is very, very happy. All right, fellas, I'm gonna speed read these super chats, y'all. Let me get through these. Uh, if it's a question, I'm gonna ask one person, and then we gonna move on. Aramis Jones with another one. He said, been a minute, family. My bad. Been making some financial moves and getting another vehicle. Hope y'all been blessed. Appreciate you, Aramis. We definitely been blessed over here. SSJ Gabe said, any food truck in the Dominican Republican Republic chill town? I'm from there. They are fire. Answering for ticket. Zach Hoffman said, in retrospect, did Boston make the most out of the picks from Brooklyn? Do you think they could have had more success trading for stars instead of JB plus JT? Uh, fluent. 
Um, no, I think look, they, the, the team that they built went to the NBA final. So no, I think they, they got what they wanted out of it. I'm, I'm good with it. No doubt. Reggie Red said, you were right, Ticket. Chill, king of the switch up. <laughs> <laughs> Next super chat. Reggie Reg again said, LeBron also said he went to the LeBron James of foot doctors. Personally, I wouldn't go to the doctor that screws up four out of ten surgeries. He screwed up six out of ten. He got it wrong. <laughs> Eric Nowak said, as a Michael Jordan fan, it's low-key crazy how Ticket will just constantly tear down LeBron for no real reason other than his pure bias. He just spent he 20 minutes crazy. Final? He just, yeah, he he just spent 20 minutes. Did he lose the NBA Finals? Hey, hey, Ron, I'm going to ask you one question. I'm going to leave it like this. Ron, what are the other dudes? When, when do we ever give any of them other dudes that lost in the, in the finals excuses like we do? Good point. Mm. Cut. <laughs> Magic lost four times in the finals. Did we ever come here and say, hey, man, well, see, this happened and that, these guys won good? No. He just took that out. And he was the only one that was just for his day read from yeah. Akron. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, moving along, Orlando Harvell said something like Ron is a GOAT host, major love. Great yeah, secure. Chat. I want to read the super chat, but host. amazing super chat. Uh, super cool 500 said, as time goes on, nuances of the past get lost. But young LeBron did not play consistent defense. Neither did Kobe after a certain point. Pretty, pretty consistent for 12 years, but yeah, go ahead. Zudo said, y'all missed my first super chat, but I know how heated y'all can get. Is there any play in eighth, seventh seed? That can pull off a first round upset. Uh Mars. Whoever gets Memphis in round one can pull off an upset. Even if it's OKC. Nearly anyone who gets Memphis in round one can pull off an upset. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Pickering said AI averaging 30 on 30 shots. Cap. Yonko J said people are stuck on him being inefficient, but look at his team chat. Knock it off. Facts. Talking about AI. Marlon said, I have a question for Ticket. If KD was on the Bucks, what seed would they be? <laughs> They'd be higher than you. <laughs> Yo, Jalen Lindsay said AI with a great defensive team and a harder defensive error went to the finals. Now imagine with spacing. The error context matters. Big fan of the show. Hope to get on here one day. Sports is what I do. GBC said sign and trade Kyrie for cat plus a wing. I know Cat is not a gr is not great defensively, but Mavs get rebounding plus rim protection improvement. T Wolves get an All Star point guard to help Ant and Rudy. Mars, what ends you from? First of all, that's a terrible trade. Cat is just Kat is, <laughs> Kyrie won't even be in the league next year. Just move on. Cat is, Kat is just Christian Woods, but with um, a bigger name recognition. That's the exact same thing. It's a lateral move. Um, and I'm from Earth. Fire. From Earth, <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Lindsay said, "Lemon pepper low, turning into Tootsie Strip <laughs> 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 Club right now." Stop to debate. Dedication. Hashtag Rubber Band Man. Yellow. See a one. The BMG show said, "To be honest, Doc is the NBA version of Mike McCarthy." Facts. I don't know who that is. So. Yeah, no. Can you fill us, can you fill us in for him? <laughs> Patrick Mahomes the good. That wins, that wins another championship. He shut all y'all out. Yeah, Mike, Mike McCarthy had Aaron Aaron Rodgers for a bunch of years and can only make it to one Super Bowl and win it. And he's not a very good coach. He's now the coach of the Cowboys. He's trash. He's Doc Rivers. It's it's a great comparison. Gotcha. Aramis Jones said, appreciate you, Fluent. But I just got a new 23 Charger. I'm going to be more... I'm going to be more frequent on the show again. Bless up, family. All right. Good. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Maya, as they say in Greece, Maya. Kevo Ascendant said, April 5th, Westbrook looking for blood. Is that when they play the Lakers? It's got to be. Hmm. Yes, it is. Tyson Thomas says, salute the panel. Sons and six. Like the bean. 
Yeah, they going home at six. <laughs> <laughs> he said Suns, not Kings. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I said the Suns. Suns going home in the second round of this game. I was just showing Tyson love at the same time, letting them know. Right, right. They don't want it. The BMG show said, saw a video recently showing Melo, Tony Parker, Isaiah, Kobe, and Mr. Russell were top five most overrated players ever. Any of these y'all agree with? I agree with some of them. Yeah. You agree with Melo. I know I agree that. with Melo. Is one of the top five most overrated players? I don't think Melo's one of the five most overrated players. I do think he's overrated. I think I think Isaiah Thomas is overrated and he's probably in the top five. But I don't know about Melo. Oh, Isaiah's five. underrated. Isaiah's underrated. Isaiah's underrated ahead Isaiah, of his time. No, 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 I disagree. No, but. hey, Mars, we talk, we're not talking about watch, Isaiah. Should, Isaiah I, know we're not, I know we're talking about. I know we're not talking about Boston one. I know we're not. You should watch that interview, Isaiah and you Joe sure? Mars with uh, Clay and people, Curry. People, call, people, it's pretty like common. People just say he's the third like best point guard of all time. I, I think that's they call Carmelo overrated, but they don't even rate him. So how's he overrated? It depends on who you talk to. Some people have mellow. Some people have him as the greatest guard. scorer ever. That's overrated. So it depends where you're. Yeah, player. I've heard. I've heard people say Melo's a top twenty-five player of all time. Like that's overrated to me. No, he's one of the greatest scorers ever. That's true. Well, well, we, talk, we talking about Melo right now. We talking about Isaiah Thomas. Me- Melo. No, so now it's now it's Melo. Melo's one of the greatest scorers in NBA. He's just if he wasn't blackballed for two years, he'd be top five greatest scorer in the history of the game of basketball. Yeah, but no but question. I said when people say he's the greatest scorer ever, that's overrating. Yeah. Yeah, I think How is that? Were you living in that land? Because he's not a great scorer. He's, not he's nine scorer. right now. He's nine right now. If he never, if he never got black ball and didn't miss that year, yeah, but ticket, we, we ticket, we know scoring is more than just total points over your career because we know LeBron isn't the greatest scorer of all time. Exactly. So we know it's more than just total points. So, uh, well, y'all boys, haters, go ahead. I know you don't think LeBron's the greatest scorer of all time, unless you do. I think LeBron James won the great scores. Not one know. of the greatest. One of. No, I don't think he's the greatest scorer. So we know it's more than total points. Same thing with Melo. There we go. No, I'm saying, but I'm talking about how Melo scored, how he was able to is get. It I just have a team top four all time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Depend on who you ask. Uh, it's not crazy, but it's high. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't do it, but <clears throat> shout out King. Yeah, King was cold, bro. No, no doubt. Shout out to Kings. All right, fellas. A super chat from Julius Irvin. He says, shouldn't LeBron longevity hurt his GOAT case if he's going to keep stacking up empty seasons and not achieving anything other than career stats? He will end up with a 23-year career only with four rings. I see. Mm-hmm. I don't want to listen to me, though. No, because the people the people who have him up there, the people who have him up there will will discount or, or completely ignore rings and accolades. So it, 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 it helps their case, which is total stats. No, okay. yeah, but I, these seasons aren't doing much for me with LeBron. I, I don't it's not. It's not. It's, 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 it's not. It's not going to help. I, think, I, don't I mean, think does changes the narrative from this yeah, point. I, I don't. I don't think anything he does can. Yeah, enough. Once you get to a certain place on like my all time list, you don't move down past. Good, like can't he can't then fall behind Kareem again. Like Kareem can't add anything, so he <laughs> don't just move down. That's how I do it. All right, fellas, it's been a dub stream. On the way out, I'm gonna just leave this up there. And we'll see y'all on Saturday.